Back to the downside we go this morning. Futures struggling here in uh, early trading coming off a uh, not only a profit warning but uh, withdrawal of a forecast from FedEx and economic bellwether overall pointing to the possibility that the consumer might be uh, weakening ever so slightly at this point. We'll talk about FedEx down 20 plus percent in uh, pre-market trading, dragging down UPS, uh, all of the shipping related uh, companies with it at this point. Amazon under pressure on this report as well from uh, FedEx. Remember, FedEx set to report earnings coming up next week as well. We'll also have a look at Adobe this morning, day two after its big tumble yesterday on that Figma $20 billion acquisition fresh round of downgrades on Adobe this morning and price target cuts heading into uh, an index rebalancing. It's the end of the week. It's a negative start to the week, but a ton of potential action to get to should be an exciting one. It's Friday, September 16th, 2022. TraderTV.Live starts now. As a look at the board right now, one plus percent already for both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 back to uh, basically pre-market lows at this point, 0.9 already for the Dow as well in negative territory. Uh, TSX futures here in Toronto, 0 0.67, 0 0.32 there for Brazil. You can see crude oil trying to bounce another two and a half percent for Ethereum. Remember when the uh, update went live yesterday, we saw a six plus percent tumble. Uh, for Ethereum. So back to the downside we go. Back to early September lows here for uh, equity futures anyways as we head into what should be an important day. Good morning, guys. We have uh, the Fed on deck coming up next week, but FedEx stealing the headlines so far today. Yeah, thanks a lot, FedEx. FedEx and the Fed. Duh. I see I what know, he did there. That's pretty, well, did done. There. pretty uh, well done. Well, at least oil's up right now. <clears throat> with that. I, my quote board this morning, it was like HKD was up, UVXY was up, a couple of small caps, and then a couple of things were flat. And Nordstrom was to the upside right now. So uh, welcome, it's Friday. And if we're not, if we hold below 3,900 on the ES, it's hard to imagine it's not going to be a free fall Friday. I mean, that's obviously a big line in the sand. It didn't get broken until uh, this morning. And thank you very much, FedEx, for your outlook on the economy. Um, that's going to weigh on us here today, obviously. But it's also quad witching, right? So... Uh, you get the options expiration uh, and uh, some index rebalancing at the end of the day. So a lot to look at. There's all the EV names, all the chip names that were all over uh, the last couple of sessions. Roblox had news late in the afternoon, so that should be in play as well. Boeing uh, is out there. A heck of a lot to look at, but don't stray too far away from what is working. And I don't want, I'm not ignoring this line in the sand. I usually look at the NASDAQ a little bit more for the futures, but it's the ES3900 uh, that got broken. We're below that. Hard to really like some longs in there. I say that I'm long a small cap, but that's a small cap. Shouldn't matter. Yo, um, yeah, what's up? Uh, everything up except I said everything down except oil, which is nice, like you just mentioned there. Uh, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. That's too bad that that didn't get to go uh, a little bit further than it did there because yeah, that merge, that whole uh, changing of the guard there with Ethereum just not panning out uh, when you hold it into things like that. Sometimes you sort of buy the, uh, like we say, buy the rumor, sell the news, and the news is in. But uh, I'm gonna say the same thing today as what's been working. Um, I'm just gonna be looking short. I think the big short today could be Amazon due to the FedEx weakness there, looking at um, consumer and retail. If FedEx isn't shipping as much, I can't see that that being a good sign uh, for any of these big retailers. And, and obviously Amazon's one of the best and the biggest. I'm looking at the TQQs here as well. You can see they're down three, almost 4% right now and looking to get short as well. I, I mean, this is one of the first times I have TQQ written on the sticky note. I just want to fade any sort of pop. So I was looking at this 26 level. It's almost like 25 coincides with 12,000 on the NASDAQ. So we'll see, we'll start, the bit, we'll start the offering around 25, bring it up to 26 and then see if that gets going. But I just, I want to sort of fade any rally and I feel like looking at the TQQs or the futures, I mean, either, either direction there. Neil's already indicated that 3,900 on the E Yes, but I'm just looking at these because I like to trade equity and <clears throat> I mean there it is right here this is that 26 bottom right that we keep busting up against and then finally breaking down yesterday took it a little bit again and then broke it back down so I, I, I wrote on the sticky note that I don't see the market up today and when I don't see the market up today then we have to be trying to stay net short right if something does change and something comes out that somehow you know pushes us 
to think more positively, then fine. But for right now, I can't see any catalysts. We're heading into the weekend when we know what the Fed is going to do next week. There's even some talking heads out there thinking like, oh, they shouldn't raise at all. They should do 25 basis points. But I mean, the thing is, is like, it's bad out there. I don't really see any reasons to buy. You know, when stalwarts like FedEx and UPS and all these names start to get hit, Google's at 52-week lows right now. Uh, Meta, Amazon, not Amazon, Amazon's not at 52-week lows. Um, Microsoft is down there near that 241, which is the 52-week low as well. Apple's on its way down below 150. I mean, there's a lot of pressure in this market, and I just don't see much reversal coming. So I'm going to try to stick short, going to try to be as patient as I can, and uh, see what we can do today. Yeah, not much relief on the uh, inflation front. We got European EU inflation, individual EU countries out, but the overall EU number as well this morning, uh, exactly where it was a month ago. No change whatsoever. So a lot of people were expecting at least a bit of a downtick once again. Then you go back to the U.S. Uh, August uh, actually went uh, back to the upside or versus expectations anyways, 8.3 versus 8.1. So not much uh, in the way of relief coming yet. Uh, let's see what happens today. Here we go. Uh, futures at a two month low here uh, following this FedEx warning. Uh, this is also affecting rivals UPS. This XPO, I mean, a smaller one in the group, but uh, definitely worth a note this morning, a, a shipping company as well. But as we mentioned there, uh, Am uh, Amazon down uh, in the aftermarket yesterday when this first came out, but also uh, here in the pre-market as well. 4.6% on the week so far for the NASDAQ. That's without what is happening currently, guys. Yeah, it's look. It's obviously getting pretty ugly out there, and you go you go really far back on uh, on uh, it, on the chart of FedEx before you see some of these levels. Like you're talking about where this was. I'm not pre -paid, like 2019. Uh, you're right in the middle of the 2019 range for FedEx. But the bigger thing is, and I think uh, I'll show the spy here. I, I talked about 3900 on the future. Yeah, you know, this is sort of the downside risk. Like I think it was. Uh, and Lucas was asking, he's like, yeah, should we buy Adobe 300? It's down so much. It's like right now, there's not a heck of a lot of reason to like much. When you get below the, a, a level like this, you expect, even if we had, let's, say, let's just imagine we go sideways today or go to the upside. As long as we hold below 39, you've got to imagine this is how we get down uh, to test some of those lows. And we haven't even gotten the rate hike, right? So, you know, they're, not, they're, they're going to raise. It's just a matter of how much. It would make sense it would be that full. But the, the fact that we could actually see a grind back into those lows makes a heck of a lot of sense. And then FedEx in particular, there's just not going to be a heck of a lot. Um, a lot of times we're down this much and I'm saying to myself, okay, well, you're down so low, relief rally is, is the thing. But when you go back and look at where this was, this was where it broke out from in the recovery of the pandemic. And it just, it is shattered through all of these levels on the way back in. And... This is not, it was the worst possible timing for this. I also happen to think I'd be very cautious with any, like I was looking at Walmart 150 is like, that looks like a really good support level. I was looking at that this week. I don't really like that anymore. Not today, not after this. Um, like, you saw, like Sean said, Amazon's going to be one to look at that short. That, that XPO that Brennan mentioned, that's sitting on big resistance on the daily. But I'm just thinking first look uh, is going to be try to short some pops in FDX. Um, and we'll see if it gets to like 165. These pre-market highs are just short in front of that level. I'm not really thinking dead cat bounce today. Not, not beneath 3,900. Um, you, said, you said Walmart, but I think you meant 130, not 150. Because oh, I, and then it's one. I was just, just slipping the There's too many stocks that are slip of the tongue 30s for sure. and 50s. Yeah, that's my bad. But I just wanted to bring it up too because I wasn't actually even thinking about Walmart. I was look, looking at Amazon, and we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, that's 130, 150 right there. You're getting close to be punching uh, that short, which I like as well. 130 is the 50 period. And then look at Target here as well. Both of these names are right. I mean, look, it's a dollar spread with absolutely no volume today. So, you know, not super excited about the move that's in. But you're right here at 160 on Target and 130 on um, Walmart are both right there. For me, though, on the sticky note, I've been sticking with names that I've been trading. And Amazon has been 
traded pretty much every day since it split for me. And uh, whoops, that's right, we can't show it with our, with our split adjusted uh, costs there. But here it is right now. It's trying to basically do the same thing. Not basically, it is doing the same thing here. Breaking back down below that 124 level. Uh, and I, I'm just like, hey, let's short it on any kind of pops. Amazon, what a great move back upside for Amazon off some of those bottoms. I mean, we were down to 100. It's not gonna see it here, this is a 20 minute chart, but we are down to 100 and made it all the way back to almost to 150 there. And now you're just coming back in. So this is a 20 minute chart for Amazon. You're seeing this 126 high right there. I wrote down 124.50. I just don't see it. That's 124 back on the 1st of September. I just don't see us getting back anywhere up here. So I think you start the short around 124, 125 and uh, hope that you're good. I mean, that's, that's the way I'm gonna play this name. You're down 3% today, a nice little rally back would be nice for sure, but just, just when you're looking at this chart here, that little bottom right there, 123.75, as you can see, Amazon right now is at 122.60, so it is making that move to the downside. There's the gap lower on the FedEx news. There's that 130 high from yesterday that we talked about during the day yesterday, and look how good this 130 level looks like. I mean, you have a um, market technician coming on with Michael Noss. He'll probably be going over a few levels. I actually don't know what his topic is today, but you know, when you're looking at some of these top right there that 130 what a great hit to the downside so was 127 and then so right now I'm thinking that we can almost flip this around there and say that 125 right now is another level here for Amazon so I'm really excited for that you're, you're out of this channel now you've broken below right I mean this is what we're talking about you're channeled out here channeled out you have outliers to the upside right that was a couple days three four five days or two three days there hit it to the downside on CPI, it was going back up. I mean, it broke out. It was going back up to the upside there, right? And then boom, and now you get that news from FedEx and boom goes the dynamite again. So I'm just looking for more downside pressure here on Amazon. It does have the ability to go right back. I mean, here, let me just, because our charts don't show the splits, so... Uh, that's been frustrating for, for me when we look at some of these stocks. Uh, but right here, this is Amazon. Here's the split date up here when it went to 124. And then week after the split, it goes all the way back down to 104. And this is that area right now that we're talking about. Right here. Look, I mean, look, look at this. Trying to break down. Look where we are today, 122.50. So we've already broken. We're already down here below this level. So for me, this is a screaming short, and I just want to be in it when it does bump higher. I hope I don't forget about Amazon today. All right, there was that uh, one positive note, at least we thought this morning, crude oil uh, back to the downside here, just went 86 down to about 85.20 on, uh, here it is, 0.36 uh, right now on a note from uh, OPEC. Uh, apparently, <laughs> yeah, they like $100 oil. I bet you they like $125 oil even better. Uh, but they won't necessarily defend it when it comes to um, any of their output and manufacturing. So that just came out. Uh, causing that move back down for uh, crude oil. Uh, as mentioned, let's bring in Michael Moss here, a chartered market technician from Trade Ideas for a discussion this morning, Michael, on uh, what could be important today, and that is uh, support and resistance. Great to see you as always. Uh, going to be an interesting day here. We're already through some significant support and resistance areas, but uh, give us your thoughts here. Brand new idea, brand new uh, scan from Trade Ideas. Yeah, so funny enough, I thought that scan would be very timely as the market, as you guys, I was watching you guys were mentioning earlier, was pulling into support. It looks like we're now through support. Um, so let's, I looked at a lot of these that uh, names that I have, and a lot of them are still holding. So let's just kind of hope that that continues on. Um, but this is going to be the beginning of a series. So at Trade Ideas, we're constantly trying to push the envelope for the scans that we can build. And one of the ones that I'm playing a lot with now is support and resistance, which is something I'm personally very excited about as a trader, because this is more or less how I trade. Indicators are fun. Um, they have their place. I know a lot of people use them. But for me, I'm a kind of a pure price action trader. So uh, the more I get to play with this and the more scans I get to build uh, for you guys and our clients, the, the happier I am because I'm a little bit biased on it. So uh, just a quick talk. I know a lot of your audience already understands the concept of support and resistance, but this is one of the fundamental ten, um, tendencies of, of technical analysis, right? Uh, it's trend and support and resistance. That's the main two things that we focus on. And essentially, it just means that um, price has memory to some respect. So 
if say a stock bounces off ten dollars one time when it gets back to ten dollars you're going to have a whole bunch of traders watching it you're going to have people who originally invested at ten dollars uh, maybe look to add to that position anybody who missed out on that stock um, when it moved off that ten dollars the first time may look to buy people who are short uh, may say okay it might bounce around this ten dollars so i should cover my position so you you naturally in the market get these areas where a lot of people are interested in a stock. So um, the ability to find that with scanners is a little bit complicated because it takes a lot of pattern recognition and things like that that we're working on, but there's a lot of benefits to it. So the first example I have is a trade that I took from this scan on the 13th of July when I started working on this on CSIQ. And the idea was simply uh, CSIQ was in a nice uptrend it's in the solar space, which I'm actually noticing today in my scannings, along with ARC, seem to be holding up relatively well to the market. So uh, take that for what you will. But the just hanging out at the support, you can see the 13th, which is the last candle I put an arrow on, is where this was alerted at. The You can just buy it anywhere if you think it's going to hold support, if it's in that already uptrend, and then you know take the trade and make it your own. So... Uh, the next chart I have down, and I'm trying to explain why it's so important to look at support. Again, this will be part of a series. We're going to talk about resistance and breakouts and throwbacks and retests and all kinds of stuff. But why would one of your users maybe that is usually used to buying breakouts and things like this, which is what most traders look to do, be interested in buying at support? And the main reason I have here is the risk reward. So this is the same chart. And this is the trade I took where as that candle closed back over support, I bought some and I put my stop at the candles low. I exited the day before earnings there, which is that yellow vertical line, and I got four times my risk. Now, if somebody were to buy this as it broke out and then exit before earnings, they would have gotten about 7.75 times their risk. So the main point I want to hammer home is that if you can be patient enough and you can find a good scanner that will show you these support zones, you can really stack that risk reward in your favor, which means that your probability of success doesn't need to be as high and you can still do good. With a four times risk reward, if I'm right 25% of the time, I'll end up breaking even on this particular setup. So as always, I have a couple names here. Who knows if they're actually going to hold support? I did a little bit of checking while I was in the green room, and a lot of these do seem to be. Um, so these are all ones from the scans today uh, that I did last night, actually. So CALX, this is a pharmaceutical type name. It's showing this support. It popped up on the scan last night. So it's about 5650 is where that support zone is. So for me, I like this one as long as it can remain above 5650. If it gets below that uh, area, that's where I'm going to exit. Next here is one that I really like if this one can hold because of the short float of 14%. The support here is around uh, $26, give or take, and that's KYMR. And again, 14% short float. We got some really good short float names here because I know you guys like that. Next one here is Bros with a 15% short float. This one pulled back all the way from 50 to 35. So I've actually got an order in there now. If it can get back above 35, and that's about where it's trading in the pre-market, I'm interested in that one. Again, about 15% short float on that name. 27% short on this next one on Edit, E-D-I-T. I've drawn the line back further on this one because you can see how important $15 a share is for this name. So my plan with this one is just to play as we can get off uh, $15. If we bounce from that, that's fantastic. And last but not least is a company that my wife really likes is Figs. Um, they make scrubs and stuff, and I guess they're really great scrubs. $10 is a huge area. And another thing I noted in this chart is how you can combine this kind of traditional technical analysis with more indicators. So for this one, the RSI looks like it's going to dip into the oversold area. At the same time, it's holding this $10. That's a way you can combine these two functionalities. And again, like with everything, I show the daily charts because I prepare these the night before and I'm more of a swing trader, but the same concept obviously works for intraday. If you see a stock on a one minute chart that keeps you know, banging at a level and it can't break through, your risk reward is really good to take a shot there if you like the stock for some other reason.
Uh, worth a note, uh, obviously, Michael. We're, like we're we're talking about long opportunities here with with some of these uh, ideas that we're mentioning here this morning. How much weight do you put towards the overall maybe sentiment of the market or directional movement in the market itself when you're looking at something on the long side in this case? It's got to be huge. It's got to be hugely important because there's a stat out there. I think it's 75 percent of all stocks will follow the market um, in some respect. So for me, I definitely, I'm a top-down analysis guy. I want to look at the markets first and then the sectors and then the individual names. Um, so for these, for me to enter today, I not only want to see them hold the support zones that I've been talking about, but I want to see the market stabilize. It doesn't necessarily mean that it also has to be holding support. It doesn't even necessarily mean that the market needs to be going up, but I need to just have it chill. So if we had just a nice you know, um, not an inside day, we're already gapping down, but you know, a doji day or just a lower kind of volatility day, that would be good enough for me. But I don't want to be buying anything if the market's going to be uh, a crashing Friday type of thing. Great stuff. Uh, very important point, obviously, on a day like today. Uh, we're excited. Michael Noss actually going to be in the building coming up here in a, a few weeks. We're excited to uh, have Michael join us uh, live in studio. I, I, I don't think people realize, but you're actually on the east coast of Canada, correct? So it's uh, it's going to be nice to actually sit uh, sit down and have a conversation coming up here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's uh... You know, it's actually not that far. I'm, I'm in Nova Scotia, so it's just a, a quick plane ride over, and I've got a whole bunch of cool stuff to do, and one of them is to hang out with you guys as long as you let me. We're so looking, looking forward, forward to it. To it. Uh, definitely looking forward to it. Coming up in a few weeks, as we said, Michael Nosh, Chartered Market Technician with Trade Ideas. Have a great weekend, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good one. As right. always, and I, right. I, I love Nova Scotia, by the way. I have family that over there. My brother lives in Nova Scotia. Uh, great place, but we can't wait to have you in-house. Uh, should be a heck of a lot of fun. I think there was a little conversation we were having in the chat. Some people are, oh, but there's not a lot of volume on some of these. you got to remember, when you're looking for those types of, uh, these types of plays, we like that swing aspect that Michael brings to us as well. Like we're always talking about day trades, where you want that volume in that day for the breakout. But when you're playing support and resistance, like Michael said, like, you know, you're going to hold these. If you look at that, like that edit, if that, if that swings into that 200 period, like let's say it, you know, get that 15, swings into 18, like you're gonna, you're not getting that for one day necessarily. It could happen. Don't get me wrong. It's had days like that before, but you know, you can be prepared to hold that a little bit longer or into an event or something along those lines. So the individual volume on that day or the relative volume isn't as big a piece of the story if you're not day trading. You just wanted to get that one uh, out of the way there, as always. Uh, fantastic uh, to have Michael on. It's, it's just good to get different perspectives and maybe see a few symbols that we might not have on the radar. Every now and then there is a little bit of, over, like we were talking about Tell last week, a Tellurian, and then all of a sudden he had that one on one of his lists. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think um, I actually just messaged Michael saying if there was sort of a similar scanner like that that we can show uh, maybe to our viewers for intraday trading because, um, you know, things hit certain levels in the middle of the day and you may want to know about them. Obviously, that's something that Neil and I try to find for you all the time. That's where we got that 78 AMD and little things like that. PayPal 90, things like that, where you can find some key levels. And I think that that's amazing. Definitely check out Trade Ideas because if the, the fact that you can build all of these scans and whatnot, I mean, it, it's such a unique product. And now you have Michael Noss on your side as well. So, um, you know, a friend of the family, he'll be here. I'm excited. Um, we also should be having, if everything goes well, we have SneakerCon coming on as well tonight uh, for our afternoon show. So that should be a lot of fun. I, I mean, I heard rumor that they're going to be bringing the Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones through, so we'll see uh, if those come through right on the desk there beside Brendan. I wonder what size they are, because if they fit Brendan, he may be writing a check. No, he won't be writing a check. <laughs> uh, I think they're about 30. I think, um, I, I think the gentlemen there uh, with SneakerCon were saying they're between 20 to 30 grand, if, if you can buy them, and, and that's if you want to sell them. But anyway, SneakerCon, I feel like there's a lot that fit with investing and NFTs and collectibles and things like that. And uh, Fahad was showing me his collection of shoes as well. So very, very exciting stuff on the show today. But it's Friday. It's quad witching. There's lots happening. That's why we're looking at the futures. That's why we've got a lot of names on, on, on deck here. It should be a very exciting open. But you can't ignore the upgrades and downgrades on a day like today because you're always looking for opportunities. So let's go over to Brennan and see what he's got. Yes, jam-packed board uh, today to mention, all on 
this side of things, we'll just maybe I'll just stand in front of the upgrades because it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's not much here, to be honest. Adobe, FedEx, Roblox, and uh, X, US Steel, all to the downside. Uh, remember, we got those numbers yesterday, late in the day, for uh, daily active user numbers uh, for Roblox. So need them out this morning with a downgrade on that. There's uh, six, count them, six to the downside on FedEx today, guys. All? Oh? What language do they speak more. in Nova Scotia? Nova Scotian, obviously. I mean, <laughs> it's one of the more popular languages in the world, Nova Scotian. Obviously. It's, it's like a mix between English and English. It's, yes. it, it's very, East very... Coast, it's great, man. Like, you get great seafood out there. Probably a little bit too much snow, and you get some of those too storms. Too much snow, yeah. No, like, no, sir, you, know, you get the lake of well, the, the ocean. I'd say that, yeah. So, like, when, and the, you get too many hurricanes coming up the East Coast as well, but I love visiting there. I go there more than My grandparents anywhere. are from Nova Scotia, so... It's great, right? Yeah. Uh, Brendan, there was a name on the upgrade list that at least I like. I like Dan Hur. I own Danny Hur shares. And by the way, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to quickly show here because I feel like what's about to happen on this daily chart, I'm just indulging myself here as the 50s trying to get to the 200 period. Will it cross? If it does, we can get back to those highs. Health care has been pretty good. This is held up very well. They're actually uh, still up on the year or uh, very close to it, maybe just flat or slightly down on the year, which is much better than the overall market has done because health care has been okay. But they just decided to have a spin-off in their business. If they don't make this break, you get that cross and make this break back toward those highs and you reject, yeah, then you could see some downward turn. I'm actually looking to, to maybe trim some of this if I see that happen. Um, but in the other side of that board, Roblox, we have to be looking at this today. Uh, we knew the news dropped. I don't know if my trades, are, yeah, they actually showed up. So we can, show, we can talk about that 44 level after we got those, those numbers from Roblox. We made a bottom at 42. Held 42 this pre-market. 42 was a big level when you zoomed out. So uh, I'm looking obviously at that 42 for support. If it breaks, it's in trouble. But I want to be shorting in front of that 44 on Roblox. And much like the afternoon, if it breaks 44, there's some, like, there's some you know, sort of breakout potential there, if not just even like a, a, a quick little like scalp trade, like scalp it into 45 or something like that. So Roblox has to be on the radar today. Um, I'm just still watching the, the futures here. I, I don't want to get in, but I mean, I feel like we've missed some opportunities by not getting in here um, as we just continue to make that move down, man. I mean, yeah, Roblox is a great name to look at today for sure. It's been pretty strong. Um, someone said that Neo was also looking pretty strong today. I think Neo continues to, you know, to be the name that if you're going to look for some kind of strength. I mean, right now it's down as the market is down. But if you see the last couple of days, I mean, if you're looking at a daily chart, you're not going to find. I mean, do we find any tech names that are above the 50 period right now? Uh, some of the EV names are, though, like a Rivian, like a Neo, and that continues to work off this 22 high. I, again, I, I feel like this is a dangerous name to trade because I only really want to be looking short, and I feel like if you're wrong, then this is not the right name to be wrong on because you're going to have to be wrong like up to 24, 25, and that feels like that's, that's too far. So right there that wick top is 22 and change there so you might be able to look at that on a one minute whoops on a one minute chart right here let's just see what it looks like from yesterday and i'm just looking at this because i know it's a 20 dollar name there's a lot of traders that like to trade this um you, you definitely broke down that's a key level right there 2135 but you're not far away from that so that's yesterday's bottom i think if you're gonna short like i said i think you gotta wait for something like this to happen look yesterday was a bad day right and you still get the opportunity to short that's why patience pays so I think if you're going to watch Neo, you got to be patient with it. Uh, here's the 20 minute chart for it. Look how strong it is to that upside. And then, again, there's 22, 22, 50. So I, I feel like that's a great area to go short. I, I wouldn't go short yet. And I don't because it's so strong. Normally, I'd be looking at this and say, wow, this nice little shelf here at 21, right? So I'm looking for it to break down. It does have a lot of room to go to the basement here. Um, what is Alibaba? I just want to see, is it? Just Chinese in general strength today or yeah Alibaba okay so Alibaba is down 1.5 as well but look this is why it's not an ADR thing because Alibaba's crushed doesn't really look like that Neo chart does right so let's wait to see what happens here Alibaba's already below that 90 that was pretty key level right there and you're starting to even break lower I mean every name is going to look pretty disastrous I saw some people in the chat talk about Daniel Shea unfortunately Daniel Shea is off on maternity leave and we say um, you know best wishes to her and her family but she won't be with us for 
I'm going to say a couple months. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't. I, we don't really have a timeline, but uh, it's up to her, and we would love to have her back. So maybe we'll have to find somebody else uh, to cover some options. But we do love Daniel Shea, and we love Michael Noss as well. I mean, what an, what another great guest today. Thanks for all those ideas from trade ideas. But no Daniel Shea for a bit there, Brendo. Yeah, for sure. We wish uh, Danielle all the best. And she will be back, guys. She's already said she's uh, excited to come back as soon as she is uh, able to, obviously. So all the best to uh, Danielle Shea. Let's jump into uh, what's happening over in Europe so far this morning. Another uh, choppy to mostly negative session uh, for European markets here as well as we head towards the open in North America. England and Turkey, they're faring the best a uh, little bit to the downside for England already. Uh, everything else, though, one plus percent right now to the downside for, throughout the European landscape. Here's a look at the social sentiment board uh, updated for this morning. Uh, interesting note here, FedEx actually gray, which simply means there's no clear direction as to the uh, comments on social media directed towards uh, FedEx. Uh, the biggest box here, though, is going to be uh, the market itself once again. Back to the downside, Q's here as well in negative territory. AMC always there. There's HKD. I did see uh, HKD was actually up initially in the pre-market. Uh, I believe it has already gone negative, but uh, big red box today, guys, for that one. Worth a note for uh, all those high flyers this week. I kind of feel like, really, like the comments are ambiguous about FedEx today? Okay. It's, it's, a little, it's a little surprising to me. I will go over this one because I am in beat from yesterday. Uh, if you're watching the afternoon show, uh, there was a breakout on this stock at about 20, to, to, I keep wanting to say like 23.50. I mean, $2.35. It failed that break as far as I'm concerned because it went 10 cents and then came right back in. However, when, I, when we opened the, mid, the, you know, the afternoon show, I was kind of talking about this support at 190 saying that looks pretty good if it bounces off that. Didn't catch it till the break. I'm working off of this 205. There's some size buyers at five, six, and seven. So essentially just long in front of that and then playing it to that 235 and then looking for the break. But if we break 205, I don't want to be in that trade holding to 190, right? Like that's almost it's like seven or eight percent, right? So I'd rather be getting out on a break of 205 and then just looking back. If it bounces off 190, that'd be a separate trade. So a bit of a day two play. I know it's down, but it's still holding support from the gap up that it put in uh, yesterday. So, you know, break out, hold the gap, try to get through the high, failed it, but it's still got the same support uh, that it had more or less the entire day uh, in yesterday's session. Uh, yeah, make sure that you hit that QR code there. This uh, segment sponsored by True Trading Group. So hit that up uh, and say what's up to our friends over there at True Trading Group. Yeah, there's going to be, I mean, another one name that obviously everyone always likes to talk about here uh, on our show is going to be HKD, uh, as that is another name down 7% today. It's been a wild ride, uh, obviously, for this name, as you can see up there to 380 as a top uh, there. And I mean, this name is ripped up. I don't even want to show you the chart uh, of it. You know what, what what's good here. Uh, this this name probably falls today as people are going to take money out of this market. I, and I just looking at this here, 120, 125, obviously the spread is $7. So it's not going to be a really tradable name. But uh, I was running into a few traders, including Terrible Tony there uh, at the back there. I only say that because shorting the market. I mean, it's been a terrible market here. And I believe he's flipped over to the short side as well. Um, but uh, right there, $99 uh, coming in. That's a, close enough to 100 as you can get for HKD. So I would say that I think it sniffs this out here today. You're at 125, 131. I, I mean, if, if you wanted to dance with the devil, I mean, you could trade this name. I just look out for, hey, if there's money coming out of everything, then money probably also comes out of HKD today as well. Down 5.5%. That number doesn't mean anything. Watch out for 100. I mean, if you're going to play the long, I would say you could try it around here. Last time we came back down to 100, we, we at least went back up um, to 188. So that's only an error, 190. That's only 90% return. I don't know if you want that in one day. Uh, but, you know, right there, that, that would be that little level coming back in. That's 110 it resisted yesterday. Back down in here to 100 bucks. So if we're going to talk about some high fly, HKD uh, on the look here, but not one for day trading on the show, but there are some of you out there that like to. I don't know. YOLO. <laughs> did, did you show YOLO? I like it. Yeah, it was all right, but... I've uh, I don't know. You, sometimes we can trade that, and we have traded it in the past. Yeah, yeah. I think when it halts. I mean, that's what I was going to say. When it halts, when it there's an going. instant liquidity uh, event. Yeah. The good thing I like about the halt is, is that you can put your order in 
after the halt, either long or short, whatever, you're selling it or buying it, and you'll get that instant liquidity at whatever that price is. So there's no guessing games. It's not like the spread opens up to 10 bucks, where am I gonna get filled? You get that opening print, right? And so I think that that's something that you're gonna have to wait for, and if it does fly around on the show especially, we'll be looking at HKD at some point today, I have a feeling. I'm checking for price of shorts right now. Uh all right, let's uh, jump in. We'll get you set for uh, everything else you need to know this morning, guys, heading towards the open. Under 30 minutes to go. That's the link to the watch list. We send out 30,000 every single day. Make sure you are one of those. Absolutely free for you every single day before we come on at 8.30. Very, very simple. All you need is your email address, and uh, you can have that every single morning, as I said. Uh, let's go. FedEx, top of the list this morning, going to be... Uh, top of mind, I think, for the market this morning as well, because, wow, what a move to the downside here for FDX shares down more than 20 percent. They withdrew their full year 23 forecast and also uh, pointed to the uh, very high possibility of a recession, guys, and weakening uh, consumer demand right across the board. Yeah, and I think, what look, it gets everybody jittery because... Um, truthfully, FedEx, they get to see what the economy is like, right? Like they have a wealth of businesses where they get a forward view of uh, where, the, where that, 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 that revenue is coming from, where that drive is. And when they see a pullback and they're basically telling us that uh, there's a lack of that demand, well, that's going to get everybody concerned. And the timing couldn't be, look, it couldn't be worse coming right in front of get. We just had a hot site CPI number, and then, of course, coming in front of the, the next rate hike, it's not a good look. I'm not thinking about a dead cat bounce here right now. I just, maybe it does so off of 160. That's what it's trying to do. I'm more thinking about short the pop uh, if we get a 165. Remember, it's going to be short sell restricted today, obviously, uh, down 21%. Uh, and then it, the other story, which might be, I'm not saying it's going to be more interesting, but might be a little bit more interesting. We talked about, I think it was XPO, uh, that was mentioning XPO, of course, being on the on the New York exchange. Uh, XPO, another related name. This is right on. So obviously you're breaking through every single level on FedEx. Uh, XPO was pretty much right at or very close to a huge level on the daily. 45 was being supported. That's another name. If you if you miss out on FedEx shorts, if this breaks 45, it could get pretty ugly for them uh, as well within the sector. And then, you know, I came I came in with the same thought that I think Sean probably did. It's just uh, and, well, this is not split adjusted. Uh, Amazon, this is going to be sort of not easy pickings, but you're beneath a pretty significant floor at 125 on Amazon already. And beneath these types of breakdowns, I usually like the shorts up to those levels. Um, it's the same way I'm looking at Intel, which will be anything but no that 29, right? So, you know, Amazon's going to be that low hanging fruit. I'm going to, there's not a lot of volume on that XPO. I'm kind of hoping it'll pick up because that 45 level looks pretty juicy, but I'd short on FedEx till that 165 level and then Amazon till 125. If it breaks 125, there's a 126 half level that's worth looking at as well. Uh, but you get the futures below 3,900, you had the warning from FedEx, you're breaking levels across the board here. It's hard to like what's going on there. Although, hey, Nordstrom's is up, so there's that. It, oh, it is? Okay. <laughs> it is. Actually. Uh, yeah, actually, I saw that. It was on our watch list as well. Um, we can go over a, a bunch of different... I mean, what's coming up? Uh, Adobe, Uber. Okay, so uh, no Amazon on the board there. I, you know, I have Amazon written down here. We started the show talking a little bit about it, and I'm not going to just keep talking the same, same game up here, but I really like this name for the short. I don't have any offers out until we start to rip back to the upside, but we've already sort of done that work up here to 125, 126, so I really, really like any sort of an, a, a bump up here in the market to get us into this this level right there that's 125.50 yesterday's bottom and then you come back in today i just the logic behind this is i don't after fedex came out and said that the market's down 1.36 percent i just don't see amazon getting anywhere back to green today nor should it what would be the reason for that so any kind of a bump back up in the market I really want to short Amazon back down near that, or back up near that 125, 124.50. So that's a level for me there on Amazon. I'm going to be sitting there trying to get that short. The biggest trade I made all day yesterday and all of September was being patient and waiting for Q2 
key levels. So I feel like even though we get caught up, there's a lot of FOMO in the market, like, oh my God, the market's going down, I'm not short. That's fine. There's lots of opportunity to strike in this market, right? Let it battle back. We saw in the midday show yesterday, Prad came on and he was all short. Then it ripped for a bit in the afternoon before making that move again late, right? So be patient, wait for your spots. And I really think that Amazon, Walmart, Target, let's hit the retail today. Because again, a disappointing number from FedEx. Yo, thank you, Mr. Randy. Ooh. I like it. I like it a lot. And good work on the desk. Hopefully the desk, is that still happening? Cheers. Cheers. Is that going to be ready for the closing show, the desk? Survey says, Survey says ding, oh, yes. Ready. So hopefully we'll see Brendan. We're going to have sneaker con coming through. How are those egg What's little he things there? there? He's what got one of those egg, uh, egg uh, spinach things there. It's kind of okay, like a, it yeah, it's, it's a little mini, mini omelet kind of thing there. Oh. Nice, I like yeah. that. Yeah, they're pretty tasty. Sprinkle a little bit of salt. And they're pepper. healthy too. So I'm kind of seasoning those things up. Yeah, you got some spinach. You got to have your early morning of vegetables, you know. Yeah, well. That's pretty key. Or do you though? I don't and know. Java. You need the coffee <laughs> for sure. So thank you, Randy, for that one. And we're going to go back over there. But retail vegetables. week today. <laughs> Thanks, FedEx. Yeah, unfortunately, Amazon going to be definitely one to look at uh, off of that FedEx note. Here is a look at the board for Adobe today. Remember, day two off of this Figma deal yesterday. So anything from this line up is an analyst downgrade or price target cut. This was aftermarket yesterday. Anywhere from this line up is all this morning. So uh, at least 10 or maybe a dozen guys to the downside for Adobe today. And it's on 300. That's funny. Someone just said Sandy Randy, but it wasn't Randy Sandy. No, it was, uh, it was Mark, but I like that name, Sandy Randy. Good one. Enter the Sandman. We were talking about that. It should be like the entrance. Enter the Randman. Randman. You know, Why I mean, there, there's, lots of, there's lots of stuff we can go with here. Uh, Adobe yesterday mm. was a disaster. And we always so say, I mean, I always say, and I remember talking with Mark Roberts about this as well. And he was like, yeah, that's right. There is that three-day rule. And I, I just don't think, although yesterday it was well cooked, we, we, we got some nice bottom picks there for sure off of 307. We picked that twice, made three bucks there, uh, two bucks and two bucks both times. We thought it had a chance to go, but thankfully we were able to get out of it. But Adobe yesterday was a complete disaster uh, to the downside. You know, starting the day at 324 uh, or three, sorry, it's the 324, what are you talking about? That's where we started the day. But where we came from the day before was 370, got to that high of 324, 325 there, coinciding with some of those pre-market levels. And then, you know, the rest of the day was pretty much a down, downhill slide until you started to level off. I mean, that little bottom there at two o'clock, Held, man. 307 held great. And maybe thinking that that could have been a bottom, right? But guess what? Right underneath 307, and this is the kind of math that I'm doing, is 300. So right there, now you're bouncing off of 300 and not looking very safe again. So Adobe yesterday pays $20 billion for Figma. Their earnings weren't bad. It's just, you know, in this environment, you're spending cash when you can get 4%. Now cash is worth 4%. Let's call it like it is. The rates are going up. So now there used to be that Tina, there is no alternative to investing. And now there simply is. What you Do you really think that you, you could put money into stocks right now and like the risk that you're taking is better than just getting 4% on the year. I, I, I'm not sure that's true. I think there's a lot of people sitting on cash. But here's 300. It's right here. I feel like that's a screaming short uh, through 300 for sure. It's just a matter of, you know, is that, is that the best name for you and your, for your portfolio? It's an expensive stock. It's right there. It's the same as Tesla. The thing is, Tesla does a lot more volume and has a lot more liquidity. So you got to be careful about that, although 112,000 shares is pretty nice. This is what it looks like on a daily chart. I don't even... It's not, I, I don't even know where $300 is. It's going to be all the way back here, uh, back to pre-COVID, obviously, or, or just around there. And I'm not expecting 300 to be anything. But when you look right back here, this is March of 2020, right? So um, I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because you get a lot of consolidation. That very bottom wick there in March. Like, I'm not sure why Adobe would be so affected by COVID, but uh, I guess less people in the offices, maybe less projects, things like that. I don't know. Uh, but that's that very bottom of 250. So whether or not we see that would, would make sense if we sort of glide down to there. I don't think it has 20% more down 
to see two, well, 50 bucks on 300, so not, not quite that, but 15% more down. I don't know if we see that to get to 250, but there's a lot of consolidation that happened right around this $300 mark when you go back to that, um, you know, those crazy times in the market before obviously ripping up to 700, but right there, 290, 280, uh, you know, some of these bottoms in this consolidation, 280, 287, 290. So yeah, does Adobe have the ability to go right back down to those levels? There it is right here on a chart. Yes, it does. So I think it's, we talked about it yesterday. I don't think it's a horrible idea to start buying some Adobe here if you do believe in the space and believe in some of the projects that they have going on. But uh, that's expensive to drop 20 billion. They don't have 20 billion in cash. So they got to fund that uh, by borrowing and things like that. So Adobe right here is going to get hit for a while. I think a 280 bottom, you know, might be an area to look at. It's also, I mean, it's cash, cash in stock. And look, Figma annual, <laughs> annual reoccurring revenue is 400 million. 400 million. And the, and, and the deal price is $20 billion. So that's why people are like, this is an overpay and maybe a desperate move because Figma's been taking business from Adobe and been growing. So they're going to make that overpay. All I care, like for me, the line in the sand is just going to be that 300. If it holds that at the open, I think you got a shot for a bit of a dead cat bounce along into that 307 that will support yesterday. Otherwise, you've reached that level and just going to be thinking about the shorts in Adobe. I don't think this is going to be one uh, to get too complicated with trying to predict where the stock price could go. But at some point, if it breaks 300, you know, if something gets down 20 to 25 percent, you're starting to look for the first consolidation for some kind of a bounce. I'd probably want to wait till after Fed before I thought about that because uh, pretty big event happening next week, last I checked. Yeah, we'll uh, get the Fed on uh, Wednesday. It's worth a note as well. Um, half of those notes that I showed you from analysts this morning uh, all basically mentioned that 50 times ARR note. So it was. Definitely an overpay, according to uh, analysts as well. Uh, here's Uber downside this morning. I just noticed uh, rolling over as we speak is Uber uh, back towards pre-market lows. They're investigating a cybersecurity issue that they had. Uh, they announced this aftermarket yesterday. They hacked uh, one of an employee's uh, Slack account and then used that Slack account to announce to the rest of Uber employees that there was a cybersecurity uh, breach. So uh, Uber under pressure here. So just, I'm going to clarify one thing first, because I'm not, I'm not short beat, I'm not going short that stock. Um, I had a 205 stop on my 207 long and beat, and I got filled to get out at 203, so we can reset the position for it. I'll show you that chart in a second so you guys can visually see what happened there. Um, Uber, Uber was strong yesterday, one of the stocks that had a nice breakout, it broke out 33, got like a dollar and change. I mean, it fell right back in, but supported that 33 level. But you can see on CPI, on CPI day, 33 was a level. You broke out, you came right back, you're gapping lower, short to 33. Uh, just looking, just saying to myself, on a day like today, below 39, below, key, below that key support level in the future is the S&P 500. I just feel like it's going to be hard with that news for Uber to get back above that price. I'm looking at that resistance level at 33, and I just want to be short in front of it on any kind of a pop in Uber. And uh, just to quickly show you guys here on beat, yep, long to 22, long again, and then out at the 205 stop. Now, if it breaks down, I want that 190 for support. That's where it had yesterday. I didn't want to hold that like 7% all the way down into that 190 level. So if it gets back down there, I'm looking to get back into the long on BEAT. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I, I'm going to sort of take the other way a little bit on Uber. I just, I, I'm really surprised at how strong it's been uh, here on the daily. I'm not surprised. I mean, I know there's been a lot of people trying to buy up some Uber shares. Um, it's well above the 50 period here. Not well above, but uh, the 50 period is at, down to 27 bucks. It's nicely up here. I mean, I know when you're looking at the chart, it's hard to say that this is holding up, uh, but it kind of is. Uh, there's, you know, there's a nice dip down there, obviously, into August, August 26th there, uh, making bottoms of 27 and then a nice Nice little move back to the upside. If we zoom in, uh, you can see some disaster. Obviously, we just had that CPI that brought this thing back down to 30, but it just came right back. So for me, I feel like a data breach is obviously a bad thing, but these are just part of the world right now. Companies are going to have to deal with this. And um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't foresee like any penalties or anything like that. Are they going to have to spend a little bit of more money to try to figure out uh, how to solve this so they don't get any of that uh, moving forward? Yes. But uh, all in all, nothing really comes from data breaches. It, it, look, it sucks and, and it's bad. And Uber's down 5% today. So we're probably going to have to respect the short. But for me, it's really held up 
quite nicely. And I mean, if you get a rally back in this market, like especially off of something strange happening on the 21st with Fed, I don't know. I think Uber probably needs to get bought on any kind of a move back down to the 50 period. It's really super strong. It almost doubled from those July bottoms, July bottom of 20. It got to 33. I mean, that's a great little level there. Now it comes back down. So I don't know. Look, looking at it, I'm not super excited today. It's done 600,000 shares. I, normally, I'd be trying to grab this short. I just, I don't know. I, I think you got to let it go back up here to 33. And, and if it comes up there, then I think you can short it. And I know that's some of the stuff that Neil was talking about as well. Um, and then back down in. I don't really want to look long, but a 30 long would be nice as well. I don't know if we're going to get that. That seems like a bigger move to the downside. So for me, I don't have Uber anywhere on my radar today. Although it's a good name, it's doing volume, and I think it's well to be traded. I just, again, I don't have a solid opinion one way or the other, and my opinion would be long, and I don't want to look long on a day like today. But if the futures do flip over, we'll put Uber uh, in our head and try to remember that name. Remember, another thing too, we do have quad witching coming uh, right now at the open. And then again, the bigger event would be the market on close orders. So we'll be talking about that at 350 today. That'll be probably the only thing that'll be on our mind heading into the close. Uh, and sneaker con, I wanna see those sneakers. Hopefully they're able to show up. They are doing an event this week in Toronto, their fourth event, expecting over 10,000 people. Here's Ford, uh, BAC. And I'm just looking at this list, and quite frankly, Brendan, pretty disappointed. Not too much size on here, but you can see some of the size is paired off. But honestly, for what is a quad witching day, when you have the S&P rebalancing, it's just, it's not a super exciting uh, moment here off the open, it looks like. But some banks being sold off, Pfizer. Let's see, what is WFC? 43 bucks, yeah. So um, that's another name you're gonna see probably down a couple points. Yeah, down two points today. UPS as a sell, we've talked about that with FedEx. There's your Uber with a sell as well. But a lot of these numbers aren't big. I was expecting a little bit bigger, but that's quad witching for you. So expect some big volume candles off the open, not necessarily telling you anything, but just it's a big liquidity event. And uh, what it's telling me is just sort of hands off for the first couple seconds, let the market settle down just like we did yet. I don't think I entered my first trade yesterday until like 9.31 or something, which I know that sounds crazy, but you know, take a little bit of time here to regroup on quad witching. Definitely good advice. Uh, we uh, the obviously the big event going to be this afternoon at the close, but uh, those numbers still a little bit bigger than they've been this week. It has been pretty quiet at the open this morning, uh, a little bit uh, busier uh, to say the least. Here's Boeing. Uh, the note on Boeing coming off of Investor Day yesterday. Remember, pretty impressive rally yesterday uh, as they were talking about some uh, numbers going forward and some production plans going forward. And then this comes out this morning. Yeah, China going to impose sanctions on uh, both uh, RTX CEO and uh, Boeing, one of the Boeing heads as well. So uh, that can't be good for uh, relationships between Boeing and uh, China, guys. I wouldn't imagine so. Correct. But <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> imagine it would be good. Uh, what's, up, what's up with the ball candor, Lucas? Uh, 144 was... Yesterday's, well, sorry, not yesterday's bottom, but on Wednesday we had a bottom at 144. Check that. We just touched on that uh, early in the pre market. That's going to be your line in the sand on Boeing. If it gets like 150, if it holds 144 and somehow we get an update today, this, stock, this has room, uh, I think, maybe even to 150 if it were to somehow recover. I just, I'm not really believing in that. There's so many names that are on floors right now that if you break down, I think you're in a world of hurt. Typically, this is a stock that I'm usually hands off with. Uh, definitely in the pre-market, and then I want to see the opening range on. So it's going to be about how do we, if we hold that 144, I might look for a long trade that I can structure off a tight stop. Uh, otherwise, I'd be looking to fade any move to the upside on Boeing today. I don't think we see that 150, unfortunately. It's just, it's a great level. I just, I just don't see any way that we're going to be getting there today. We've, um, you know, seen, seen Boeing go the last couple of days here, um, and it, it was nice, but then when you're coming in today, I always thought that one of the big catalysts, and, and it is a big catalyst because we've seen it happen before, is China buying more planes, adding to their fleets, um, and doing that obviously through Boeing. And, you know, so that's been part of the reason why um, you've sort of had an under underlying buy bid in, in Boeing. But if they're gonna to start to sever some relationships with China, it's obviously not gonna be a good thing. So a nice little downside move. I still think that you have, 
I mean, look, there, there are going to be ultimate bottoms that if you got them, great. But I, I still feel like Boeing is a dollar cost average name where you just want to make sure that you can buy it so that you can be part of these moves back to the upside. I mean, we were just back there in 2021. This is about, this is not a year ago, but back down there in March, you're at 280, you know, um, and it's been down here before. So it does have the ability to run again. And uh, I just want to look at that and say that, hey, if you can get back in, it's at 145 right now. What are we at today? Yeah, one, yeah, 145. So if you get it back into here, 130, 135, something like that, then I think you can start to build a position. And then as it comes back into 110, 120, if that does happen, then you can dollar cost average back down into there. And, and I just think that you want to buy Boeing. Like we always talk about duopoly, monopoly, whatever your favorite game is, um, Boeing's part of that. So I would say you buy Boeing on weakness, but it's, it's more of a long-term play. It's not going to be one of those sexy moves that you're going to get 30% in a week or anything like that. So that's Boeing. I like it. I think it's a dollar cost average name and something to put in your portfolio. All right, uh, kind of a quiet day, guys, for uh, small cap land. Here's one that's moving, though, AAOI, up on an asset sale. So this was actually announced after market yesterday. You can see a uh, big pop all the way up through 375 to $4 almost, which gets you back into this area on the daily chart. Uh, this line is $3 even, which it's just trying right now to break. So 290 to $3. If it starts to hold, we might get a move back to the upside. But this thing's been doing nothing but kind of grinding lower all pre-market. Uh, 250 yesterday comes into play if it continues to grind to the downside, guys. Uh, speaking of grinding to the downside, you know what really grinds my gears? What's uh, that? <laughs> no, it's, it looks like there's an offering on ADTX. It, it, obviously, you expect this can happen with these small caps from time to time. 20 million uh, offering at six. This was just reverse split, and I was showing the daily chart. I, I forget about the daily. Go to the 15-minute chart. I was just showing this uh, to Sean. It's like the reverse split, fall for two days in a row, and then offering. Now you're at $5, $5.5. If you're wondering what's going on there, guys, that's what's happening over in ADTX. Only five minutes to go here. I want to get to a couple of other names uh, out there, uh, one of which is going to be a, a firm because always. Uh, a firm, 25 is a level that I wasn't patient enough. Uh, to hold on for, kind of missing some, some data on that chart. But, you know, 25 a is a big level. That's where it got to the top yesterday. That's where the short, I think, makes a heck of a lot of sense. If it tries to pop and fails 24, oh my God, look at the market. I only want that on the way down. And the market, like you said, I think just there, oh starting to head back God. into the downside. It's a lot of weakness happening. Tesla just retook 298 to the downside. And uh, I will be Tesla, going. Tesla, you know what? I only want one direction in Intel until... You know, I'm not sure How what much is that I'm now? not sure what I'm thinking about 28 is the point, but yesterday it was 29 for sure I'll short 29s at this point the bottom was this 2865 on Intel and the short was at that 29 and then one little move above that gave you 29 quarters uh, yeah I'll have to be thinking about this 28 like 75 area that was that bottom uh, and then that'll be one short area. The second will be that 29. Maybe every 25 cents, it'll just be a short on Intel. But I'm going to go back to the well with that. I'll go back to the well if there's even a pop to be shorted on. I don't even know if there's going to be a pop to be shorted oh, on a firm. And then Roblox. I think we mentioned this one with that, the daily active user update that didn't come uh, positively for them. They got tanked. Uh, I want to short a pop into 44. It still hasn't taken out this 42 level, however. So... I'll take a breakdown on Roblox, but I don't want to get trapped on the low of the day on Roblox. That's the kind of name that can kind of squeeze back up on you. And I much prefer shorting it around that 44 level as to trying to get that bottom and go short. But 42 is a big level. So I will have it, the 42 break, because that's where it stalled yesterday. But it'll be a tight stop, probably only a quarter. And I can't believe, I actually bought some Intel the other day at 30, like right around that 30 mark. So that's a little bit of a dumpster fire right now uh, on that. And like I said, I just think that that's a dollar cost average name. That, that dividend's at 4.7%. Um, if there is going to be a rebound um, in the market, I think Intel's one of those names that you, you buy. But, oh man, uh, okay, it just keeps getting nastier and nastier right now. You want to talk about another name I actually bought the other day too, some Google at 105, and that's down to 101. So that's a 3% haircut on that position as well, uh, down to the downside. No more buying now. I've already talked about this until well after the Fed. Let's see what happens there um, after the Fed. But uh, that true trading group, they're still up there. Is that 
accurate? Yeah, okay, good. Um, as we get ready to open this bell very, very soon, look what just happened to Google. Google cracked lower um, right now. So, whoa, Amazon's whoa, 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 whoa. Um, everything is ripping right now. What is happening right now? The market just took off to the upside. I was like, hey, Google just went, you said Amazon? Amazon doing? popped. Amazon popped. Google right now popping as well. I don't know what's going on right now. It should be the rebalance probably. Let me just check this out here. Um, Apple with a big buy, yeah. So some big buys. There's Google with a big buy coming through. Apple with a big buy. There are some buys coming through here um, on the imbalance locator. So um, I'm, you know, I'm going to take an opportunity actually to go short right now if I can um, in this market just to see because honestly that was a little bit of a you know bump up we'll, sh we'll short right now so there it is we are short into Google I had to pay not a great price for it but there it is oh we got double shorts okay so we actually did wind up getting something there at 20 then something again so like I said if it's gonna bounce up on imbalances that's not a good enough reason for me that's a that's a random market event um, Amazon does bump back up to 123 not good enough I want 124s for Amazon but I'll take that Google short right now um, as we're short at 102 and uh, it's pretty Printing 10160s right now. Might just let's just get a piece out if we can here at 69er, um, and then see if this one wants to come to the downside. But right now, the market catching a little bit of a bid with only a minute left. Yeah, just under a minute to go. I know Tony's going to be on the bell. I rolled into some Amazon off the pre-market high. Didn't get Intel. Would have been nice to have gotten some Intel on that little pop, uh, but did not get it. Roblox is the other one I'll be watching heavily at the open here after yesterday's trade. I know everyone's going to be paying attention to some uh, uh, FedEx. We'll look at that for 165 as a res resistance I like, but Roblox 42 is going to be in play for a potential breakdown. That could happen right away. Roblox did not just bounce. When I saw, like, it looked like it was mostly big tech that was on those rebalances, or sorry, imbalances uh, there in the morning. Uh, do I just, yeah, just got into some Intel as well. So got a chip name, got Amazon, got Tony on the bell, Tesla woo, testing woo. 300. It is going to be a wild Friday, obviously, uh, with those index Hello. rebalancing and lots to watch. We're going to get to that FedEx in a little bit there in five, four, three, two, and ring it. Oh, Roblox broke right away. All righty then. Um, yeah, we're gonna see some wow, action. Wow, Roblox broke, broke right away. Yeah, Roblox is nuts, man. Some of these stocks there. What what broke down? Yeah, broke, it broke down. It broke forty two. Yeah. It's got forty one eighty eight. It's yeah. already yeah. at forty seventy. Roblox is already dying here. Uh, wow, that's a big snap to the downside on Roblox. Um, Anytime, it's not even open yet, so what happens is when a stock isn't open, you know it can put a pretty big reversal on you. So I'm expecting that you could get a snap back, but Roblox already gives 42 to 4060 to the downside. Amazon already crushing to the downside as it gets right down into 122. And then Intel was the other short that we rolled into. Got that 2875. Here's 2850 already. I mean, I don't know. I kind of, wow, stink bids out there in the long term feel like they should be in play. If you like any of these things in the long term, it's like stink bid. Uh, but it's, we're in front of Fed, man. We're going to hold on to these shorts. If that was the pop and that's all we get, um, and we could have some of these tops, hopefully. Tesla, by the way, that tried to take out 300, wicked down, held the low, and then is bouncing a little bit to the upside here. So watch out for Tesla. We've seen it buck the trend before. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile, Google as well. Money, money, dollar in the money, money on Google money, here. Money, uh, you money. know, we hit that twice there. You guys saw that. Didn't even realize we got that, Phil, but there it is. Yes, sir. Wow, what a good one. It's a flushed market here. And, I mean, again, I hope you're watching us and, and trading with us because I was like, nah. Nah, you know, that little bump up, nepa on that, when you get a market imbalance like that and then it makes a move to the upside, no, I'll, I'll take that short. Every single day has nothing to do with the fundamentals of the market. That's just a one-time event and that's why you're watching us, I hope, because there it is, man. You make your day right there. That's done, like it's done now. Google's a dollar in the money and here it goes. It's gonna break through 100 probably, so we're gonna try to hold that. Look what the market does, right? It reassesses all those buys and then it's like, thank you very much, all the way back down to the downside. So there it is, man, big time flushes happening all over the place i'm not i mean i'm not in anything other than this google no. because quite frankly you're not this is just crushing to the downside this is the trade that we wanted and there it is right there it's a buck now plus in the money we talked about google it's on the stick you know 101.75 and there it is a nice little break to the downside how's your roblox doing uh it's still chilling uh it's roblox chilling. is chilling down about a buck or so but i just got oh come on chart uh, I'm going to have to go to the black chart in a second here because Netflix just popped in, and I meant to get to this one. Uh, at one, sorry, 228 
on Netflix was a pretty key level there. Come on, there we go. I have to hit enter like three times sometimes. 228 was a big level on Netflix. I'm gonna quickly pop over to the 15 minute chart so you can see. This was at top, this was at support from yesterday on Netflix. Uh, so that's a long way of saying buy in front of support. Just got some out at 230 there. It's all about the key levels, but I want the you know what out of dodge on this trade. Like it just gave me $2 on that open. This is witching, man. Take it and run, to be honest with you. That's the way to go here. But always looking for those termination levels. And Netflix going to give me that fill. I'm watching over at Roblox because $40 is an obvious psychological level. Remember, it's options expiration. So when you talk about these even big round numbers, you're likely to find some gravity toward that price. There's no way I'm not holding this to at least 40. But if there's redonkulous size, there might be an out there that gives me a bit of a pop back uh, to the upside to be able to short that. Amazon is still churning to the downside. Remember, we're below that 39 on the ES. So I just sort of feel like you want to be short going into it. Uh, but 40's coming in on Roblox. Amazon, I think it can get to 120 if things get really ugly here. Intel, that'll break 2850. And then there was that beat stock. There was this small cap I was looking at. I took the long and got shaken out again on this thing. So I might need to let this one settle down. But I got in at 94 and then out right there at 88. So another hit on, on beat. It was good to start the morning, but then it's heading to the downside like everything else. Yeah, um, I, so that Amazon's interesting because I'm going to try to short it through that 120. I mean, it just bounced back up and went to that 122. I'm looking, uh, so here's Amazon right here. I know Neil's just talking about it, but I'm going to try to short it right there at 122. Ultimately, I want to try this 123 again if it can come back up there. I don't know if that's going to happen. Google, again, you know, we only have about 20% of that position left. That, you know, we took a big piece out when it just went back down to 101. But now it's starting to fade back up a little bit here, Google. So I'm looking at like a 102.50 kind of top. That's where that was right there off that move. So I think you could still fade this back into this 10 bye bye bro. Yeah, 101, 102 area. I think we're going to get a little bit more short here uh, into this name. So we'll just punch into oh that right God, now and see if it goes. Ugly. Yeah, Roblox. Roblox is at 39.50. This is, it's getting destroyed, man. They had such a good run up. Like, it's like you got to hit the ones that, that, that maybe have overextended a little bit right there. Um, okay, so now we're into a couple more shorts. So we just got hit on Amazon uh, right there at 101.74. So, uh, sorry. Uh, 121.86, that was the wrong price. I gave you Google's price there. So we are now short right here into Amazon. So let's see if this one wants to make a move back down. Um, I'm gonna average in until we get to that 123 oh on Amazon. Goodness. So uh, that's that play. You're loving that I might, Roblox. I might hate myself for this, but it, it just got all, Roblox just got right to 39. And this is where we were last week. Uh, you have this nice little bottom at 39. I'm just thinking to myself, look, this is getting out of hand. Uh, it shouldn't be going this far. The market's holding those lows. We'll take it. 42 to 39, that's going to be good enough for me. Uh, I think at some point you're going to get a bit of a bounce back, if not at that 40 level. But it's just churning through levels to the downside like everything else is. So we're we'll ready to oh. register there. And uh, 140,000 just showed up on the bid, by the way. And 121 now, Amazon. Uh, I think it's getting to that 120 for sure. And this is without the ES reclaiming the morning lows, by the way. It's two for two, baby. Drop down that cash. Look at Amazon now. We just put this trade on. You know, and that this is what I'm, you know, this is what we're trying to do. Explain why we like the shorts. Explain what our trades are. There's Amazon right there. Bouncing back to 122. Thank you very much. That's a 75 cent winner right now on Amazon as it's trying to take out more lows. I don't have any reason to get out of this name at all. Um, just looking at the 20 minute chart here or wherever you want to look. I mean, you're, br you're breaking. So see you later. Uh, maybe we'll put another bid at, at 121. 150. Might as well do that uh, right now. Get, get something out. I mean, tw you know, even dollars are pretty key levels. And then by the way, look at what's happening right now with the reload in Google as well as bang right there. I mean, you know, short, short short, short, reloaded uh, right there and out again as this continues to drop as there goes the NASDAQ, man, 11,800 right now. Two for two on some big shorts. We're pretty happy with this day. Amazon, sorry, Amazon. Uh, Apple 150 is on the bid right now. There's a bit of size there. Oh, come on, level two. There you go. Uh, we'll see the size come up there if it goes down to what there is, but I can't even tell how big that is. 200,000, that's nothing, man. No, no, it's, it'll chew it'll through that bad. like a hot knife through butter, but obviously a big monster psychological level. It just broke it now. Oh, so I wasn't even looking. I don't know, like, I still see some. 
Like you see the quote, see how crazy that quote is on uh, Apple. It's all I over the place. It. it got down as low as 67s uh, is what I see there. Uh, so obviously Apple, big level. I'll show you the higher time frame, the gap to the downside. If it holds below here, it's tremendous. I got slipped to 90. So, but I got the fill right. Like yesterday or a couple of days ago, I missed some breakouts because I used the wrong type of stop order here at Day Trade the World. This time I use the Edge A ones and it works out well. So got a 149.90 short on that break in Apple. It's now already at. 149.50. Yeah, it's all systems uh, go for the shorts at this point. And spin it. Money, money, money. I money, wasn't even on money, Apple, so money, good call money. out on that one. We went over there and of course shorted that. We also obviously shorted Amazon. We shorted Google, and there's my Apple trade right there. We went short. We had to. We we missed it. We weren't even on it. So when it did pull back, we got 81s out. Some 50s there. 54 was our out. Let's see what happens now with Apple, as it is well below a um, lot of levels now, man. I mean that 158 was pretty key. Now you're just breaking through 150 to the bottom side. So let's wait to see if that can hold out. But um, yeah, right now, you know, you, we're hitting goals. We're at our levels right now. Some nice little movement down here off the open. You're only down 1.5%. That's pretty good though, right? Like when you're looking at the NASDAQ here, it's really flushed itself down, right? So oh now- Oh my God, Adobe. Yeah, there's really no levels. What's Adobe, 290, something Two, like that? It hit 293. So the 300 break on Adobe, like you, look, there's a lot of shorts you could yeah. have, man. Like they were all really good. The thing is, what um, was the spread? Like you might've got a dollar. Well, that's the yeah. thing. You, you're going to get Apple at 150 when it breaks. Roblox, yeah, you're probably 42 bucks. You probably get that. I got it. Uh, 300 on Adobe. You might not catch that fill. So you got to go to where the liquidity is. That's why you see some other names. FedEx, by the way, don't want to ignore what's going on in FedEx um, because obviously that's going to be a big name. That broke 160. It's only down five dollars, but look, the stock was already gapping down whatever, the 50 bucks or whatever it was? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's pretty yeah, ugly. Oh yeah. And we could see a 150 print on FedEx as it continues to flush. Apple's gonna try to retest uh, this 150 level. Anytime you get a break of a level like this, usually you'll get some wiggle room um, as it goes back and forth. I'm still holding a piece of this trade because I wanna, if we're trending to the downside, uh, then at, look, market's going down, Apple's going down. I think we all understand that. So everything is just a short for me at this point. I do wanna look at some other names for you guys. Uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA here is actually breaking to the upside right now. So I don't know if it's, like my Intel's still in the money, but NVIDIA is at 128, up $2 from the lows. I haven't checked AMD there, Sean, but I'm going to make the assumption that these two are for, for some reason Ooh, relatively market's strong. Ripping. Market's trying to rip, and it looks like the chips that are going. The one I want to short on a pop is Intel. Uh, NVIDIA looks a little bit strong to me right now. Uh, Brennan? Uh, worth noting on UPS, guys, still dragging to the downside as well, but just saw some buy volume come in there. Uh, 174 held, uh, which is pre-market support or resistance there, so still down, but a little bit stronger than the rest for UPS. All right, all right. Well, We're going to short. Um, Apple does pop back up here through one, 150 uh, flat up to, I mean, I'm going to get out if this takes out 150. Oh man, I mean, where's the right out here? 151, something like that. 15150 to the high side for Apple there I'm looking 60. Uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, at some point you're just kind of like throwing darts at some of these names. Um, you know, where is there going to be? Like, look at that. That's, money, I mean, money, that's why money, you hold, right? Money, I mean, it's money, just money, that. Money, quite money. simply, that's that's the level, right? So you're going to wait. Let's go. Let's effing go right now. That's a great hold right there on Apple as it breaks through 150. The funny thing is I was looking to get more short and it was close to me putting on more there, but uh, you don't. So there goes Apple right back down into the downside as we are just lit up right now, man. This has been a great, great day to trade. Any of those little bump ups there, I apologize. I haven't looked at AMD yet, Neil, so I'll look at that in a minute, but what a good no. move. Wow, like that Apple it's trade. right back to Holy the Holy shit. Wow, that name is really all over itself right now. Uh, Apple takes that level. You want to bump up again? I'll be sitting there for you, Apple. So let's go. Um, a nice little move to the downside. I'm just kicking some more out here uh, at these 50 levels. Why not, man? This is the bottom for Apple, but it's a temporary bottom. Let's see it go a little more than this. What up, B? More macro concerns. GE downside big time aftermarket yesterday on this. Uh, they said delivery is still uh, going to be affected by supply chain issues as well going forward. So that happened aftermarket. We are headed back to the upside right now, but uh, still negative for GE as well. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I don't know. Like, it's just, you probably just short anything at this point. Uh, outside of NVIDIA looking relatively strong, outside of that, I think you short anything. 
I did not get the 24s on a firm, but that's okay. I just reloaded on some Intel. I did the same, well, I didn't get a reload on Apple. I was actually uh, gonna be looking at that six, I said 150.60 kind of out of the corner of my mouth there, but uh, that's what I would look for as a bit of an out. But I just took some out in front of 149. I think it made some sense to trim. I don't want to ignore Tesla. Uh, it's still holding its low, but it rejected 300. Looks like that's going to come back into that downside. Uh, Neo, which was another name uh, that I was looking for the short, I'm going to cancel my offer. I was up at 2180s on Neo. Doesn't get anywhere close to that. Uh, that wig looks like it's bogus. Uh, Neo about to press that 21. It's all about the shorts. Just going to hang on to these three. Uh, we haven't talked about Meta at any point. Just going to start running through some names that I feel like people might be interested in. Uh, Meta tried to get to 140, 149, now down three bucks, and it is churning. You've already broken 150. Uh, Meta getting shellacked with the rest of the market here. 145 could come into play as a big level uh, for that name. Uh, as for Roblox, it looks like we got the perfect out there uh, on Roblox. That 39, there was size that showed up, so Wick bottomed at 39. 140,000 shares showed up when it got on the north side of 39 again, and now it's bouncing back into the upside. It might start rejecting 40 even. If it does that, there could be a nice little rollover short. But that 42 break, it showed you the bottom on the news yesterday. All you had to do was take the short when it broke that 42, and bye-bye low of the day, Tesla. Yeah, this has been amazing. What, what an amazing run here. Um, as, yeah, I just took some more out on Apple as well. Uh, as we just got a 30 print there. So, yeah, a couple outs down here uh, in the 30s for Apple uh, as that's exploding to the downside. I don't have much to say, man. I mean, I'm just sitting here watching these shorts just absolutely collapse. I mean, there's a specific reason why every single name on the sticky note today is a short and why I said that we were only looking one way short today. So, that's it, man. It's getting crushed. We're sitting here a dollar in the money on Apple. We're 40 cents in the money uh, on Amazon. We're now 20 cents, not a big one on Google. Google's been the one that's sort of been misstepped, but there's Apple breaking through 150. We short the break at 149. 85 there, then it comes back up. We take a 150.20 short or 150.11 short, and now you're breaking through 149. We've taken some out. We still have half on board for this name, and then there's Amazon as well. Um, not really moving as much. I sort of thought Amazon would be a little bit lower than that today, but there's Amazon to the downside. We've taken some outs on that one, and then of course Adobe is what you know we've talked about that breaking through 300, but kind of basing out right now. Maybe the market is a little done. 11,800 uh, down there on the downside for the market. Market. So that's, you know, we're trying to find some base, but hey, that wick bottom, let's see if it takes it out. That's exact, not exactly, but close enough to 11,800 there as, yeah, Apple right now still trying to touch that 149. It has a lot more to go, but Apple right now, nicely done today, down 2%, and we're still continuing the downside slide here. I think this is a short to pop kind of day. It's, there's a couple of kernels of strength. Like we showed the chips a little bit here, but look at Rivian. Uh, Rivian back up to, it actually broke the pre-market high for a brief second there, and right back up to the highs. You got a wick bottom to 38, and now you're trying to grind higher. If this takes out the top, I've tried to fight shorts in Rivian the last couple of sessions and had not been successful, but if it breaks out, this has been a relatively strong name before. I think we could have some, look, I don't love the longs, obviously. I'm going to be holding on to these shorts and try to hold on to them for dear life, quite, quite frankly, but uh, Rivian showing some signs of relative strength. If it gets through that top and the market holds the bottoms, I think we have a chance for something that we actually like to the long side. Uh, this is the ES. I don't know if you guys can, I'll zoom in on my 15 minute for you guys to see. Bouncing and holding the low. So I'm looking for little dead cat bounces to make. Maybe I'll go over to Netflix as well, which we had a good successful long in uh, a little bit earlier on. Like right at the open, we we're able to get that 28 level into 230 on Netflix. And I just said, like once I got that bounce, I just took it all out because the market was too weak. Uh, as for now, it's holding that 228. So that looks like a pretty solid level to work off of as the market tries to get back upside. Yeah, it looks like the market does want to try to go back upside a little bit here. It's trying to bounce. Um, you're trying to get back to that 50 period here on the market. So it keeps on rejecting it. A couple wick highs there. So we're going to get at another piece of Apple in the 40s there. Uh, but right there, 11,800. So there's the Apple fill. Oh, no, we didn't get it. Uh, well, I thought I was, oh, I'm bidding 42s. Okay, so look, there it is. A nice little take again there as it's Christmas for the short sellers here today, Brendan. Hey, yesterday, if you remember, for uh, Roku, uh, trying at least to get back to the upside. It was down here uh, in the pre-market, but uh, trying to get back uh, through pre-market levels right now. Maybe a red to green type idea for Roku. You know, especially when you're hosting. Oh! oh. So, 
It's not necessarily the. Well, I have a long. It's not. Oh, necessarily, you took a long. Well, you wouldn't normally think that this is the kind of morning where you're like, yeah, I'll go long something at the top. Correct. It is. You wouldn't think that. Uh, but Rivi, <laughs> look, it's. We talk about setups. Look, it's got a wick bottom. I mean, Lucid is strong relatively too. strong. The market just held the low, and then Rivian's taking out the high. Now, the only thing that doesn't make sense is I got triggered into this when it didn't take the high. So the high was three thirty nine seventeen. And I guess maybe there was like what a crazy wick. Some long at 15 here, so it looks like it didn't even break that high. It ended up breaking 17s anyways. It just got two cents better. But I got triggered in slightly before it broke. I don't know how much I want to give this. Certainly no further than 38.80, right? But the question is, when it gets to 39 even, do I just want to cut bait at that particular price? So I'm going to have a look at that 39. If, it's, if it shows some strong buying there, then I'll probably give it a little bit more room. But uh, right now, I want to be treading lightly on this, uh, any kind of a long, I think, but some relative strength at least. And if I'm trading Rivian, I'm watching Tesla, and you can see what Tesla's doing. It's holding a downward trend. It's still weak the entire way. Uh, one of the other names that we talk about in that space, Lucid is... Lucid's at $17? I was going to say, I mean, that's why I said to Brendan, I just asked him in the chat, can we get some Lucid news right now in, in case something's what, up? We'll because something. it just took off straight up, straight upside there on Lucid. So Brendan's looking for us right now. I'm, I'm adding uh, to Rivian because... Well, yeah, but yeah, I don't. Again, I, I've I've only looked at Lucid, so I don't know what the other space is doing. I know Tesla was going down early. Um, all right, so Amazon comes all the way back to its 52-week low. It's not true to its low of the day right what? there. Um, we oh did take God, that print, stock. so that's another out for us on Amazon. I'm not reloading it. I I just I'm I want there to be a little. I'm already short, and we're already banking. It's just I don't want to put another short on here because my outs aren't until up here. So. If it's gonna float, that's fine. Let's try to see if we can get a bump up. Like right now, even though I'm net short and really doing well uh, on the shorts, needless to say, I'm still kind of waiting for a move to sort of bump up a little bit here. I mean, Apple's taking, okay, I, I mean, it's taking 149. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna punch out again right there and spin this for you because there's Apple. Like, I can't believe it gave us that gift and went back to 150 there. So we'll say thank you very much for that one. As Christmas, as I said, coming early here this year, no, I didn't know that 916 was Christmas, but uh, there it is a few months early uh, for the shorts. Well, but it is your birthday. Well, okay. Yes, so it is, but well, tomorrow. Tomorrow's tomorrow, tomorrow going to be yeah, my birthday. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, so that should be fun. The parents, everybody coming over tonight. A lot of plans tomorrow. We have our parents versus kids t-ball game tomorrow as well. So that should be a lot of fun. It always is. Don't um, go easy on them. Then we got sneaker con. No, no, I'm going to be drilling it over the... You got uh, to. Yeah, yeah. You the problem to. is you don't want to hit it too hard because if it smokes them, then that's not a great Work look. Work on them reflux. Uh, but maybe they'll have to be wearing their helmets there. Uh, but, uh, okay, so anyways, needless to say, yeah, we have sneaker con tomorrow. We have a few events going. But, yeah, here it is, man. Um, the market's starting to now rally a little bit. So good out for us there on Apple uh, as it touched 149. Let's just try to hold on. But still, some nice profitable areas here to take, take some out as the market still bounced off. What a surprise. 11.8 again it bounced off. What's yeah. going to happen when we take that? Disaster is the correct answer. Yeah, and uh, speaking of, it's not disaster, man. I, it would have been a fluke if I had looked at Lucid before Rivian, because I always trade Rivian over Lucid. But uh, the same trade, like Rivian gives you this 15 break. Uh, it's only now at like 39.30. Whereas Lucid just broke 17 even. So obviously, look, it is what it is. I, I went to Rivian because that's the one I've been trading this week, and that's the one I looked at. But it's the same setup, wick bottom breakout. One of them just happened to go a dollar, and the other one you know, it gave you like 15 pennies. It's a bit frustrating, but you can't do anything about it. Lucid, Brendan doesn't see anything specifically on Lucid, uh, but this is now just an absolute moonshot. I'm not going to get in front of this train. I don't think it makes any sense to do so. Uh, I'm going to go back over to uh, Roblox a quick second here. It's, it just got to that 40 level, but it broke 40 and is now holding above 40. So we got the right out. Now it's about being patient. It's only 9.50, right? Yeah. I yeah, still think yeah. it's a short day. I want to be patient loading into the shorts. I am adding to Intel beneath that 28.75. That makes some sense to me. I was looking at Meta on a pop, but Meta, if you look at it, we're still in the bottom of the range, right? So a hole on Apple, hole on Amazon, add to Intel because it's at a good spot, but I don't want to be adding or jumping into Meta at this price. Don't necessarily love it. And as I say that, my Apple's one breaking. long starting to come back in. So wick top on, on Rivian, 
Got to be careful with these longs. Brendo, Brendo. Another one having a big day here. Drug. Remember Bright Minds uh, doing this right now on huge volume, up 25%, trying to get back above uh, 175, which was a bit of a pivot over here for Drug. What the hell is going on, Lucid? Um, okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll, I mean, we're going to look at all these names, but right now we just had a major event happen. Uh, and of course, that is the breaking down of Apple one more time through that big level. So Apple does crack through 149. Again, like I said, man, impending doom for some of these names. Uh, and Apple is not uh, alone in that uh, as they're all starting to go back down. Google actually caught a bid, which is strange. So I'm going to ignore that for a bit. Amazon as well, back down to the low. But there goes Apple, man. It just continues its move to the down side with absolutely nothing in its way that 150 break i mean pretty sweet man so a nice little downside move here for apple as it continues to make that move i don't really i mean other names here tilray's down a bunch down and some of the weed names are down four or five percent uh we could have a quick look at that roblox in case there is a turnaround story somewhere here all my levels that i've written down are like in the stratosphere right now so i'm um, not really sure if we're going to get back up to this roblox though does make that nice bottom and is above right now vwap so maybe looking at a 40 break or something here for rblx especially if this market is um, trying to bottom I mean, that's three times now we've touched this 11,800. I mean, is it going yeah, is, is to stand out? I don't know, but uh, don't that's, know. that seems to be holding up for now as Apple tried to break back above 149 there and didn't. So, well, it did. It went to 10 and then came right back down. I think, uh, wow, 140. I, I, I don't even, like, I'm feeling like I want to get more out, but every time I do that, it, it, they don't look great. So, you know, stair-stepped it out, uh, got some nice ins, and now we're just going to try to hold to see if there is uh, an eventual bottom here in Apple. And I, and I just want to hold for that. So let's wait to see how, how low this market goes. Neo might be a strong one. Uh, it's still down 3%, but trying to bounce off 21, I guess. Shopify 3150, I don't know. There's a lot of names that are just getting killed here. Yeah, there's so much getting killed, but all you can try to do is ring the register. Uh, just make sure you put the buckets in. Right, like, you know, you get a layup, you got to be able to take it. I keep going over to uh, Intel because it keeps hitting these highs and I'll keep taking it out in front of 2850. But I don't want to ignore the fact that if, like I, like I was saying earlier, if there's a kernel of strength out there, it's there's a bit of an upward channel in NVIDIA. And I, I keep meaning to check AMD, but I'm watching NVIDIA. It keeps trying to go higher and take out these highs. And maybe that's what's holding the market up. If the chips reverse, forget about it. Brendo? Uh, just having a look at both Rivian and Lucid once again, guys. I uh, just saw a note suggesting heavy call volume coming through this morning for both Lucid and Rivian. There was also a note being circulated about a further $8 billion in funding being uh, raised by Lucid. That, however, was out two weeks ago. So that's old news, but heavy call volume apparently so far on both. So I just got wicked out of Rivian, uh, the long, which, I, you know what, I don't mind because I feel like having a quick out on the longs is probably the right call this morning. Like if you get it and it works, like Netflix worked instantly, um, but this did not go. Like Lucid went a dollar and Rivian went 15 cents. Right. There's no need to be stubborn about it. You just, sometimes it's not, the luck isn't with you and you didn't get the right name. Uh, Amazon's coming to a 121 bottom. So I'm gonna do that thing that I do where I'm out at 121 and I'm looking to take a 121 uh, break. So I always look at these levels, the triple bottom down here, and much like Apple, I'm gonna look for that breakout. Not, it's not a breakout, it's a breakdown. A uh, breakdown at 121, it's been holding this level. I think we'll look for this break here. Not as much size on Amazon's bid as you would have seen on Apple's bid. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, but there we go, just got the break, got 95s. Is it gonna go pretty quick? I it's got right, out of Amazon, damn it. Yeah, it just got to like the 80s. That's not a very convincing break right away. So I did get out in front of it. So I ended up, you know, costing myself maybe like 10 cents. But if it had bounced off 121, then I could have had some good re-entries. Uh, yeah, it looks like it wants to try to hold below. But anytime you take a break, I want this working almost right away. I only want to give it back to about those quarters. I'll take some out uh. down to the 75s and 50s if it continues to work. And of course, I'm monitoring out of the corner of my eye. I'm watching that Apple. Because if that shoots back up 149, that could be something that gets these going. Oh, the other thing, we'll go to FedEx in a quick second. Tesla just made a double bottom at 296. So you got to watch out for some of these names catching some bids here, especially when you're re-entering. I'm re-entering, I should say, off of these lows of the day.
Yeah, um, okay, so I unfortunately, that's not unfortunate, we took the out, it is what it is. We were waiting at that 121 flat there and actually got out. So um, that was a good out there off of this one. So it's a $2 win there on Amazon. We'll take it. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be enough, but well, it's going to be enough. It's well done and, and I like that trade for sure. Apple again down here, trying to look for some new names. You know which name is pretty strong actually right now? You look at Microsoft, Apple's down 2.35%, okay. MSFT uh, right there. Microsoft only down one and a half percent so you know maybe something here microsoft could have some more room to go downside um especially if it takes this 242 that 241 is the low so watch out for this 242 uh play there coming in a name that we you know i'm normally always on is amd but look how choppy this is today there's absolutely no trade here in my opinion anyways pretty choppy on amd i don't really want that name anymore uh so that's another name that we'll look at palantir's down four percent we could check out snowflake that's a great trading vehicle especially if you think the long is going to come in there's a lot of people pretty bullish on snowflake uh, but that's down here to 188 and still making moves to the downside wow okay i mean amazon still continuing apple continuing as well uh, but it's bouncing off this 148.80 so I, you know what i'm going to take one more out on here there we go we'll just punch it out at that 85 so that's again another dollar 50 winner uh, for us there on apple so yeah i mean it just keeps on coming in i, I haven't really engaged in any new positions yet uh, amazon broke through at didn't mean to have that bid, but took it out. Uh, that's a good one. Microsoft, maybe Tesla. I mean, hey, FedEx is bouncing. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe those are the plays, man. Yeah, actually, if you look at if you look at something that's actually bouncing off the lows. I mean, I guess there was a couple of things I looked at Nvidia there, but uh, 155 on FedEx just bounced up and testing 160 again. Uh, that might be a good level here, a bit of a dead cat bounce. So 160 could come into play. I've now scalped out a half of Amazon because it's not really going further than that 120 70 area. So I have I taken a couple of legs bouncing. out in front, but I want to hold the rest because we're going to the downside. And ultimately, I still want to think short. That's why if I can get my hands on a 160 short or at least something close enough on FedEx, you know, I can have a stop at the even and then try to go risk reward. Haven't traded this one at all despite the fact that we came in and sat down today and what was leading the news. It was FedEx on that, oh, that poor guidance and, of course, the uh, preliminary pushing. earnings. Market's still going down. Hold on to your shorts. I mean, they've had a couple of longs, but they haven't lasted very long. Thankfully, Netflix. I don't even want to look at where that one is. Um, I'm glad I'm not defending that 228 again, that's for sure. Yeah, it's really amazing that the, the number one name, I mean, look what we put here on the sticky note. Please try to follow if you can. Um, and I'm not just doing this. It doesn't matter. We, I have 36,000 followers. If you want to follow, fine. Uh, but right here, Amazon short, AMD short, TQQs, which is the short, the NASDAQ, and then the Google short as well. So they're all right here. They're all on the short side of things. We definitely played that way today, and it's just been a great day. It's been a lot of money flowing through here. So, so far, so good on the day, man. No losing trades yet. I mean, we were short Apple, short Amazon, short Google. Maybe now thinking about a long, it's definitely a day for the Bears here today. So um, I don't know, though. Maybe we're exhausted. It doesn't want to take down this 11,800 with any real conviction uh, down here on the downside. So, uh, but yeah, the market is a living, breathing animal. And today, it's trying to survive. It's trying to hold out there uh, down that 1.8% right now. But uh, near the bottoms, Brendan, let's go over and see what else is happening around the world with happening now. Hey guys, yeah, University of Michigan preliminary September number just out 59 and a half for 60 expected on that uh, sentiment number. We talk about sentiment all the time. Here's uh, an important one. Again, that's the first look at the September number. Uh, here's a look at the big board then all red right now. It is the NASDAQ leading almost 2% right now for the composite, the 100 uh, catching up 1.6 as well to the downside. Uh, the Russell 2000 leading as far as small caps 1.9. They get 1.1, 1.5 there at the top for the Dow. And the S&P, again, 59.5 versus 60 expected on that uh, first look, September uh, University of Mi Michigan sentiment number. Here's Uber trying to bounce off the initial low right now, still down 6%. Really had uh, not much of a bounce in it whatsoever as we uh, got things going. I uh, saw this one as well. Bed Bath & Beyond popped up initially on volume at the open. Might just have been... A uh, large opening order, but hasn't really done much since. Uh, happening now, guys, brought to you by Scans.com, the all-in-one stock scanning news and alerts platform built for day traders. Effortlessly identify the best stocks to trade every day. Check them out, Scans.com, guys. Every day. Yeah, that Uber looks interesting because it just, look, it did a wick bottom 31s at the open. It did a wick bottom 31 just now. 
So it's trying to make some kind of a higher low and get back to the upside. I wanted 33 short on Uber. Uh, obviously, it gave you nowhere close to that. But uh, I guess those 32 highs with 31.75 could come into play. But I keep looking at these chips, man. And, you know, and like NVIDIA is about to take out the top. I'm, at, I'm now at the money on Intel, the Intel short. Um, and into, look, look, if NVIDIA takes out this high... I might get out of Intel at 75 and then regroup at 29 even, which was the price I actually sat down liking. So I'm not going to ignore the fact that you're getting some relative strength and you're trying to hold these lows. You're back above that 11.8 that uh, Sean was talking about there on the NASDAQ futures, and there it is. Like There goes NVIDIA to that upside. I don't want to be punching things at those highs. Uh, I'm going to give Amazon back to 120, 150. I did scalp most of that one out for the short break, but now I have to give it a little bit of room. If we fail this high, then I can add to Intel if we fail, we get a wick high here, then I'll maybe add to some Intel there. We just got it, so I just added to Intel. So um, right now, NVIDIA looks like one of the stronger names out there in the market. However, the strongest name has been Lucid. It's making a bit of a top here. So Lucid, I don't want to say it's running out of steam, but it's definitely getting to yesterday's top. If it's going to turn somewhere, maybe this is it. I didn't even pay for shorts on Lucid. I paid for them on Rivian because obviously. Uh, so 17.35 yesterday's high, pennies away here on Lucid. Like if it's going to fall with the market, it's probably going to do it here. Okay, so we're, um, yeah, agreed on all that. Uh, we're going to take the long, or sorry, sorry, the long, the short um, in Amazon here. Were you just talking about Amazon or you trying to lose it? Okay, good. Um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to try it. I don't want to be in this name if it takes 122, though. Um, you know, that's just, well, I mean, it's a little bit higher than 122. I guess 122 and a quarter, something like that there. So we'll average into this short uh, for a bit here and see if it does want to fade out a little bit. Uh, you know, not, not huge. We're just, we're just averaging in right now into this trade. We're up here at 58. There it is. So another average. I'm out at 60. We're gonna, yeah. So so Neil's out there with an update on that. Um, we're gonna wait. Yeah, 60 is probably a good out. The market is trying to take the 50 period one more time. So we're gonna sit here um, and see if we can get lucky uh, and grab a little fill here. So that's all that we're trying to do uh, with Amazon. We're gonna give it up to that 122 uh, right there, 122.25 or so area uh, on that. So we're gonna try to go for that um, on Amazon, 122. Uh, 122.25 short, but we're going to add to it right now. So I'm all, I'm out of Lucid, sorry, Amazon when it broke that, uh, broke that 121.60. I'm, I'm paying for shorts on Lucid as I'm talking right now, which I only want this if it fails this level. Like I'm not going to stand in front of it. I want it testing that high and I want it clearly rejecting that high before I do anything with that one. This market does want to bounce and like I said, I added to uh, I was adding to Intel, Intel there, but Nvidia is still emerging off that breakout. So I'm gonna, I'm now gonna stop out of Intel at 28.70, at 75, that three quarter mark. Uh, just adjusting my stop order. No need to fight this one too hard, especially when we're bouncing on the market here, at least attempting to bounce on the market, and I'm seeing relative strength. Uh, Apple's fine. That's you know, that 150 break is still holding at 149, but the chips, they're a little bit of a different story here led by NVIDIA, it looks like. I don't want to be long this thing just yet. I kind of feel like that's way too early. It is only 10 o'clock, and I will say at 10 o'clock, zoom out at 10 o'clock, and if there's any levels that you liked or any thesis that you might have had, if it's still valid, you should still like it. So I'm going to be still in that Intel. And truthfully, NVIDIA is still below, or at least testing below yesterday's low. It's the simple fact that it's stronger than everything else that I'm not shorting these levels, and I already have Intel as the other piece of it. Yeah, so we should have been a little bit more diligent here with our um, Amazon. Well, Amazon's fine. We're still short. We're in the money now. It just went down to 30, and we didn't have any bids out. So that was a little silly there um, because we do have a decent spot on, right? So not a great out for me, obviously, here um, on Amazon. We should have got some outs. It just went to 30, and I wasn't even bidding. So lesson learned on that one. Let's see if we can get that back here um, now as it's starting to go back up to the upside. We are trying to average into this, right? So um, although... Ugh, the market be running right wow, now. Lucid. So uh, it's a nice Holy little move God. to the upside. Yeah, I can just imagine Lucid's it popping is. off uh, right now on those rumors and whatnot that they were talking. Brendan brought to you that what extra financing was, yeah. was supposed to be uh, there. Remember, they're Saudis, man. Like these, um, you know, it's Saudi backed. So we've seen what they're doing with that Live Golf Tour. Um, you can see what they could do with Lucid here as well. Yeah, they're not giving up on this, right? That's their idea. So we're going to wait to see what happens here. But for right now, Lucid making that move 18, I think, would be the line in the stand uh, on, on any sort of a long there. So I don't know, hold it to 18 if you like it, but 
I don't know. Uh, you may want to cash some out. This is this is a funny market here today, needless to say. But uh, a nice little move back up. And like I said, maybe we did have that bottom. Uh, we got out of most of our shares. Now we're just chilling out with Amazon. And we just got an average in price there on that short. Yeah, I want to come to another name. Uh, it's on our watch list. We haven't traded it just yet. Boeing. On the pops to the upside, I am looking for places to be able to fade uh, and then work some shorts as we try to get back to the upside. Uh, Boeing 145 to 146. That's going to be one of these names out there. Uh, NVIDIA continues to churn higher, so I'm now out of Intel. Tesla did make a little bit of a bottom there. We hit enter too fast, and it's New York. Oh, uh, did no. make a bit of a wick Amazon bottom. Running. So it could be heading back to that 300 level. What looks relatively weak right now, look how far, like Apple is not making as big of a bounce. Uh, so Apple looking very, very weak compared to the rest of this board. Uh, just had a bit of a, Lucid's attempting. Oh, yeah. man. Lucid just made a bit of a fresh high there at 1740 or so, and is trying to pull back. And another name that we were trading was Rivian. Now I'm starting to think Rivian short. And the reason yeah. is Lucid's still going, Lucid through the highs, Fuck. and you've got a wick top on Rivian. So if we fail at a lower high on Rivian, I'm going to look Rivian short. It did not go with Lucid. Now Lucid's at the top, and it looks like it wants to put in a lower high. So I'm looking for the fade off of the high of the day here uh, in Rivian at that lower high. Yeah, we're in a little bit of trouble here because Amazon is not doing um, what it was doing previously. It is continuing to make that move back up to the upside. We're getting close to getting out, man. We talked about that 122, uh, 25 level there. It almost, I mean, it almost cracked that. So right now my eyes are all over this, this trade right now as, um, yeah, we, we have a big position on this. So, you know, we're just believing in the short here, trying to be patient, waiting for it to run up. Our average price is 90 here. We're still up on the day on Amazon, obviously. But, um, yeah, we'll be down on it if this takes out that 122.25 uh, because we do have a position on. There is a decent buyer there. Okay, well, I was going to say, there was a decent buyer there at 122. Maybe that's some somewhat of a signal there. Um, I'm going to try to put some more bids down here, like 93s. Come on, give me 90. There it is. Okay, so now we're starting to crack a little bit lower, putting us back into the money obviously on this trade but that was a slippery slope there that 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 was uh almost got us out of that amazon trade uh, on the high side but now let's see if we can hold it if this market retraces back you know we let you know i like this name to the short side it's the number one name on the sticky note so i'm going to try to respect that but i still have that 122 25 as an out um and i apologize not looking at the camera i mean i'm just sitting here watching these charts right now um and watching this this level two go through so um amazon nice little move to the upside uh, just in case you're wondering, we got out of Apple right there at 148.83. I am holding a small piece. Uh, we'll see about if it testing, re retesting those bottoms. I just want to still try to believe in these shorts. Um, and, and maybe that's me just being stubborn, but you know, we're, that's a nice move up. And I just, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see we're if we can get it. Now. There's a nice little turn back down on Amazon. We just got our 87 bids. They're not huge wins right now. We're kind of hovering above the 50 period. And until we break back down below, I kind of feel like the right thing to do would be just to get these out if I can. So right now on Amazon, that's what we're doing as here comes the move back down. Finally, thank you, Amazon, for that move. And uh, look at what well, Meta just made a huge move down. So I just added to Rivian as Lucid just got to 1750. Uh, and just rejected 1750. But look at the market start to come back in here. Uh, oh. Meta just getting absolutely crushed. There's, this one's relatively weaker. I was looking at Apple for a reload, but I think like this is the one on any kind of a pop you want to get into. NVIDIA just rejected the high as well. The story for the longs, I think, for everybody out there, is going to be lucid up that 5%. But it just wicked to 50s and then put this rejection. Last time it did it, it bounced and it went higher. If it gives it up here, I'm gonna love this Rivian short, obviously, and then Tesla, the other bad boy, just did a wick high through 298 and heading back to the downside. I'm looking for that to be our resistance uh, on Tesla. I haven't traded Tesla yet today, looking for this 98. Brando. Uh, crazy mover from yesterday, AMPX, uh, just popping back up on a volume alert, guys, trying to bounce off uh, some of these levels from late in the day yesterday. But uh, remember what happened with this thing yesterday? It ran up to 27, it's already gone 27 back to 13 here in the pre-market for AMPX. Oh, baby. Um, okay, so just, uh, yeah. 
good idea to short Amazon. It seems like for now. Um, but uh, let's see where this market wants to go. Have we just maybe made a little bit of a bottom there? You know what? The thing is, there is, mo there is money on the sidelines. We've seen this market rally. Before it being down 6% this week, we were up 5% last week heading into Monday as well. So let's not forget that th th this market does have buyers there. Not much is, I mean, what's changed is CPI. But we got that huge flush down. So now I'm kind of like, okay, where do we go from here now? Like, like, what is that next catalyst that brings us up? So I feel like the only thing that could possibly do that is just that we're too far down. Like, people will try to buy in. We've talked about dollar cost averaging and trying to buy some of these dips. I don't think it's right to do that right now. But we're day traders. We're getting in and out. I've already made 26 trades on Amazon today, um, including being pretty nervous uh, right now about that because we just came back in. Look where these lines are. If I can take some of these... Fills, I mean, that's why. Like, we're coming back in into these uh, VWAP, um, the 50 period. So, yeah, there are lots. See, there it goes. A little bit of a bump back upside, right? So, yeah, Amazon probably wants to take that. It just respected the 50 period a lot and VWAP down there. So, glad we were able to take some profits out as there goes Amazon flipping over to the long because I have too many shares. Oh, wow. Here comes our Meta. Meta's going to get right up to this 147. The market is really bouncing to the upside now. You're testing highs. There's Nvidia, a big move. Meta, Apple even came back. Well, okay, Apple not that much, but Apple retesting 149.50. I'm looking 47s on Meta. If it rejects this level, this is one that is relatively weak. I want to stick to the names that are relatively weak and not rush into them. Lucid, by the way, did pull back. He got to 17 even and then bouncing into the middle. So as long as we're below 1750, I feel okay about the Rivian short. Uh, but here comes uh, that 147 here on Meta. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Well, I just got rejected. Oh, there we go. I just got to fill. A little bit of a late... A little bit of a late message there, but I just got the 70s on Meta. 147 is going to be this out. I feel like if we take this out, there's room to not just get to VWAP, but like if you break this channel to the downside, yeah, you could be retesting some of these highs. So I just got into Meta for the first time today. Brendo? Remember that University of Michigan sentiment number, guys, is a reading on inflation. So a little bit better than expected there uh, on that number. Once again, 59 and a half for 60. Here's uh, some of the payment uh, companies just popping up. Uh, AXP, the first one there on volume, got through that last pivot, trying to go back to the upside as well. Wow, what Ooh, a big coming, move here, here man. Like, uh, go ahead. What were you looking at? Meta again? Yeah, well, I don't that, that just broke. It just broke out. All these levels. I was in the short in front of 147. That just broke out. The only things left are Rivian, which, as a matter of fact, that wants to take out the high. Apple, somehow, I don't want to be abandoning the shorts. We're back at that 150 level. So we could still have a curl on this name at that 150, but you're getting a huge, huge bounce. Wow, NVIDIA 130 is about to come into play. Tesla, uh, which is the other one that I think could be, I mean, it's a sleeping giant. No, it didn't actually, yeah, didn't get to that 280, 298 level or break it. Uh, so maybe not something there. Apple, still relatively weak. If it curls at 150, I've got to add to it on that 150 level. I'm, I'm not believing in the longs yet. I just, I can't bring myself to do it. Uh, we're still beneath the 39 on the ES, right? Like, the, we're still beneath that 39 level. There's my big line. You don't need a line when you're looking at an even dollar level like that in the futures, but we're below that price. So if you're relatively weak and we're below there, then I'm shorting it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just missed Apple, so I'll, I'm not... Here it is. I, I just got some in the 70s there. So I'm going to add to that on Apple. Rivian just rolled over with Lucid again. So I just broke VWAP heading back into the downside. Uh. Now, the reason for the Rivian short, despite the relative strength, was there was the break on Rivian. At the same time, it went 10 cents in the money for me. Uh, at the same time, Lucid was doing this. So when Lucid makes a top, well, I'm not shorting Lucid. Why do that? Short Rivian instead. At least that way, if it continues higher, you have the name that's probably not going to break your back as badly as Lucid. If Lucid goes higher, it probably goes another dollar. Rivian, you probably just lose 20 or 30 cents on the trade. 122.79. Um, okay, well, guess what happened, man? We went short Apple as well. Um, and now it is pay dirt again. Our Amazon, we got busted out. I mean, that's fine. That's going to happen. Like, you know, sometimes we're going to take hits. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was not a great one. But we're still fine uh, because look what happens. We reloaded it a little bit here. It's kind of dancing around these 20s. Let's see if we can get something out in the mid-teens or so uh, on Amazon. And there it is right there. Nice. Oh, no, we didn't get filled. We're at There it is. Yeah, we're at 16. I'm like, we should have got filled there, but we didn't. Uh, 
Uh, so there's a nice little fill on that one. Let's see if it continues to make that move down now uh, for us. I'll take another bid at 12 here. Why not? See if we get some O's. Okay. Yes, sir. Making that money back now on Amazon as it starts to float in. Uh, here we go back downside here. Amazon back down in. So a couple nice takes there on the downside. Oops. Uh, we, we hit the wrong key, I guess, there. We put it a little bit more short. That's okay. Uh, we didn't want that. But there goes Amazon now uh, into the teens. Let's just see if we can get out of some of these plays. Uh, there it is. Okay, good. So some nice little downside moves. Come on, Amazon. I'm just saying good because it keeps failing up here. But it needs to. you need to push lower uh, if we're going to make any profit here on you. So right now, Amazon looks like it wants to keep that move going. Um, I'm going to be short this name. I want to short it again. I want to play it against that level. You know what? This short right now is too early. Cancel that. Ooh, did I get I didn't get to cancel it on time. Uh, that's okay. Here it goes. Let's take a little piece out there. I was... I don't want to be uber short, like at a bat. I want to be short for sure. And I want to be a lot of shares short, but I, I want to wait. Like that might've been a little too early there at 37. So we'll start cashing some out here. And there it goes like right back into the teens. So I guess that wasn't too early. Uh, good thing we did get that full fill there uh, after all, but an Amazon, still one of those dancing names, man. Um, you know, ripping up, stopping. I'm going to use that wick high as my out right now. Let's see if Amazon wants to retrace back, but the futures are above the 50 period. And you guys know what that means for me try to stay away a little bit for these longs or sorry for the shorts but i believe in the short today this is a very tricky day i feel like what's up brandon uh first notable move here in a week or so for gold guys back to the upside here's gdx you can look at gdx u as well which is a uh, leveraged version of this but uh, i was up about one and a half percent just straight upside since uh, tagging 23 here uh gold making moves higher Look, this market is trying to bounce here, and obviously we're going to respect that 3,900, but I'm looking across the board. Double bottom on Uber, double top and holding near the highs, right? Like you had an absolute crash in Apple. We all saw that 150. Now you're trying to reclaim that level. So, look, if we make a higher low and break out from 150, this market is going to try to test that 3,900. So I'm sticking with this. I'm sticking with that Rivian. I never got into Tesla, unfortunately, but... You know, even this one, you got to make sure you're not compromising on price here because, and, and also do not try to hold through these outs. If the market takes this resistance out, uh, there's only one way to go. I know what names I like if we take, if we take out that 39, if we take out these tops on Apple, look no further than how strong NVIDIA is right now. It's breaking highs. It's testing 130. It's almost green on the session. So I like that one. If we get a reverse on the long, I don't think we're there yet. Then I want to look at NVIDIA. I want to look at Netflix. You saw me get the heck out of Dodge on that long for a couple of bucks on Netflix. That wants to take the high of the day as well. These are two relatively strong names. I think 230 on a dip in Netflix or breaking the highs if we retest and break that 3900. Otherwise, we're still looking at the short side of the trade. I'm into Apple. I've taken out half a Rivian. I want to look for a reload if I can get it above 39 and then work these back in toward the lows. The short thesis is not dead yet. But you have to at least start considering what is next. And if we break higher, I got two names I know are relatively strong. It's not Lucid. Next? And it's Netflix and it's NVIDIA. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's what you need to do, man. And we're just picking on the same name as always, man. Amazon, thank you again uh, for that short into that level. So uh, we shorted it against that. We just picked another high right there. Uh, 56, we got the shares and we got a decent amount of them too. So um, yeah, we're just, I mean, apologize for this, but I mean, not really apologizing for it uh, because here we go, man. We're just trying to cash out, trying to make that bank. And there it is again, another 30 cent winner for us on the reload for Amazon. So let's hold this. Maybe we do look at, look at that bottom again. Look at this. Wow. Okay, Amazon. Thank you very much uh, for this. As we just rock it to the high of the day for us. Um, I'm going to take... I'm going to take another piece out. I'm gonna, I mean, I've been taking pieces out here on the way down for Amazon as there it comes. Nicely uh, done on that upside. Like, patience pays, man. Patience is one of those things that I've definitely thought for myself that I've worked on pretty good here because uh, there it is. We waited for that fill, and now we don't have anything to worry about because we got a great price here on AMZN uh, as that's falling back down. I mean, I'm just going to keep taking profit on this name uh, as we've just came right back in there. Let's see if these futures want to fall and give us even a bigger one here uh, for us. But wow, patience, man. That was a good trade there on Amazon. Uh, but we haven't talked too many of these, I don't think, because there's been so much action in the broader market. But Brennan's got a name for you over up on the big screen. Small cap recap. 
Hey guys, yeah, brought to you by Chart Prime. They offer top notch indicators that automatically detect chart patterns, support and resistance no zones, pivot points, and more. Check them out, guys. Chart Prime. Uh, here's a couple. It's been kind of a quiet day overall as far as uh, small caps are concerned. We mentioned this one, AAOI. If you go to the daily chart, 340 is kind of the last line in the sand before you get 375, which was that high from aftermarket yesterday. Again, on a asset sale for this company. Uh, tagging 340 right now, trying to reverse back to the downside. A ton of volume still lifting this thing back higher, though. AAOI still showing a ton of strength. Mention this one as well, that Bright Minds coming back to life. This one still has a ton of room if you go out to a higher time frame, all the way up to 220, 225 even. So uh, consolidating at day highs right now for drug. Just waiting to see if it wants to break higher, guys. Uh, well, I just remembered to cancel a couple of stop orders that I don't want sitting out there uh, into the market, so that was a pretty good look. Good I'm going to do this one. Idea. We're bowling over uh, Apple. 150 is all you really needed. Once it was that big size there, I think that's going to be our nice line in the sand. Uh, we got the re-entry on the curl, just took some out in front of 149. This continues to work to the downside, and it's just a simple rejection. Uh, we tried to get, look, the market, I shouldn't say we, because it's not like we've been long. Uh, so the market tried to get back up to that 3,900 level. You're seeing it make a lower high. Yesterday, if you remember every bounce, remember we challenged the highs yesterday and then you'd reverse? We're not doing it. Today we're actually getting lower highs. So unfortunately, uh, for any bulls that may be left out there, uh, it looks like we're going uh, pretty sharply the other way. Lucid, which had been super strong, now has that wick high, rejected 1750. It could start to roll over here, and if a name like that was like this, that was super strong, starts to go, uh, you're in a world of oh hurt. I did God. forget something, and it was to pick on a firm, but a firm hasn't broken the low of the day, so probably not a bad idea. Somehow relatively strong there, and Uber, which moments ago uh, was testing those highs, even with the market pulling back, is still testing these highs. Uber might be in that bucket where it needs to break 32 and go to 33 for it to be a short. I would expect this right now to be on these lows. Somehow it's still holding up. Uh, I mean, Amazon is like a dream come true, it seems like today. Um, it just keeps like, again, we should have reshorted it. I was like, uh oh, you know, it's a strong move back off of that 122 again, but then it just fell back down and we have nothing to worry about. So we are getting lighter and lighter here. You know, like part, part of trading is understanding sort of when to get your money in and when to, when to not. So right now it's 1030. It's kind of just chill out for me a little bit here. Um, you know, I'm still excited to trade. I don't want to go anywhere, but uh, some of these levels, I just want to see what happens. Like Apple, like Neil was just talking about, man, like we took that short again and we took it very well. Um, and, and then it just came back down and now we're pretty light on it. The same thing here with Amazon, right? Like, that came, I'm gonna take another bid right now. Like, this is why I'm using more shares. So I can sort of do this algo-like rapid fire trading um, just because this is the, the market that we're in. When we get to super key levels, you know, like the ones that are written down on the sticky note, then maybe we'll engage in like a much bigger short. Like this 120, 123 is not on the sticky note. It's a little bit higher than that. 124.50 is. But, you know, if you can get back into some of these pre-market levels, that's when you're going to maybe start thinking about loading up because the market's still above the 50 period and it's... It's not like all doom and gloom. You're only down. I know that we always think that, hey, we're talking negatively here. The market, I think Neil and I just going short besides the EV names. But it's, it's just like, you know, it's only 1.3%. The market can rally more than this, guys. So I'm just going to cancel all my orders. I've, I've just gotten out. I don't have very many shares left on anything. So it's like, let's just wait to see what happens. I don't even really want to take any more risk now in this market. I feel like all my positions are basically done. We do have a small position on Amazon and really small on Apple. They're like 5% of the position left. So, you know, take it out if you want, but there's Amazon. It just ripped right back up to that level again and failed. So I don't know. I just have the feeling like at one point it's going to break. So that, that's what that is. Thank you again for Devin there. Um, oh, there we go. Thanks so much, Devin. Very kind words. Uh, thankful to God every day. Today's going to be crazy. Uh, if you get that L today, eat it and it'll help you grow. Yeah. I mean, today is a big day in the market. And I feel like Every single day, the market humbles you. So, um, you know, lots of opportunities every day to trade. But you are 100% right, Devin. Like, if you take the L one day, just come right back. And I, I think that's worked for us. And have confidence in your abilities and in your setups. And uh, only change when you've back tested and, and things aren't working and you have some new ideas, right? So um, I think that's great. Thanks, Devin. You've been here for 13 months, so you know it's good.
Exactly, and the market is always open tomorrow. Well, okay, well, it's Friday, so it's not open. It's not literally open tomorrow, but you know what I'm getting at. The market is always here. It's not going anywhere. Opportunities abound. Uh, we're about to get to 1.30 on NVIDIA. It is now green on the day, so it's still stupid strong. I did not want to actually go long until we started breaking highs in the futures. I'm not thinking about taking long positions until we get that. Uh, but 150 is going to come back here in Apple. Rivian's going to retest those highs. I'm not reloading Rivian because I want to see Lucid fail first. Brendo? I uh, just saw a, another little one popping up here. Bowler row. Yep, it uh, is a bowling uh, chain up uh, big time after reporting better than expected results. Uh, back above pre-market highs there, a whole bunch of volume went off. But this thing ran up huge in the aftermarket yesterday, up 6% today on earnings. Bolero, I mean, obviously, what a popular name to trade. That's um, uh, Fahad stock rate. Yeah, that's Fahad. Yeah, Fahad's been going to Bolero Rama uh, every day here uh, to, to get his game on. But I don't think Lucas wants any of that smoke anyway. Oh, so not anymore. Um, we'll, 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 we'll see on that uh, when we go. Oh, I forgot to tell maybe you Maybe for our Christmas party. Uh, Greg, was, Greg was talking about, this off topic. Uh, yep. Greg was talking about us entering that Wall Street, or, or not Wall Street, Bay Street Hoops uh, League. Mm -hmm. for basketball mm -hmm. uh, so Fahad would be like the captain of our team because apparently he's like the greatest baller in yeah the he can dunk and all that stuff he yeah. throws down dunks and he's dropping threes against NBA players at least oh, yeah. at least he is that's what he tells us so yeah well know, he probably some, is doing that I, be, I believe he is in some game he dropped 20 a game in high school I think so I'll give him respect I apologize for the wick on Starbucks this this chart it's gonna look a little weird but another kernel of strength in the market Starbucks is flat in the day you know how strong it was I can't look at that chart. You know how strong it's been the last couple of sessions, holding its 200, breaking out from 90. It's still above said 90 level. And I think this could be one to go. Like if I was looking at Nvidia, if the market tried to go here, but you know, Starbucks breaking 92s uh, looks pretty solid as well. Nvidia is so strong, man. It's just, it's hard to pull the trigger on that. Any tech name, if we're not taking out highs, if we're finding resistance in things like Apple, and I'm looking at Intel getting to 29 as well, but if we're going to hold these levels, I still believe in the short thesis, but you got to at least have some ideas for the long. And I'm looking at Starbucks as well to add that to like the Netflix and NVIDIA. Uh, but we're not done with them yet. I think it was the right call to get out of Intel and then regroup back at 29 even. So we're shorting this 2875 area pretty good. Then you get these wick bottoms and climbing up there just like what NVIDIA is doing. Now you're starting to reject this 29. So if the futures can't break, suddenly instead of being short at 70s, you can be short in the 90s with an even stop. Makes a heck of a lot more sense to lose less if you have to lose at all. I'm just like, so we just got, I mean, again, like we just take, take, take that out right there on Amazon. Like, you know, wishing we had held the whole thing for that out. But uh, Amazon kept creeping back up and making me a little bit nervous. So uh, right there, we are absolutely perfect today. We're going to go three for three on Apple, Amazon, and Google. And we've reloaded a bunch of these names. So there, I mean, shit, shoot, there it comes right back down to the downside again. Um, this, this is the interesting name to me right now. As we look a little more long right here, we're still above the 50 period. Um, it, it doesn't appear to be too much in danger, some of these longs right now. I'm just wondering if Google does get back into some of these bottoms. That would be something that I'd look at. There's that 103. Um, we've already taken down that 52-week low today, back down through 102. But here it comes again, man. Google up to 102.80 uh, as that high and something to look at there for sure. AMD is a funny one. I mean, that's normally something that I'd be all over and would have had like 100 trades on so far today. Uh, but we don't have anything because look, it's strong, man. I, I consider this a strong move up to 76. But look at that 76. The reason why I'm not all over this is because it's not 78 where we murdered yesterday, but Maybe this is a play here today. You bounce up to 76. You have that 76.10 top. The only problem is the markets, are, like I keep saying the same thing over and over again, and I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but we're still above the 50 period. So I'm a little hesitant to like start to layer into some of these shorts. Like we could blow back up to the upside. We did resist that 11,800 pretty good. So yeah, maybe there is something there, but I mean, honestly, this Amazon trade is just a hot fire. Like, this just keeps on making moves back down to the downside. The number one name on the sticky note today is a money, 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 money name money, because uh, money, that's money, a big money. move. 
here for Amazon. It's really resisted some of those moves, and here it comes right back down. Now 75 cents in the money. I remember I was like, oh, I made a mistake getting out at 121. It looks like that was a pretty good option uh, to get out. But here comes the market right back up to the upside again. I don't know. I might just get out here and then regroup. But let's go over to Brendan. It's 1030. Lots of time left in this day. But it's a crypto minute. Let's go check out how some of that space is doing. Yeah, no better, unfortunately. Uh, day number two of the uh, Ethereum upgrade and day number two of the sell-off continues here. Uh, this happened yesterday. If you uh, missed it for whatever reason, uh, the key here, 99.95% less energy uh, down there going to be used to mine Ethereum going forward. That was the whole purpose behind this uh, move. Uh, over on this side, Bitcoin, yeah, below 20,000 and holding. I was just saying to... Uh, uh, Lucas over here, we're at 19, oh, it bounced a little bit. It was 19,200 early on, but 19,6 right now. Uh, still negative, 2% on the day for BTC. Uh, there's 8.2% currently for Ethereum, uh, 1,442. It hasn't been a good one uh, the past two days. Bottom end of the board here, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, pick one. Uh, anywhere from 3.5% to 6.5% to the downside today, guys. So not only equity markets getting hit, but uh, crypto markets once again as well. Back over to you. So Intel just took that 29, got in at 94s, got out when it took 29. Don't hold it too far against you. Get out, re-engage. You don't need to lose extra on that. Netflix, with the market trying to test the highs here, at least something's an upward trend. I talked about Starbucks a minute ago or like 10, 10 minutes ago, uh, but Netflix did dip down into that 230. We weren't breaking the highs, but this looks like a pretty good support at this point. This is one of the few names I, I, I think I like that long. We're going to go ahead and take it if we get that long in front of that 230. And then watch out for Apple. Like Apple's giving you maybe multiple looks at that 150. Well, it got to 149. Now it wants to try to break. If, we take, if this takes 150 to the upside, that's exactly the kind of thing that can drag the market back up to that 3900. And why sit in the short? when you can get out, and if it's still good, if we're still below 3,900, why am I drawing lines on my chart? If we're still below 3,900, at the time that we get to 151, 151.50, you can jump back into the short if you still like it, but no need to try to hold this against me. If we break this 150, I'm out. The chips are super strong right now, uh, but I gotta think about Starbucks and Netflix, a couple of names that I do like to the long side, if we can break out. Uh, just setting up my stop orders here because um, I, I'm about to get short, obviously, oh, uh, into a lot of these names. Yeah, so there's your Apple break yeah, uh, Apple. through 150 right there. Um, I've averaged into it. I'm going to give it a little bit more room, but I was just saying out of the corner, I mean, when we were up there with Neil there uh, talking, talking crypto with Brendan, I said, I feel like there's a long here. And I said that just before uh, we went on the show, like I was exiting. I didn't exit my Amazon trade. I don't have, I don't have any shares on it uh, to, to do that. But now that we're at some of these levels, I did short again Apple right there a little bit. Not very much. I want to get more if we come to VWAP, which is 150.11. So I did not want to exit the Apple trade. And um, that's Apple. And then Amazon uh, went right back up. I was waiting at 69, believe it or not, man. It went to 67. So let's just put our order downside a little bit. But again, I'm willing to take a little bit short here um, in Amazon again against that level. So let's see if we can do that right now uh, and take a little bit more short on Amazon if it does get back up into that level. We're waiting at 69. 67s is what wound up printing. What's up, Brendan? The theme of the week, EV strength. Here's Fisker continuing its move back to the upside as well. Another volume alert there through 950, guys, for FSR. Yeah, that's been the, look, it's been the story for sure. I've been gotten away from Lucid, but I'm going to show you what's going on with Lucid. It's going to retest that 19, uh, sorry, 1750 high. I'm still short in Rivian. And I'm not short Rivian off the Lucid high, but effectively, like, if they have the same double top, and if we break one, we're probably going to break the other. Uh, Lucid is the strongest name out there that you can find. It probably sets up, like, the market's trying to go here, probably sets up for a 1750 breakout. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. You look at this on the daily chart, the only thing you got standing in the way is this 50 period at 18 even, but as a day trader, 1750 if resistance at 18 that doesn't stop you from taking the 1750 uh potential breakout trade uh, starbucks is not breaking 92 it doesn't look like netflix uh which i was looking for for 230 has not really gotten down to that 230 level if it were to break down i wouldn't be holding this to the low of the day at 228 not risking two dollars when i'm going against the grain the market is strong i don't want to be fighting it too hard there and then watch out apple if it gets to the 151 i for sure want to re-engage but i'm now out of loose sorry, 
um, out of Rivian. And Lucent's going to try to take this 1750. I know there's that drug stock that's moving as well. Whoa. Uh, but watch out for them. The big caps are going more, so I'm really not going to be focused on the small caps. Uh, there's a lot to be watching here, but here comes 1750 yeah, on Lucent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here comes the break. So, um, you know, everything just broke out on me there. So uh, Amazon, abs I mean, that's fine. You know, we'll give back some money, but Amazon, we, that's why we went short right there. Like, and it's so funny, as I was just saying, the market's about to blow up, and uh, there it goes, nicely done to the upside right here on a move. Uh, I still feel like we need to be short, though. Um, you know, that Apple we just got wicked out there, that's too bad, because I think that was a good trade. Um, and the same thing on Amazon, but, uh, you know, we, I don't want to be, like, I want to be wrong, uh, and if I want to be wrong, it's going to be light. Like, I don't want to hold these things and, and, like, have to make a decision a dollar higher or things like that. That Apple wick right there was up to 150.37 uh, or so. So I'm going to average into Apple. We just took some more shares on Apple right now uh, on that name. I'm going to average in into that wick um, and then see if it takes out that high spot there of 150.50. So if it wants to go back up through 150.50, then I'm going to get out uh, of my positions as well. So let's just wait to see what happens now. But here goes Apple. It looks like it does want to take uh, some, some levels out here to, to that upside. So we're averaged into the short right now. Uh, Wow, big aggressive move topside uh, right here in the market off of that 11,800 level. That sucks. Big time movement to the upside. Yeah, Lucid, I did get the break. I got that 1750 long uh, on Lucid. I'm going to have a pretty tight stop on this uh, because you're, you have such a big high there. No. You're going to take a bunch out in front of 1770, uh, in, on the way to 1775, and try to hold the last bit for that 18 level uh, on Lucid. You're buy I'm buying a top here, and that's why you have to be at least a little bit careful or cautious with it. And guess what's coming back into play? Ooh, okay, Amazon is... Amazon's getting right back to that high uh, where we had the short this morning. It was right at 123. If this rolls over from that 123 level, I'm going to move my Lucid level to somewhere else. Uh, if, we, if we roll over from this 173, as we're testing 3,900, this could be a re-entry point. But this is what's happened in the overall market. We're now coming right back to where we were at the Big open. There's a huge recovery, and we're going right into that 39. I, anything that was valid short in front of this level on the ES to me is still valid. I just don't want to be holding into this. I'd rather be getting in as 39 is tested and getting a good price, which Amazon's going to give me, Brendo. For sure. The uh, entire clean energy space was pretty strong yesterday. Here's a look at uh, one of them just popping up right now. Sun W on a volume alert, guys. Back to uh, some levels from yesterday, but straight higher yesterday for uh, this one and many more. It's higher right now. Um, okay, so yeah, we did get stopped out of our Apple, but we re-engaged it. Um, so, so far, so good on the re-engagement uh, of Apple. But we looks like we were a little bit too frugal, I guess, with our out there by getting out a little bit too early on Apple um, because we, well, actually, no, it broke 50. So that's, sorry, well, that's fine. I'm happy with getting out. But when it broke that and failed, you know, I, I did get back in against that wick. So I, I'm trying to do this, like, you know, try to make a little bit of money back holding something. So we'll see if that can work now for Apple back in. Um, I don't know how low it goes, but we've already broken through 150 once. So let's see if it could do it again. We're now in the money 50 cents or 40 cents on Apple. We'll see if we can make it count and see if we can go down a little bit more here uh, back down to 150. I'm just going to put a couple more bids here. 150.07 There we go. Did we get that, Phil? Yes, we did. No, we did, no, we did not, actually. So 150.07 is where I'm bidding right now. And let's just see if it wants to take 150 out. We've already been down here to 148. Now, I don't know if the market that's a retracement up of 100 plus points there. So, um, yeah, the market did have some buyers in there. And I'm glad that at least we talked about that earlier. I said, you know, the market has buyers in it. No matter how far down you think this market can go, there will always be opportunities uh, to look for longs, right? And so right there, nice little move back upside for Apple. Yeah, and uh, there's a move to the upside on uh, on Amazon as well. It did test that 123. I got 70 short because it kind of didn't get all the way to the evens, uh, but we'll see what happens. Like we talked about that. If the futures want to take that high, and the, that, that high, meaning the 3,900. I'm talking the ES today because of 3,900, uh, not the NASDAQ, which we'd normally look at. But uh, if we take that out, I, I fully expect that Amazon's going to take the morning highs. I'll play the first Holy out shit, in front Apple. of VWAP, That's in it. front of 122, uh, and then continue to work that to that downside. Lucid, yo, Lucid just looked like it was about to run, run the tight stop that I had. Came back down, touched 45, and then levitated back up to 50. So... 
Yeah, whatever Lucid is on, I mean, the market needs some of that to get through 3,900. It looked like for all the world it was about to wick top and reject. Instead, it just continues to go higher. So if you're looking for something to the upside, do not stand in front of that one. Don't stand in front of this freight train right now. Lucid is the strongest game out there. Well, there's probably something else which is moving, but Lucid up 7% and churning while the market is struggling to get through these highs. Only long I've had other than Netflix uh, testing these, and here goes Lucid, 17.75 within sight, and then 18 is my next big resistance level. I don't want to be holding through that as we send you guys to Brendan for Sector Watch. There's Kernels of Strength. Here goes Sam. Hey guys, yeah, we'll give you an update on uh, what is leading us uh, to the downside right now. I mean, it's not a, a huge move, 0.8% overall for the S&P right now. There are pockets, as you can see, of strength uh, popping up on this board right now, uh, including the home builders. It's tough to see there, I know, but uh, those are all of the home builders in the consumer discretionary group, 2.5% for Lennar, DHI there, PHM as well, all nicely higher, 1.5 through 2.5% to the upside. Uh, some of the uh, retail names also showing strength today. Dollar General up 1.5%, DLTR up one2 uh, so Lowe's as well, some uh, strength I saw early on in Costco and Home Depot also. So retail strength, despite uh, some warnings this week from JWN. Uh, PE down there at the bottom, the uh, utilities group was negative. It has since gone positive. Same with the consumer staples group. However, none of that enough to offset this. That's FedEx, obviously. 22.8% uh, UPS right beside it. Love, uh, UAL, all of the airlines to the downside today. Uh, I mentioned that note on uh, G. 4% to the downside today, but trying to head higher. Adobe down here. Remember day two on the uh, watch list this morning for Adobe. 4.5% there to the downside. PayPal, 3.5%. Uh, Autodesk as well, ADSK about 4% in negative territory. So tech leads industrial right behind it. The banks also pretty weak so far today outside of some of the diversified up here showing a little bit of strength. These are the material names. Uh, some of the resource stocks getting hit as, as well today, guys. So a uh, very mixed board, but it is predominantly red. 0.9 for the S&P. Back over to you. Charts roll. As if uh, I can take it if your charts are struggling there. Uh, we we struggling. reloaded Amazon. That's all. That's all I was going to say. Uh, we reloaded Amazon there at 123 short. Um, and then we just, well, what are my short? Yeah, what, 97s. Uh, my best out there, 74s, 80s, uh, 88s, 87s. The brand new Amazon position right now. Just playing off that top wick of 25. So um, meanwhile, Apple as well has absolutely went to the downside there um, off of that one take to the top side. Um, we can now hold the rest of this. We Yes, sir. Bye bye, Apple, as that's starting to come back down into the downside right now. Apple is the weakest name on board, I feel like, anyways. Um, it just keeps on going, man, like all the time. It doesn't want to stop. Um, we did get that one move that blew it up to the top side there. I'm going to take another piece out uh, of Apple as we're at the 50 period here. So, you know, I draw these lines at least for a reason. Well, I don't draw them, but uh, we put them on our software there for a reason. So we're going to start to take something out there and then hold the rest. The big trade for me right now on board is. Is Amazon. This is where we have an upsized position on right now. So we'll spin this again for Amazon as there it goes. More downside pressure here for AMZN. Yeah, and unfortunately, Lucid this time did stop me out. I said I'd have a tight stop on Lucid. This time they ran it. At least it made the move to 1770, but uh, the long we had is going to be kaputs. I did grab that Starbucks uh, break, but much like Lucid, if I'm taking anything, I, I tried to clean up this wick for you guys in the chart, but it didn't really work out for me. Uh, that 92 did break out. It didn't get very far. It got to the quarters. I'm going to have a tight stop on this as well. Went to quarter. I'll give it a quarter. I just got Netflix for the first time. Oh, sorry. The second time. I had it right at the open. Uh, but the first time on that pullback, if it can't hold 230, I'm not really that interested in it. Any single long I take now, I'm not going to be stubborn with it. I'm not going to try to hold it too long, uh, too far against me. So I want to see it holding this 30. I'll try to scout the first block and maybe catch a couple more uh, as well. But it's been pretty strong. So has Starbucks, but there's a limit to all that. I also re uh, reloaded on it. We got the wick top on Amazon. I also reloaded, so I'm not going to bother going over that. But I will go over to Tesla, which I've been neglecting. Tesla just getting right to 29. I see this wick at 300, and I wasn't watching the stock when it happened. So if this really did just go to 300 and reject that, that's crazy. Uh, otherwise, I think 299 is your resistance level uh, there. Amazon now flushing back into the downside. Everything's starting to come back into that downside. Uh, Intel's back below 29. So, oh my goodness, Intel, did you really give that same price? 
Here's the 15 minute. Oh, where's man. the 15 minute? Look where it just went. Intel went right to that afternoon and then back below 29 even. Time to re-engage on Intel. Yeah, I would say. so damn good? It's always his um, tea that he always gets over here, Sharif. So that's what we have to smell every day. It's oh. that chai yeah, sorry, tea. Sorry, I just. Uh, no, that's fine. That I, I mentioned really good. Ever since he's been <laughs> sitting there, I comment about it every day, his chai tea uh, coming through there. But uh, today, yeah. Delicious. Well, smells I don't nice. I don't soup. prefer chai, but it does smell nice. Um, okay, you know, again, like I have enough bullets in the chamber here to start to fire some off again. So we'll take another piece out here on Amazon as it's coming to the 200 period. I mean, will it will it go even lower? I'm here if it does. So that would be pretty nice to see that happen. But for right now, it just seems like it doesn't want to do too much. Uh, just kind of hovering around. The market is now trying to take down that 50 period to the downside. Ho hum. We just got a dollar winner right now on Apple uh, as that's come way in. Too bad we took some out there. I mean, I should have been a little more disciplined and tried to hold that, but we did get blown out to the top side. So when I saw the opportunity to make that money back on Apple, I took it. We're going to be positive on Apple, positive on Amazon, positive on Google uh, as of right now. So good good trading today. I hope you've had a good good amount of time here. If there's any names that, uh, yeah, Chai Tea is fire uh, right there in the chat there. So I got... Um, Everyone loves Chai Tea. Yeah, Sharif tea. over here uh, laughing it up there because he knows that that smell is pretty delicious. Um, okay, so that's that. What else you guys want to look at? SHPH is that pumping. Thing again? Yeah, the TQQs. Yeah, we've been looking at that, man. Uh, that's been a good one. I know Amazon does have an uptrend, Frank Jones. I do understand that Amazon's oh, wow. looking relatively wow. strong, but I mean, it's still down here. I'm getting out. Like, I'm not, I, I'm trying to respect this, but there's the collapse down. So money, 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 money no matter money, what you think money, is happening money, money, uh, money, right money. now. I'm going to take another piece out here on Amazon at 41. Spin it. There it is again, man. Thanks, Frank Jones. Thanks, everybody out there. Your boy is on one again today. So, um, um, another big day for us, and there's a reason why every single name on this sticky note is a short today, uh, because there it is, man. Respect that game. It's the short game right now. $1.20 in the money on Apple. And uh, halt, the SHPH is halted what it looks like for the second or third time, it looks like, uh, to the upside, indicating a flat open. It's up above 20 bucks. So, hey, this is actually going, unlike HKD, I'm not doing any push-ups over that stock, but look at where it's halted. Morning highs, 20 even, lower high as well. If it gets through that, you have obvious levels at 23, and then back here again at 26. So, you know, as much as there's some exuberance in this stock, there's two levels. I think a lot of people are going to be looking to sell this thing. Uh, that's if it, either right here, and then after that, 23 and 26. Uh, and Netflix is holding up, so that 230 level, at least for now, being respected. But that's a tight stop on this one. I'm, I'm long at the 33. Worked the first time off 28s, 30, just got out, not going to give it too much room there. I don't want to give back what we had to the long side earlier. Brendan. Uh, big move here, IGC uh, on the NYSE ARC exchange popping up on volume, guys. A little penny stock, but uh, apparently got, they got approved for a phase two trial for an Alzheimer's treatment uh, just now. So heads up on IGC. Uh, oh, look at this one. IGC. Uh, but I'm going to, we just saw Jason in the chat. My fiance asked me what I wanted to do on my birthday today. I said hang with Sean and Neil and Trey. So A, happy birthday, Jason. One day away from your birthday too as well. So we'll remember that one every year for you there, Jason. And yeah, hang out, have fun, enjoy yourself. Everybody hit the like and say happy birthday to Jason uh, because if the market isn't giving you opportunities today, I don't know what else you're gonna celebrate. The boys over there, wow. That's a great shirt, Sharif, by the way. I just turned it across. Uh, Sharif looking dapper in his new shirt. But uh, thank you guys very much, and thank you so much, uh, Jason, uh, for sharing that with us. Uh, Amazon continues to work to that downside. Everything continues to fall to the downside, with the notable exception of Lucid. Lucid is hanging up here at 1750. I got stopped out of my long, and I don't want to go back into this thing. Forget about it. I'm not going back into long in Lucid. I think at this point, if we retrace to the lows, even Lucid has to fall, too. At some point, it's got to respect what the rest of the market is doing, and it darn sure isn't going to the upside. So uh, I'm not going to be looking for longs and looses. As a matter of fact, um, I did pay for shorts. I will look to try and find a fade off of these highs if I can uh, on lucid. So uh, we'll see what happens there. It has been strong, but that's going to come to an end at some point. All right. Um... Like, I'm super happy. We're up on every single name we are, we've traded today. So that's, that's great. I mean, it's a positive day for us for sure. Uh, everything working out. But I don't have enough on board. Like, this move coming back down here, like yesterday, we had that AMD banger. Um, and we should have held on to some more again here today. And unfortunately, it's an up day. It's not going to be like 
a crazy up day. I'm only up half. Well, it's, it's 10.50, but I'm up half of what we were up yesterday. So, so far, so good. But honestly, like, oh, man, we wanted the short there. 123 came in. That was right at that pre-market level there. So, oh, man, that, that, it just should have been held for a little bit more. It's fine. We're in the money at 80 cents. And then and, and I had the same beef here with Apple as well as that came right back. The problem with Apple was, I, you know, we had that 150, 150 right here that I was looking at that we talked about earlier. I don't have it on the sticky note, but that was a level that I wanted to look at. So unfortunately, we did get stopped out on Apple right there, and then I re-engaged it, and we made money all the way back down to the downside. So all is good, man. I'm happy with it. It's just we got out too much here at 150. So now I don't have like this huge move down into the next level. So the first level, in my opinion, was VWAP there. I mean, I'm going to take it out all the time. And sometimes the lines fail you, right? Like you get out and then this kind of stuff happens. But I mean, again, I'm pretty proud of the trading that I've had on board today. And I think with that being said, like I could paint the tape and hold this, but honestly, like you're coming into some resistance. I'm looking at right here again, if I can get a 148.80, 148.90, it's not too far away. I may just take it out at 149, but this is looking like a decent spot here for Apple. I mean, the market's pulled back. Does it want to test? 18 again, and what I mean by 18 is 11,800 right down here. We took it, it broke, it went down 20 points before ripping 100 points. So, you know, a couple key levels. I think we'll just take out Apple, man, uh, right now as it's dancing around these levels. Let's just use this as our out. So uh, if we break above 149.62, we'll get out of Apple. We should have probably been holding that for that again. I'm just looking at some of my notes here, and, and here I found one. I made this yesterday. It's hard to see, but on another sticky note, it was just hold everything to the one minute 50 period. So that would be this level right there on the pink. So they're going to do that 149.62. If we break above that, uh, then we'll get out. I just wish I would have followed that rule a little bit before, but there it is, 150.62. Uh, that's why it's there. So we're going to respect that and get out of Apple very, very soon. But what a great day it was. And it's just getting better because it's Brendan with Money Talks. Hey guys, yeah, a busy day for equities, a busy day for uh, currencies as well. I threw up the Canadian dollar once again because uh, it's bouncing right now uh, in a decent way. 75 and a half uh, let go late yesterday. Uh, consumer sentiment out this morning obviously comes in the wrong way. Uh, so we are getting a bit of a bounce currently, but still negative uh, for the CAD, 0.3, 75.3 overall, but down on the day, uh, 0 0.09 there to the downside for the dollar index. It has been quite the slide. That's a multi-month low again this morning for the Canadian dollar versus uh, the U.S. dollar. Uh, the euro, yeah, it retook uh, parity once again. Uh, I was talking yesterday about how that uh, parity line is becoming resistance versus uh, support. Uh, we're back above it currently. We'll see what happens the rest of the day. 114.3 now for the British pound, quarter of a percent to the downside. Broke that 115 level as well. Uh, down here, Australia and New Zealand, both positive on the day, but has been a red day so far. They've just now gone positive. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum continuing to slide on the 24-hour. 3.2, 14 154 for ETH now, guys. Back to you. Tom, yeah, that'd be fun. Thank you, much. Uh, thank you very much there, Brennan. And uh, some chat about Lucid. About I'm going to go over. I, I think I kind of talked about this. Well, I'll go over it again, though. Uh, 17, it had a 1750 double top break. I had the break. They kind of failed that breakout. And then consolidating lower. So I'm in the consolidation off the high of the day. The other play, the other way to look at this uh, is... If we get to that 50 period, that's about $18. You could also fail the breakout here, so it could take out 1770, fail to get to 18 or fail to break 18, and then short with a stop at the 18 level. So a couple of ways that I do like it up here. Each of those, though, has a very clear to find out. High of day right here, so I'm not going to risk more than the 20 cents. And if it does that break right now, and I short them between 70 and, and that 18 level, then the stop would be at that 18 even. Uh, the reload, I'm reloaded at Amazon, but also looking for a couple of other names that will will give us a possible chance at a reload, but uh, one of those is Intel 29s, of course. We talked about that earlier, but I want to get to that SHPH before we get out of here. We have five minutes to go before we send you to Sharif uh, and Trader Pratt. Uh, yeah, there were three levels to look at and be wary of for rejections on SHPH. One of them was right at that 20. It opened flat. Don't chase these things sometimes. It's halted three times upside. It opens flat and just flushed. For whatever reason, it actually hasn't halted to the downside again. But it is threatening to break that halt, uh, that second halt at 18 even. So a bit of a rug pull just happened on SHPH. And only because that the 
This morning we sat down, HKD was actually up. It got all the way, got back up again, went to 185 and is right back at the low of the day at 120. If this can't hold 120, this is what it looks like beneath this price. Like there's a lot of room for this to fall. Just be careful. If you're trading this to the long side, you know, it, it hold it 100? Gained, oh, no, it, it gained 50 cent, 50 percent to the upside today. If it breaks this bottom, the stock was at 30 or 40 bucks last week. So, you know, just tread lightly with this. I'm not going long this stock. I think there'd be maybe one bounce at 100 if you get really lucky. Uh, but I'm looking at uh, Amazon trying to get some uh, trying to get some uh, Intel, and then of course Lucid, which have to have a to find out. Lucid has been strong. So have to have some defined outs here. It's trying to roll over. We're going to get some bids out in front of VWAP. If this is the flush, I want to make sure I hold till 17. So um, we'll do it because it's still today a bunch of, and we haven't done this yet today, a bunch of banger trades uh, on board today. But look what just happened to us on Apple. We talked about getting out there. We got out at that level when it broke the 50 period, so which was good. I mean, it went to 85. 87 but there's the drop down this is where i'd be getting out of apple now on that reload and then the same thing happened to me on amazon not the same thing but i thought we were going to go back up to the upside so we do take a piece out there and now it's right back here again so i'm looking to sort of respect some of these levels here on amazon one more time a 122 bid uh and we'll get out of amzn but there was a call for brendan what's up uh, not much of a reaction off of this, but there was another Electrek article for Tesla suggesting the full self-driving uh, not working properly. So just a heads up, that's being circulated right now. Again, down anyways, but uh, not really doing anything, Tesla. Yeah, yeah, Tesla wasn't... There were a couple of opportunities out there. If that wick was real to Tesla's 300... Tesla's held up okay. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it could have got that. cracked. Probably because, look, some of the EVs have been relatively strong, so it might have more to do with that, the fact that it's holding up. Like, if Lucid goes then maybe Tesla is going to take out these lows. But man, that was if this was real, what happened at 300, and that was the biggest gift horse ever. I don't think that was a real wick, breaking 99s and going straight to 300 right back in. Uh, but Tesla's still in a bit of a downtrend, uh, obviously, as we look at it here. The market heading back down toward those lows. What you're looking at now, I hate to say it, uh, but there's the NASDAQ, double tap the top, and this time a weaker press to the highs before failing back to the lows. And every single time this week that we've done this, have we failed to get, have we, have we touched, have we double tapped the highs, have we ever not gotten back to the lows? Every time we've gotten back to that low. So uh, for now, hold on to your shorts. SHPH, you kidding me? So after halting down, just halted back up at the top. So it drops 10%, it rises 10%. Uh, this one not done by any stretch of the imagination, it seems. Um, no, we're going to go long, or sorry, um, short here, uh, the TQQ. So right now we're in a TQQ trade here uh, to that short side. We talked about trying to short the market. I mean, Apple, everything is collapsing right now. So here we go. Um, and there it is. We just got our Amazon out. Let's go boom. Let's just drop some dynamites here, man. What a good day it's been to trade for sure. Like, I don't, I don't know what Sharif and Prad's been doing today, but it's been like a very, very monstrous day. Uh, here and I'm sure it's been crushed uh, by these guys. I mean, if, you, if, if you're going to be a bull, uh, sorry, a bear today, today is your day, man. Um, it's been a big, big move to the downside. There we go. We'll try to hold on to this a little bit here uh, for the TQQ and just see where we go. My out for this will be rate these lines right there. Not not 20. Well, I mean, we can wait for 20s. I'm going to try to respect some of these middle lines. VWAP's up here at 08. That's where my reload's going to be. Uh, if we do, if it does pop back up, we'll get it some more shares. But there it is. A nice little take at 94. So yeah, man. Now we're back into the market. Now we're back in. So here it is, man. It's a good one. We'll see you at the close too, Nikki Bones or Boons. What's up? Nikki Boons. What's up to everybody there as well? Hit the like button if you can. We didn't ask for likes again. Literally did today it literally we did it we did we do it once oh, yeah. so we did it once so twice actually twice okay well let's do it again because you know what it's pretty pathetic 1.6k let's get that to two right now we only have 45 seconds to go hit the like button before we throw it over to the big dogs there halfway uh, at the midday show i should say not halfway the market still has a lot more to go i guess it's pretty much halfway in the market here um there's a nice little move i'm gonna hold for this 2380 downside now on tqq so let's do that still over 7500 watching and there it is thank you so much look at that man you ask right away and 25 percent more likes just come flying through right there so 1.5k up to 2k there like this sharif 
snap. That's the kind of viewers that we have. Thank you so much, traders out there, man. I'm really glad that you appreciate the show. We spend a hell of a lot of time on this, and uh, the trading's not easy to sort of expose everything that we're doing to you, but that's what we're doing every single day. Thank you for watching. And uh, shout out to Juan Ayala saying they made money on the Chiefs. I said the Chiefs would win, but quite frankly, that was a fluke. Uh, they deserve to lose that game. 100 million percent, they deserve to lose the game. If they don't have that pick six and Herbert doesn't make that mistake, the Chargers win. So Mahomes didn't play a good game. Uh, sometimes you win, but I think it's a little bit of luck there. Shout out to you if you made some money on that one. Uh, I'm not a big gambler myself, but I love those Chiefs. Uh, we also love the Chief, uh, Sharif himself over there with Trader Pratt. He's got the chai tea. They've got the trades. Uh, let's go to the midday team. Go get them, boys. What yes, is sir. up, people? Hell of a game last night. I stayed up to watch that. That's why I'm a little yawny today. Oh, man, broke my heart watching that pick on the one-yard line. It reminded me a little bit of the Super Bowl with uh, Russell Wilson throwing instead of, uh, instead of running. But, yeah, you know, it just, it's one of those games. I think Justin Herbert is going to be one of the better quarterbacks in the league, hands down. I was just talking to Spencer back there about that. They're gonna, they're, they, make a, they may make a run this year, and I, I don't think we've seen the last of them. Hell of a team, good defense, good offense, everything. What would you think about that, Brad? I, I didn't watch the game, so uh, <laughs> I can't really tell you about, about it at I all. I set you up for that one. I'm yeah, yeah. Though. No, I, I, I'm, from, the, from the noise of it, sounded like a great game. A close game, was yeah. it? Yeah, so by, by, the, by the minutes or by the seconds or whatever. Yeah, so you know, they scored at the end. It, was a, it was, made it look a lot closer than it was. I mean, they scored another touchdown at the end, but it was basically lost at that point because it was a two-score game. So, but hell of a game. Hell of right a game. on. That's what I like to hear. You know, good, good games to watch. The first game I ever watched of NFL was actually uh, one of those really close games, and I think it was before the Super Bowl, and I enjoyed the crap out of that oh, yeah. game. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know what time it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's Market Mayhem Midday Movers with your boys, Sharif and Trader Pride. We're going to talk about the trades that we're in. Uh, I just took some uh, uh, fills, but the board didn't update, guys, in, in case that you need to fix something over there. But we're in UPS today. Obviously, I'm going to start off with, uh, you know, reading, reading our, our watch list in the morning coming into work. I was like, damn, I didn't know FedEx had that much power to sway the world and, and the economy like that. You know, them coming out saying uh, uh, just a just decline in... in uh, in orders through their company and so on and global economy and everything. I was like, wow. But, uh, you know, just sitting there marinating in that, in that news a little bit allowed me to, you know, process. Like, a lot of people use companies like FedEx, UPS, and so on to, to move products globally. So, yeah, obviously, if they're expressing the fears over there, then it makes sense. So, you know, still learning things every single day. Uh, only after being two years, you think like, oh, you know stuff, but then you're still learning new things about market, how market environments change day by day, year by year. Uh, and, uh, yeah, look at that. FedEx down 20% today. Instead of trading FedEx, I waited for FedEx to pop up and then FedEx to slow down. So I jumped into UPS, which didn't actually Woo! get beat down as much as FedEx, but still is copying the play. It's a little bit of a sympathy trade. So here's my UPS short around the 100 period EMA. Now about $2 in the money, already out a little bit of my portion. We're back to VWAP. Let's see if we can get a VWAP break over here and a continuation to the downside on UPS uh, in case the market continues to go to the downside. A couple other positions that I'm on. Okay, it says... Uh, Position board is updating right now, so maybe we see. I'll show you my Adobe position, which I already took uh, profits in. Uh, I don't want to take profits in this one just yet. So the position board will update when I'm ready to take profits. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got to agree. I think, uh, I'm not sure, maybe uh, someone can correct me on this, but I think the market looks at uh, FedEx as a kind of like a market indicator of market strength. If things are going down, if things aren't being shipped, then, or they look at them also reflective of labor costs, shipping costs. These are like market indicators. Like, I mean, I was reading in my technical analysis book and back in the day, they used to look at the Dow transports as kind of uh, a leading market indicator. If the, the, the Dow transports were up, then the market was generally did better. And so I think that that's what FedEx is. And that's why, uh, you know, the market's reacting today as, uh, as it is, which is to the downside. guys. We got into a big boy trade while Pratt was talking on SHPH. As you guys can see, SHPH up 36 on the day. It's been a little bit of a halt fest since around that 10.30 time slot. Let me see how many. One, two, three, four, five halts now on SHPH. We got in there at 21.86. 
We got out there at 22.87, so we scalped a dollar on that trade, and for full size. We didn't scalp anything else. One in, one out on SHPH. Tread carefully with this one. It's gonna open in, I would say, about three minutes. I think we've done two of the five, assuming it is a five minute halt and not a 10. So uh, yeah, SHPH back on watch. We've, we've been playing this one like a, like a fiddle for the last couple of weeks, if I can recall. Maybe even more. Definitely last week is for sure. Is this how you play a fiddle? Like a fiddle. Or like is this fiddle. how you play a fiddle? What's I a fiddle? I think that's a violin. What's a fiddle? Well, I don't a fiddle know. fiddle is like a... A small violin. Sean oh, okay, so, so you do play it like this. Yeah, okay. okay, so we're not that, that much. <laughs> Hold on, there's a violin and there's a viola, right? Because my niece played the viola. And viola. I don't know what the difference is. We'll have to Google that. Sorry to bug you guys in the chat about our like little rants over here. <laughs> anyway, SHPH, a hell of a mover, a bit of a halt fest but definitely on my uh, watch for the rest of the day. It's a small cap crapper, and you guys know I love that. In addition to SHPH, I've been watching LABD. Had a good trade on that one earlier. Let's pull up the chart. Let's talk a little bit about that one. I believe it, I believe it is an Amex stock, so it's .am for anybody that needs to enter the exchange um, code like we do. Holding VWAP nicely. VWAP tra uh, trading, or VWAP's currently at 21.27. Stock's currently trading at 21.40 or so. Look at this double top here though, guys. Very clear double top and then a consolidation. We got at that 2179 level and then the other one is at 2178. So they're a penny apart, uh, but very clear double top here on the one minute chart. But I do like that it bounced twice off the off VWAP. So it shows that it is respecting that level. So we got something to play off, right? Remember, we're always trying to identify levels with uh, levels that are being respected for these small cappers because you know they kind of do their own thing. So uh, LABD is also on my watch. TCRT, let's pull that one up. That's also on my watch today, TCRT. Let's pull that, oh, did I get that wrong? RT, what is it? Oh, it's not an MX stock, that's right. NQ, there we go. Load. No, maybe New York? No, what is this? One second, guys, I'll just have to pull this up. What stock are you looking for? TCRT, it is right, NASDAQ. NASDAQ. NASDAQ, NASDAQ, okay. Yeah. TRT.NQ. Come on. There we go. How come my level two's not loading up, though? Chart loaded up. Level two's... Probably just bugged out. Yeah, so good. we'll come back to that anyway. So we'll look at the chart since the chart's up anyway. TRCT holding uh, VWAP nicely, uh, holding above VWAP nicely. VWAP currently trading at 249. And you can see this dip here. So there was a respect of the 50 period on this one. So got to make sure we know what... what levels are being respected or what indicators are being respected on each particular stock. Looks like the 50 period here has been uh, bounced nicely above that. So look for maybe dips off the 50 period. Looks like we just dipped a little bit off this one. Anyway, we'll wait for the volume to come in on TRCT. I believe the, what, how much volume has it done today? Anyway, I can't look at it up at the moment, but that's another one that I'm watching, Prad. And last but not least, I think we're, uh, we're all watching the uh, American EV stocks, Lucid, uh, Rivian was positive until just like a second ago, and also Fisker. So uh, Lucid, Fisker, and Rivian are definitely on my watch today, Brad. Yes, sir. I hear, I hear Brendan asking what's those beers for. It's because we lost in golf, so we owe people beers, so we had to go buy those beers over there. Uh, so the, the fridge is stocked right now with the, all, the, all the losers' beers that even I had to buy people. <laughs> so uh, my money, uh, sadly, not going to beers for myself, but going to beers for other people. I want to show you guys a trade I had to punch out for. I had a long on Lucid. Lucid's stupid strong once again on the day. Uh, currently up, you know, let me quickly go over here. Uh, doing 2.83 relative volume, that's what I wanted to see, uh, with 5% up to the north side, 18 million shares today. I tried to take the little breakout over here, but I got caught in it, got, uh, took that exit on the, low, on the break of the range over here, but now pulling back, maybe we can look for a, a position entry elsewhere on Lucid. Adobe pulled back to uh, my, my entry, so I might be looking to... You reload on, on uh, Adobe somewhere here closer to my entry. Uh, my average price is 296.06. We're currently at 296.14 on the bids. So yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll get back in for our, uh, for the, the size that we got out for. Let's see if they're willing to give us that size back on that position. 
UPS now a dollar in the money once again. Uh, was two dollars in the money, so that means UPS is bouncing off of VWAP. So we're gonna try and exit some size over here. The spread alone is uh, 16 cents, so me throwing an order only five cents out. I'm throwing an order in the mid print, so I gotta cross a little bit more. I had to take the ask, which was 16 cents out, and uh, they gave me my out. And now we're gonna try and hold the rest of our size to see if Adobe. Uh, oh, Adobe did give me my size too. There we go. Positions board updated. DocuSign is now moving towards our profit territory. Let's go. I tried to take more size over here if it pushed to the higher range so I could give it the, the, the risk of 58.14. Thankfully, we don't have to give it that risk. Now, 20 cents in the money on Docu. We'll take some size out of there. We'll let the stock move to the downside even more and see if we can get the lower day break as the S&P 500 market and the NASDAQ market are both heading towards the downside. Can we got to test the lower day. Is the market going towards 3600 today is the real question, right? Yeah. Maybe not today, maybe maybe by maybe by uh, next week or yeah. so, but the overall idea looks like we're heading towards the 37 uh, uh, 40 to 3720 range and uh, 3600 areas soon to go test that minus 20% from all time highs range, which marks the uh, which marks the market back into bear territories. Yeah. Is there any way you can do a poll where we can ask? I, I don't have the rights to okay. do it, but uh, well, if you tell me what it is, I could probably log into the company account and do it. Just uh, if we're going to touch uh, 3650 again, which was the bottom 3650, of 3600, of June, right? Today? No, no. But like, I don't know. Are we going to retrace back to those levels in the, in the near future, or are we going to bounce back up maybe after? Well, I have not made a poll before, so let me try if All I right. can do it. No worries. Um, memes and things says in the chat, he's like, at Sharif, I think he's uh, referring to my little rant about um, FedEx. He says, it's part of the bear thesis. They think estimates and earnings will continue into a recession. So this is starting to validate the short idea, tightening into a recession. Yeah, I, I agree. I remember um, the CEO yesterday of FedEx saying that he sees us going into a recession. I believe he said early next year. Uh, I may be wrong. Maybe he said earlier, but I definitely know that he said he theorize that we will be in a recession. Okay, uh, do you see a question? Yes, it came up. Awesome. Awesome. I can't, I, I got to log in to get into this. So I definitely got, I need to log in for, uh, for the chat. So I'll do that after. I want to participate in the chat and people can't at me either. SHPH open guys, it's opening to the downside back to our initial entry point. We're out of everything on this. We're not holding anything on SHPH. Uh, the levels here are critical. So why don't we zoom out and look at the daily chart so we can get some levels on this one if we want to trade it more. Uh, let's zoom in here while well, you'll recall this is the IPO that IPO'd back on September 1st. So it's had, you know, it's fair share of movement. Recall on September 1st on the IPO day, I think we went up to $126, which is a hell of a move seeing that I don't know what the actual IPO price, but the open, like on the actual launch of the open was at $50 essentially. And then we went all the way up to 126 uh, kind of hard to look for any levels here because of this big red candle. It looks like we went down yesterday from, we opened at 37 and we we closed at around 17. So a lot of, you know, a lot of bag holding on this one. So careful, this might have trouble moving up, but you know, scalp in and out if you can. Uh, the spreads right now, I, I look at the spreads are three cents. So they're not bad, 10 cents now, 15 cents. It's, it's ranging in between like five to 15 cents. I've seen it a lot worse on SHPH. You'll recall, we've seen 20, 30 cent spreads on this stock before. So, eesh. and I want to also shout out Chef Henry. Thanks for the $5 super chat, Chef. He doesn't actually have a message uh, with his super chat, but I guess uh, we'll just thank you for that. If you have a question, put it in the, uh, in the chat and we'll definitely have that answered for you. Drug is also moving today, guys. D-R-U-G, it's a NASDAQ stock. Let's flip to over here where we have it on our other chart. We're pushing towards high of days. A high of day on drug is $1.72. We're trading at $1.70. So very close to high day. It's holding uh, VWAP here. It broke VWAP temporarily, dipped below. Now it consolidated a little bit above VWAP. Let's see if this one respects VWAP as a level or if it's playing off the 50 EMA because I see some... Uh, correspondence as well with the 50 EMA on this one. But we'll definitely, we're not going to take the high of day break. We got burned on that several times yesterday. We've talked about this market, taking the high of day break, taking the pre-market high break. It's been a fool's game for the most part. It's better to short off those levels if you can get, if you can get shorts for these small cappers. It's typically hard 
for us to do and for me to do on my uh, on my personal account. Never seem to have these ones. So, uh, what's Adobe up to, Brad? I know you were trading it yesterday. It's squeezing me, man. It's squeezing the shorts to the north side. Uh, we're about to probably get squoze all the way to back to 300 a little bit. Squoze. So yeah, squoze is a word, Love my it. friend. Don't that doubt me. Uh, <laughs> it's a word. Don't doubt me. Uh, I like it. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we might we might get squoze a little yeah. bit. So be careful, ladies and gentlemen. I'm ready to add to the trade more and more and more until until 300 technically. So if you are trying to follow me, obviously include your own risk management and sizing to that trade. Uh, I think the 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 chef Henry. The, 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 he said his message got deleted. I, I believe this was his message. 30, yeah. 3550 by second week of October, 5 to 14. From there, plus or minus 150, we bounce. All right. So, okay. uh, yeah, look, people people still expecting that down move in the market. What is the poll looking like? Poll saying 56% yes, 44% no. So pretty even, I guess. Yeah. Out of 331 votes, which is not hey, bad let's still. Go. So uh, if 331 people voted, that means there's 331 people that we could also get to smash the like button in that very some moment. So smash that like button. Currently, I got into a brand new long on Lucid once again. Lucid dropped hey. down to VWAP. So slightly dipping under VWAP. I'm giving it that risk under 17 all the way up to 16.89 or so. So let's like see if, if the market moving back up north over here, we can build into Lucid for an attempt to move back towards the high day. This stock has been ridiculously strong. Uh, our boy Sharif just told you what the catalyst was for uh, a price target update to $28. NIO got a price target update recently up to $30. Uh, but NIO has been pretty weak, though, still, along with its partner in crime, XPEV. But, uh, you know, the American, or at least North American, uh, EV sector has been uh, ridiculously strong. Rivian, Lucid, Tesla. Oh, yeah. I want to head over to Roblox. Did you see what happened to Roblox last night? I heard, man. Roblox got absolutely smacked to the downside Ooh. over here into the close. And I believe someone mentioned to me that this was... Uh, uh, a daily active user base number release came out and it, it, they missed out on that number. So Roblox getting pushed down. Uh, I mean, e even Sean yesterday mentioned, you know, like he, his kid was growing up and, and he was getting bored of Roblox a little bit. That's a natural tendency of games, sadly. Like Fortnite had that problem too. Fortnite was big yeah. and eventually Fortnite started going down in popularity. I think Fortnite's problem was though, uh, they made the skill gap way too easy like all those people who were early to the game they had to spend so much time to learn how to play the game and then they just made it easier and easier for you to get uh. get wins in that game so that was a big problem with fortnite but generally you know okay. minecraft uh, Roblox, Fortnite, all these go games go to the same problem and, and they got to start innovating. That's why your companies such as Activision, uh, EA Sports, mm -hmm. they, they have been the king of uh, gaming for so long now because they don't have to depend on just one, one side. They got multiple, multiple uh, uh, games to bring in revenue. For example, Activision's got the Call of Duty franchise and, and they got the, the World of Warcraft franchise from Blizzard and yep. so on. So uh, and then now you see now you see what's happening to Activision getting oh, yeah. bought out. Exactly. Right. Uh, Activision will always be tattooed in my mind for StarCraft. We talked about that before. Love that StarCraft game. It reminds me of. Oh my man, school. I've been playing the crap out of it. I just I got to very hard AI mode. Oh, AI. But I'm mode. but I'm yeah. losing to very hard. I think the highest rank against AI is elite. Okay. But I, I lose to very hard. I beat hard. You're playing with Terran still, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to learn back. Terran still. Yeah, I, well, I used, just love them because they have the nuclear weapons. Not that we're advocating violence <laughs> or anything, guys. We're talking about a game, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, looking back here, I'm trying to look at my chart to see what is interesting to get into. I think uh, Prad's, uh, Prad's idea of trying to take that bounce off 17 on Lucid. Let's see if 17 holds here. Uh, it's not really a key level on the chart. I see a little bit of uh, support in and around there, but... Let's, uh, let's pull it up for you guys to look at because I'm kind of talking about it here and you guys aren't following. LCID to NASDAQ stock. Here we go. Load, load, load. There we go. So a little bit of support in around that level. Breaks, it breaks uh, 17 for now. Let's see what it does around the 200 EMA. The 200 EMA is trading at that 1694 level. I want to see if it respects these indicators or it's just going to do its own thing. It's not really moving with the market, the, the direction of the... Of the chart is not corresponding with the market much. Looks like it held a little bit of 17 there. So we're, we're looking for that. I've got my eye on Lucid. I want to see if it pops back up or if we've made the move for the day, so to speak. SHPH is continuing to move sideways. Let me flip the SHPH here. Click my page down button. Yeah, consolidating sideways. Uh, it's 
you know, it's playing within a, a pretty big range between that 23 to that 20, 20 and a half range, let's say. So $2 and a half, yeah, that's a pretty big range to be honest with you, but that's the way this one moves, especially with the moves that it's made previously. It's, it's just such a wide margin. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the other one that we're looking at. Drug made a high of day here and then did nothing. And that's what I mean. Taking these high of day breaks has not been fr fruitful whatsoever on the small cappers. There you go. The, we, had a, we had a bit of a double top at that 173 level, and then we made a new high at 175, and then it just went back down casually to 170, and now it's pulling back even more. So the play on this one, it, from my perspective, is to take a dip trade, try to find a key level, um, either on an indicator or on a, or a key support level on the chart. I'm looking towards that 165, perhaps. I see VWAP and also the 50 period are in and around the same spot there, so that 165 that 164 area, I'm looking for a dip trade off there. In fact, I'll put one in now. We're gonna go with a, with a long on this. We're gonna go with half the size because I don't trust drug. We're gonna go for 164, the price, there we go. So we put, our, we put our order in, currently trading at 169. We'll look to scalp on the way up, hopefully to, to a new high of day. Looking at my scanner, let's bring the scanner down so you guys can follow along. Here we go. This is what we're looking on the scanner. Drug is the, the leading, uh, the leading gapper in the entire market, up 35 or 34 percent now. It's pulling back, I guess. Um, for TRCT followed behind it, SHPH. We've talked about IMTE. This one's done uh, four four and a quarter million shares. Let's look at the chart here. It's not my favorite stock. You guys know I don't like dollar stocks, especially the movement on this one's been kind of anemic a little bit. We've uh, opened up at a dollar 45. We topped at 180. Now we're trading at 171. Albeit it is above VWAP, so. That does give me a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, good feeling that this could continue into the afternoon, but definitely not my favorite one on here. Below that is IronNet, I believe. I, yeah, IronNet, I-R-N-T. That's kind of the same, uh, same thing as um, IMTE, a dollar stock, holding above VWAP, not my fave, even though this one had a bit of more aggressive move up than uh, IMTE did. Kind of barcoding a little bit. I don't like these type of stocks. Let's see what else we got below it. AAOI, a bit of more, a bit uh, more of an expensive stock. It is uh, trading at 334, up 34% on the day. Let's have a look at the chart, holding above VWAP nicely. Let's see this move off the bell, kind of uh, whipsawed a little bit on the bell, pulled back, and then it did a red to green move. I like these red to green moves. Uh, they always seem to be fruitful if you can catch them at the right time. Uh, top wick here is three dollars and fifty cents. Currently holding above the V. VWAP, a nice double double bottom here on the VWAP and pulling up. So this might be an interesting trade to take if you want to take a dip trade. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna chase this one. I'll definitely look for levels to pull back on. So let me take my thing off here and check drug drug continuing to move sideways, Pratt. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, currently, no positions on at the moment. Just that SHPH trade that we scalped the dollar on. All good, baby. I got enough positions for the both of us. <laughs> Currently, Mosaic is going to the downside. Mosaic coming up on scanners. Actually, in the morning, it showed up to the north side uh, and was actually positive on the day, if I'm not wrong. But now, Mosaic turned around, pushing to the downside, extending its losses, and, and trying to break the, the week's range that it's been in. Multiple week range, actually. The two week range low around $50. Let's see if we can actually get that break of $50 to the downside. I think, uh, uh, you know, even taking the $51 breakout or even this breakout right now, taking this breakout right now and giving it that, that risk of uh, the previous low a day around $51.87. So I think uh, based off of that, uh, I can take some small size over here, not, not like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of shares. Take some small size over here, give it that risk of almost up to $52. If it reclaims 50 cents against me, then fine. I'm wrong on that trade. Clearly, it wants to go back into the previous day's range and play around VWAP. But if, it, if I'm right on the trade, it doesn't pull back 50 cents. It goes down all the way back to $50, 50, 60. That gives me a dollar per share reward for risking 50 cents. That's a two is to one trade right there. Uh, or it goes even worse. It goes all the way down to $50 and then actually breaks $50 because the market's already weak today. So uh, we're just going to let this trade move around a little bit, kind of like what we're doing with LCID, sadly. LCID pulling all the way back to 1690. Like I said, I would give it up to 1690. It's almost there now. Now I'm debating if I want to extend my stops, you know, move my stop a little bit 
through all the way to the 100 period EMA, it's a good chance that this stock pulls back to the 100 period EMA with this market pulling back right now and then find support over there. But if it pulls back way further than the 100 period EMA, then obviously I I'm wrong on that trade. I tried to go long near view up. I tried to go long near the 100 period EMA. I'm going to give it that risk till the low of this candle right here below the 100 period EMA. If I'm wrong off of that, then I'm, there's, there's no more coming back from this trade. There's no more longs to be attempted on this trade. The longs already played out uh, and now it's just uh, forget about longs go short type of trade look at that markets pulling back it's breaking the 50 period EMA on the five minute chart as we speak but thankfully ADBE baby let's go hey. Adobe now $1.20 in the money taking profits on the move down on Adobe even UPS.NY another $1.32 on the profit side for, for that one and DocuSign pushing back to the low of the days for me uh, putting that into 28 cents in the profit Roblox sadly doing nothing uh, and Mosaic, we just now punched into that bad boy. Yeah, guys, we just uh, initiated a long here on AMPX, a New York stock. Uh, we kind of we kind of got a, a crappy entry there at 1636. Now pulling back into that 16 area. I've got my stop set here at uh, you know I, I put it at 1591, but now as I consider, I should probably give it to at least the 200 period or view up, which are both at. 1566 and 1561 or two respectively. There we go. Looks like I might, I might get stopped out here as it goes. Yeah, just as I talk about that, it activated. So I'm out of that one. A bit of an L. Yeah, sad one. I gave I gave uh, back some money there on uh, from the trade from SHPH, but definitely got my eye on this one. It says it's up 60% on the day, and also on my other platform, it's saying it's up 59% on the day, which I don't really get because I'm looking at it and it's kind of down. But I think this was the IPO from yesterday. Was it AMPX the IPO from yesterday that I wasn't able to get? I'm pretty sure that this one was the IPO from yesterday. Anyway, I'm definitely going to have my See, eye Bobby. on this one. Can you just double check? Yes. It was, right? So, yeah, this is the one that IPO'd yesterday. And I couldn't even get this chart on my on my IBKR platform that I use here for the scanner, and I, I called, I actually didn't call. I didn't even but trade I, yesterday? <laughs> I chatted with them, I'm like, how come I can't see this? So like, it's gonna be available tomorrow. Well, it's not gonna be worth it for me to have it tomorrow. Who wants to trade an IPO on day two? The whole point of trading an IPO. A little more to volume on, today, though, than it did yesterday. Did it? Yeah. Well, maybe it was a good thing. No, volume. Then. no, but I, I still should have access to it on uh, day I'm, I'm one. surprised you know myself I mean? that like, it's, it's working out that way. Like, yeah, so kind of, a, kind of a silly thing there. Let's initiate a new long on this one. Here day back. one, it did 500K. Today, it did 3.5 mil. Okay. It's flirting with that 1600. The, the thing about AMPX is the spreads are kind of wide. They, they range between 10 to 20 cents at times. A little tricky. Um, there we go. Now it's making its move up. But the spreads are still, he, now they're, the spread is almost 30 cents. And that happened before. Like uh, I, I would get six, 1613, 1630 prints, but the, the bid would be at like 1610 or 1605. And that's continuing to happen now. So uh, this one's a bit of a tricky one uh, to trade. I'm going to have my eye on it to see what kind of uh, levels it's respecting and how it moves. The volume is definitely there, guys. The volume, it's done 3.3 uh, million shares, uh, which is, you know, it's not great, but it's not bad either. Uh, comparing it to drug and T TCRT, you know, they've done 25 million, 14 and a half million, respectively. I may just need to take this one with smaller share size in case it goes against me and then add to it as it, as it goes, guys. It bottomed oh. out here. At that 9.50 time slot, around $12.25, there it goes. Now it's breaking highs. Ugh, I'm going to have to take smaller size with this one, but I'm, I'm going to end up chasing it, and I, that sucks. Oh, there it goes. Jeez. Boo. Yeah, and I'm going to get in, and it's going to go against me. I just know it. But anyway, we're long there. We're, we're long a baby long. Let's see if uh, we can break that 16.50 level. It looks like there's a bit of resistance at that 16.50 level. And yeah, we'll continue to watch this one, but we're long 16, uh, where, where did we get long? Yeah, we got long 1650 exactly, pulling back a little bit. We're, we're gonna give this one room since we went with smaller size spread. FSLR on a rocket ship, baby. Look at the stock, 2.5% up today. Looks like that inflation act we're trying to deal with inflation right now, right? You saw the CPI numbers come out horrible, uh, and and the the well, the PPI numbers didn't come out that good either. 
The labor number didn't come out that good either. So obviously the Inflation Reduction Act uh, includes a lot of the, the solar stocks and a bunch of other companies in there. So FSLR taking that advantage, once again, putting itself up 2.6% on the day when the market started off being extremely weak, thanks to your homeboy FedEx. <laughs> FedEx pointing the arrow, but not to the right side today. The arrow is pointing straight to the downside. Right? Have you ever seen that FedEx arrow? No, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. FedEx arrow right yeah, there. It's up right there, I like it. And, and uh, boy, are you guys in for a surprise later today? I'll just leave oh, it yeah. at that. Lots and lots of new changes coming in for you guys to do. Uh, look, we're keeping it fresh. We're keeping it fun. Yes, sir. Every time you guys send a super chat, we're thinking about how to reinvest that right into the company to give you guys a, uh, you know, more more traders like Sharif, more haircuts yes, to Pratt, uh, <laughs> you know, more fun things for you guys to enjoy. So it's going to be a good time for the second half uh, when when. Uh, uh, Neil, Brendan, and, and uh, Sean will be back on, so stay tuned for 2 o'clock show. Until then, you guys have the, the Sharif uh, and Prad show, baby. Let's get the ball going. Here's FSLR, man, pushing to 136. I'll be honest, I had an opportunity to build into a long here today at 10 o'clock, and I was like, yeah, no shot. FSLR is going to continue going higher when the market's down on the day. And boy, was I wrong. Absolutely wrong on that side. Going to the north side still is this bad boy. But at least we're right on one side where we need to be at least. We're right on Adobe. So let's take some profits on Adobe. Of course, the spread is too uh, too much. Uh, it's more than five cents. So I got to cross up 10 cents over here to, to take my fill where I want it to be exactly. DocuSign is uh, not really doing a whole lot of uh, anything for me, but uh, let's see if it can break the low a day. I was about to cover some size on Docu. Uh, you know what? I will cover some size on Docu, but let's see if we can get the low a day break this way, and then if it does pop back up to VWAP, we can add on to that position. Lucid is doing exactly what I expected to do, which is not hold that VWAP, hold down to the 50 period EMA, fail 50 period, go up to 200, and then uh, allow me to maybe get some size at 200, give it that risk of that candle's low, this big candle low right here. Uh, let me just zoom in, that candle low is around 1660. So let me, bang, 1660 low, we'll give it to that low if it does pull back to the 100 period EMA, and if it doesn't, we're chilling. We're chilling. We're going to let the stock move back for us. Yeah, this uh, AMPX uh, trade is going against us quite nicely here. We're a dollar out of the money on this one. Thankfully, with small size. Uh, drug, we got into drug right at VWAP. It broke VWAP pretty decisively. Now consolidating sideways. Our entry on drug was $1.64, currently trading at $1.60. So let's wait for this one to bounce back up. I put my, uh, my stop here at this low. So it'll be the break of this support level. So it's $1.55. Um, and then, you know, I gave it to about $1.50 in case we get a really aggressive red candle and it blows through my stop. So looking for that on drug, let's have a look at uh, AMPX bouncing back a little bit off that $15.40. Uh, that's, this is a tricky one. I see a bit of a support area here. We'll see how it acts around this area. If it breaks this area decisively, we'll be completely out. Thankfully, we have small size on this one, so we can afford to take a bit more risk. Jeez, uh, what else we got here? SHPH, yeah, not doing much anymore. Let's flip to SHPH on this screen here. SHPH, it's an NQ stock, yeah. So there we go. We, our entry here on SHPH, there is our exit top wick, uh, but no, look at that pullback. Bounced off the 50 period quite nicely here. Uh, just be careful with the spread. It's currently 30 cents on this one. Uh, moving up into that $21 level, a bit of a uh, resistance area here you can see. So. And that's near the uh, halt level as well. So look for a, a decisive break of $21, I guess, if you want to chase it before initiating a long. Otherwise, look to that 50 period, maybe for a dip trade around 1950. Currently, it'll change as the time period moves on. But that's my look on SHPH. Let's see what uh, the ES is up to. Let's talk about some big caps, actually. ES kind of, yeah, it's below VWAP. Not near low of day, though. Thankfully, low of day is around that 38.53. I believe, and now we're currently trading at 38.71. Bit of a consolidation below VWAP uh, right now. Um, the pre-market high I, I can see here is at 39.84, and then after the bell, we topped out at that 38.91. So the way I see it is we're continuing to make lower lows and lower highs. So if I had to draw a trend line, it's, it's definitely pointing to the downside, but that's not to be, uh, that's kind of to be expected, to be honest with you, uh, with uh, the news that we got. I want to shout out Scott Haynes for the 499 super chat. 
Thanks for that. Appreciate that, Scott. He put a little emoticon in there saying hype. I hope we're hyping you up. Uh, good energy today on, um, on, uh, on the set between Pratt and I. Work Bamingen says, Sharif, correct me if I'm wrong, the AMPX break below the gap up and filled as well. Besides, it's below VWAP. Don't you think it's... Don't you think the long is not a good call? I kind of have to agree with you a little bit on that. It um, was more of like a FOMO trade for me. I saw the volume coming in, and I sort of punched in. But thankfully, I punched in with smaller size, so it's allowing me to average down. Let's go have a look at AMPX. Still holding that still holding that particular level here, but it reclaimed it. That, that bounce off the 50 period looks a little bit daunting, but this one seems like it's moving aggressively. I'm going to leave I'm gonna leave my long here, and this is where I'm going to put my out. I'm going to put my out at 1480. Let's go ahead and put that out now for, yep, okay, so 1480, and we're going to give it room. We're going to give it to 1470 in case it blows by. There we go. So our stop's in. If this goes against us, it'll be a, it'll be a loser, definitely. No question about that. But looks we're looking to re reclaim uh, VWAP in that 200 period. Uh, the volume's dying down a li little bit on this one. The volume definitely has to come up in order to reclaim high of day. But, yeah, I definitely do agree with you. The gap fill there is, is an important uh, technical indicator. Yeah, I didn't spot that one. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, pointing that out. I'll have my eye on that one. But I think that um, we may be able to reclaim a little bit here, and I averaged down. So we'll see how this one goes. Yes, sir. Currently watching Uber. Uber uh, has been apparently hit with a security cyber attack. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> I've been saying this for so long that security is 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 so hard to keep. So. I'm I'm not even bothered by it. Like I know my data has been sold ten times over by Google, by Facebook, by Instagram, uh, and, and, and like by every other company over there. So like I, I'm I'm so over it about about security breaches and data breaches that that I, I'm you know I think I would expect that that people would be over it too. So what if Uber got cybersecurity hacked? What company has not got cybersecurity hacked before? I don't know, to be honest right. with you, but like I think that it's just showing like a, a more aggressive pattern. And I don't want to blame any one country, but we kind of have the idea of who's doing this kind of stuff yeah. right now. And uh, it just shows some vulnerability. So money, money runs scared, right? I, I, I I'm I just, I, I just think like this whole idea of security is so, so like, uh, uh, oh, it's. It's 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 like a fake thing. It doesn't exist. People need to understand that. Like as soon as you're signing up for something on the internet, it can easily be hacked. Uh, uh, you know, and if you don't want anything to be hacked, then just kind of might have to just go Amish mode and just you know not use the internet, <laughs> not use any computers or anything. That's very true. So based off of that, obviously I understand that you know market gets scared or people get scared and they dump it. But for me, that's just buy the dip opportunity, right? So for me, when I see something, a news catalyst like this affecting Uber or, or, or like Google or Amazon, it doesn't mean much to me. It just, it's just a nice little dip for us to buy in on. So based off of that, nice discount on Uber for those who think that this is a good price for Uber. Nice discount on Uber, 4% down off of a security breach that happened recently. They've had a security breach before too, way back in the past. That... Uh, it sold off, and then guess what? We're back up to thirty bucks, anyways, yeah, right? I know. So, yeah. like, I, that's why I'm not I'm not that bearish about a security breach. But I do understand that you know people don't like it when their name, their data, and their phone numbers are sold. That that's how you and get where like they go their location. Th no, that's Google. how it goes to like uh, you know the hackers sell it on the dark webs. Mm -hmm. I've been on the dark web multiple times for for multiple reasons, right? But for for uh, on the dark webs, you can you can literally buy dumps and dumps of. Uh, uh, usernames and phone numbers, yeah. and you can use that to call people. Like, uh, you know how you get these uh, um, fake vo uh, voicemails? Where do you think they're getting that phone numbers dumps. from? Yeah, they're yeah, getting yeah. that from dumps, from Facebook, huh. from Instagram. They're selling the data to these guys, right? Yeah. So uh, it, it's if you're getting those phone calls every day and if you're getting those text messages, your data's already been sold 10 times oh, over. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. don't worry about your data getting robbed by Uber. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the Uber thing too, like, I don't know how uh, this is being looked at. I'm just looking at it from a layman's perspective, but the fact of, like, your travel patterns, where you go, uh, how long you stayed there, you know, because, like, the fact that you go there, then phone another Uber to stay. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a, of a weird uh, a situation there. I get it. Um, I want to shout out the Playmaker 88, who uh, obviously is a fellow Cowboys fan and uh, a buddy of Sean's. He sent $4.20 
420, uh, and he says, Sharif is on <sighs> drugs. No, I'm not on drugs, but I'm currently trading drugs, Playmaker. Um, I'm in at that 160, uh, 163? Yeah, 164 level. Currently trading at 160, so I'm four pennies out of the money on this one. The, the bigger concern for me is AMPX. Uh, well out of the money on that one. Holding, I, I believe it might be, uh, might be a little bit of a, a bounce on that, but thankfully with smaller size. So no biggie, no biggie. Let's see what uh, the chat is up to here. Pa, 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 pa. Companies often neglect IT, don't use the same password on more than one site uh, and use multi-factor. Zach Katzon says, yeah, no, I gotta agree with that, Zach. That's uh, actually a good piece of advice. Uh, I always get uh, messages from um, Apple, Microsoft, constantly emailing me, telling me my passwords have been found on the website. I guess they, they roam the dark Oh yeah, website. Amazon recently said, said that I got somebody from, uh, from Taiwan or something, not Taiwan, sorry, Singapore, trying to, trying to log in. I was like, huh? Reject. <laughs> I instantly hit, yeah. no, not me on yeah, my phone. Logged into my computer, changed my passwords. Yo, what? Get out you of here. You have to do that. But like, yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah, so it, it's constantly happening. I mean, I thought I was a damn genius, like making a really complicated password with like uh, uppercase letters, numbers, special characters. It doesn't matter. They Dude, get the I have password. my password written yeah. in a little piece of paper in my wallet because it's that complicated really? sometimes. It's that complicated. But literally, like you said, no matter yeah. how complicated yeah. it is, they, they just get go it. They get it. it. It could have a zillion special characters. Yeah. All it is is a copy and paste and paste in the box, and you're out of luck on that one. You know, S out of luck. Um, but yeah. It's been a hell of a it's been a hell of a ride with this like cat and mouse game here. I just want to talk about AAOI because it is making newer highs here. Let's pull up AAOI. That is a Nasdaq stock. Here we go. Uh, you know it's three dollars and fifty cents, which is okay. That the volume's starting to light up on this one, and it's breaking high of day. Made a new high. Let's take a baby long on this bad boy here. See where it goes. Let's take half the size. Up. Let's see where it goes. Okay, so we're long there. This is this is going to be my L. Basically, that three dollar forty seven cent area. If it doesn't continue upward, I'm out of this one. I'm looking to scalp. Uh, so I'm going to put my stop first. So three forty seven, and we'll give it to like uh, there we go. Now it's pumping up. So three forty three. Uh, let's take a little bit of size out on. Oh, there we go. Now it's back down to our entry. Our entry was three fifty six. So we're looking, you know into that 360 area. If we can get a 360 print, we'll scalp a little bit out of that one, but eh, it's been a tough day for us so far. I, after sitting down and making that big boy trade on SHPH, we've had a couple of uh, stocks go against us, AMPX and, um, and Drug. We're both, we're out of the money both on those ones, but hey, we'll see if they, if they come back, Brad. Is that Lil Fahad? Oh, That's Lil Fahad. One of the producers has his kids here. He's adorable. Oh my God, she's adorable. Can we show little Fahad on the show? <laughs> Can we show little Fahad on the show? Also, uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm still in the AAO trade. So like a penny out of the money currently right now on this one, looking to see the volumes dropping off. That's why I gave it a super tight stop at that uh, $3.47 level because if it doesn't have continuation, hey, it's little Fahad. Mama's bestie. <laughs> oh, look what happened. Yeah, she made me. Okay, let's go put you back oh, in the light. So 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 <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> You're too big, bro. You're too too muscle for her, man. The babies hate me. I'm, I'm really offended by this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. Let's go back to AAP, uh, AMPX here. Looks like we're going to get out of this one for a loser. Sucks for us. Anyway, we're down on that one. Uh, that one, yeah, went against us pretty hard. We averaged in a couple of times here with smaller size to try to get a better cost basis. But she saw the PNL. <laughs> <laughs> she saw the PNL. The chat's lighting up here. They're blaming me for uh, for making the baby cry. Guys, I didn't do anything. I just turned around. <laughs> so uh, no, I didn't shout out to me. Fahad on that one. Hey, what can I see? La 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 la. Oh my Don't God. Don't put that on me. 
Uh, but yeah, it was we're, a, out of the AMP we're having a Go good ahead, time, bro. guys. Yeah. You know what it is. It's a Friday. Of we're course. gonna have a great time. It is sadly the quad witching though, yeah. so we're gonna might not have too much fun going into the close. I don't know if we're gonna be cracking up beers today going into the close, uh, but we're gonna have fun after the day anyways, because it is. Friday, baby. Apparently, Friday. I'm getting absolutely stomped in on, on LCID. LCID about two pennies away from my stop. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, thankfully, I'm still up big time on the day, though. So even, if, even though if I lose on Lucid right here, it doesn't matter because ADBE has been absolutely bonkers, baby. Look at ADBE, $2.60 in the money. We can take some more size out on this trade. Come on, ADBE. Bang, take some more size on that trade, realize some profit. So basically right now, I have banked the amount of money that I might lose on Lucid and then all the other stocks that I'm in the money already is just bonus money. So my unrealized plus whatever I have banked is, is along with Lucid, it's already, uh, you know, 2x, 3x my shutdown. So I'm not worried about Lucid. I have my stop sent out like I mentioned already. I told you my stop's going to be on the low of this candle, this big, big five-minute candle. It's going to be on the bottom end of that. So 16.59, 16.58. I have my stop sent out. I have three ads over here, one at BWAP, one at 50 period, one at the 100 period. Let's see if the stock can now return back to the north side with the average of 16.89 for me. So basically 17 average. Let's just say 17 average. Let's see if we can get that move back to the north side while Adobe keeps on saving the day for me. Once again, $3 in the money on ADBE. Even DocuSign broke the low a day slightly, so I covered some when it broke the low a day, but then it started going back into the ranges, so didn't like that. Thankfully, we still have some size left to see if ADBE can work for us. And what did I tell you about Mosaic, baby? I told you about Mosaic. <laughs> if it's a, if it's going to go back 50 cents against us right into the previous ranges that it was in and play at VWAP, then this stock popping up on the scanner was completely a, a, a scam move for, for the downside. But thankfully, it did not do that. We're, we're pushing to the downside on Mosaic only 15 10 cents 20 cents in the money on that so not ready to take profits on it but let's see the stock move into the profits for for the rest of the day the same thing with roblox let's see if roblox can break 39 over here and move down roblox has had some amazing moves to the north side for the whole week last week i think i believe i've been seeing it go green 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 i think it's time for it to go right a little bit yeah still trading uh aoi guys a couple of pennies out of the money here on aoi 355 entry, 353 currently on uh, on the ask down to 351, then back to 353. So it's kangarooing a little bit here. Uh, drug is also we're out of the money on this one. Drug our entry is 164, currently trading at 159. So we're we're out of the money on this. Stop on drug recall is a dollar 54. Still watching that. We'll see how that one goes. Went a little bit short here on AMPX with oh, baby going size. Going to oh, give man. it uh, basically this support area right here, the four, $15 area. Breaks $15, I'll be out and it'll be another loser for AMPX for me. But we'll see. We'll, we'll punch and pray as Pride likes to say. Otherwise, what else do we got here? Uh, any new items that are interesting? Let's see what the scanner is up to. I don't see anything new coming up on the scanner here. I see speed. Okay. Well, it's only done 900,000 shares. It doesn't look good. Bina, isn't that yeah. the, the website? CW Data Action Technologies. That's what it's called. Not a website? CNET.com? Yeah, but they don't actually trade under CNET. Oh, okay. So I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that company used to be called ZW. And ZW so it's probably that CNET. then. Oh, maybe. Yeah, actually, let's trades see under what it's CNET. Come Z on, bro. ZW Data Action Technologies, formerly China Net. No, that's definitely oh, not okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. It's a China based uh, holding company that conducts primary business through. No, looks like it's a shell company. Of sorts. Mm. Not sure what this is. What the, what's the chat up to? Let's see what the chat's saying here. FSLR seems to be at a resistance level if looking for something that may become weak in a sell-off. Let's have a look at FSLR. Maybe I know it's on my, um, my solar watch list here. Where is it? There we go. Ba -ba -ba. There we go. Oh, it's positive on the day. It's up uh, 3% and then 4% essentially after... After the bell, nice little move on FSLR. Definitely one of the more expensive solar little? stocks out there. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. A uh, <laughs> decent move from one a dollar thirty up to a dollar thirty-five. Yeah, but a little. What? That's a, that's a monster you move. Like that, eh? Yeah. Tides pumped about FSLR. I think you might get into that. Short it, Prad. Bring it down. Um, yeah, no. Uh, look, it's looking good. Let's see what the daily uh, chart looks on this guy here. 
I know that it's been up lately. There you go. Jeez. You guys remember the, the dark days of June when this was trading at like $62? Look at this move up. And I, I don't know, but this might have something to do with the Inflation Reduction Act. I know the Inflation mm -hmm. Reduction Act definitely wasn't passed in July, but they were talking about it around then. I know it was passed sometime in August, but you know, you, uh, you buy the rumor and you sell the news, so to speak, right? But this was a way higher stock. I remember it was like, hold on, wasn't it higher than this? Let me zoom out. Let's go to the weekly on this bad boy. Uh, where are we at here? No, this is, oh no, it did go up higher. So back in 2008, now we're going really back here, guys. Uh, days of uh, Obama, uh, $3, 30, $316 we topped at uh, on FSLR, but that's a ways back. You got to go back more than 14 years. I, it's definitely, at, I, would, I would like to call this the most recent highs in the past decade. Uh, even the 2012 highs weren't that high. We got to go to back to 2011 to touch a doll, uh, $140. So FSLR making First Solar definitely a, a hell of a play here and it continues to have legs. So good on you if you're holding that long. I haven't touched uh, solar stock long since I held CSIQ, Canadian Solar. Held that on the advice of my buddy. And, uh, you know, made a couple of bucks on that. It was, it's kind of a slow mover. Anybody who knows CSIQ knows that it doesn't move as, as aggressively as Run or JKS or some of the other names. Uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, but it's a solid company from what he says. Again, not financial advice, just my opinion. We're out of the, uh, we're out of the drug trade, guys. We <laughs> I heard that as soon as I said it. We're out of the drug trade. No, we're not Pablo Escobar Jr., but we're out of uh, DRUG at $1.53 here. So we got stopped out on that. So 11 cent loser for me on that one. We're positive in the money on AMPX. There we go. Let's take a little baby out here. Uh, troll as it comes back. Come on, come back down. Maybe I'll do this. There we go. So then we'll go 10 share. One second here, guys, as I try to organize myself. Oh, you're good. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll take it over for yeah, while, while you're trying to manage your trade. Yeah. Um, pe people earlier were saying when I was talking about, you know, I've been on the dark web before that I'm going to have some black Tahoes and black, uh, 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 you know, whatever outsides waiting for me. But I think now that uh, you were talking about being in a drug trade and being out of a <laughs> drug trade, you might actually have some black Tahoes hey. waiting for you outside just to <laughs> nab you up. FBI, open up! <laughs> right? But if there's uh, an algo listening to us. Right? <laughs> but the uh, people are talking about uh, MULN in the chat. People were saying bye bye MULN. Yeah, it's back under a dollar. I mean, I've 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 said this multiple times. I expect a company like MULN to, which has a lot of uh, a meme hype behind it and a pump and dump scam behind it, to do exactly what it's doing right now. Also, bad market environments. You know, FedEx coming out and, and expressing global economy uh, probably going down in, in the near future. So pretty, pretty scary over there. Sadly, MULN is going bye-bye indeed. Big volume candle over there for MULN. Let me go see what the relative volume is today for this bad boy and how much volume it's traded. It's only traded 33 million shares and that puts it, puts it less than one relative volume. So MULN not even pulling in the amount of volume we would like it to pull in today. Uh, sadly, with the market pulling back up over here, that puts Adobe Shorts only at $1.20 per profit at the moment, but that also puts Lucid with only 11 cents out of the money so lucid finally moving back to the north side our stop never got triggered i guess i should have been a little bit smarter uh with my with my uh second long entry which is the oh, right here is my first long that i got stopped out that was a high day breakout didn't work out technically high day breakout pride was 1770 but you got greedy you wanted to take a 10 cent uh, uh entry before that uh but and you paid for it you, you took a loss but then you started scaling in over here when you knew that it might pull back all the way up to the 100 period EMA. We've seen stocks do this again and again multiple times. So technically I should have waited here or when it comes back over here, I should have added way harder. So based on that mentality, I'm gonna add, add again on, on uh, Lucid if it pulls back closer to my stop, that way my, my, my um, risk to reward kind of stays the same, but I have more size for when the pop happens eventually. Yeah, we uh, forgot to mention that we took out a piece here on our AMPX short. We got short at 1429, 
and we took out a piece at 1404, currently trading at 1395. Our next profit taker is at 1366. We need to make up for that L that we had on the long side here. We basically, we went long top wick and then it just basically went against us there. So, bit of a FOMO trade, but making up for making up for it with the short. Uh, here we go back to the downside. So let's see what AMPX is up to. Uh, I think low of day, if I can zoom out here just to give uh, the viewers a, an interesting level. Low of day is at $12.27 level. So, you know, we've got, we've got some ways to move down. Like we're definitely not near low of days currently. We can make, uh, we can stair step, ugh, stair step back down there to, to claim some more profits. Let's look at the market. It's bouncing off a little bit off uh, that VWAP here, um, moving back into that 3871 area. It's a tricky one. I don't really see any discernible patterns on the market here other than to say it's kind of making a bit lower lows and lower highs, but not that aggressively. If I had to draw a channel, you could draw a channel a little bit. You know, it gets breached a couple of times. Let's duplicate this line, create parallel line. There you go. So we have a bit of a downward channel for the last, let's say, start at 1045. So the last hour, we have a bit of a downward channel. Look for uh, breaches of these uh, of these lines here, decisive breaches and closes above them. Don't really worry about the wicks too much that come back down. So look for decisive breaches in order to, to identify pattern change. Uh, let's see where we're at with our AMPX trade. Uh, did we get filled yet? Not yet. We're still looking for that 1366 trade, but we're currently trading in the 1380s. You know what we're going to do? We don't want this one to go against us, so we're going to take out a piece here. There we go. Took out a little bit of a piece there. Um, so now we have a, a little bit more than 50% of the shares left. We're looking for more. We're looking for definitely some more downward action. That break of the 1360 area should be an interesting one, Brad. Yes, sir. Currently just waiting for my positions to move in, the, in either directions for me. Lucid pushing back down, so that's exactly what I needed to do in order to take more size. Adobe pushing back down too, and that's exactly what I needed to do to save me from the potential damage Lucid could put me into. So oh, yeah. I'm, uh, both stocks are doing exactly what I need them to do. Uh, after a while, I'm going to need Lucid to not push down any more further uh, after I take this entry right now. Bang, so taking more size on that bad boy. Now my average size on Lucid, 1.82, but I'm watching Adobe, which is looking like it wants to reject VWAP. Not sure if I want to add on this trade over here. You know, my average price is pretty good right now. Uh, it's closer towards 300 than it is, uh, than VWAP is at the moment. So I don't want to really risk it all the way till, till $5 away from Adobe, whose spread is 50 cents and can easily open up to a dollar if, if liquidity dries out. And I'm bringing up that point because it is about to get into lunchtime very soon. We're at 11.57 Eastern Standard Time, almost uh, three minutes away into the official lunch o'clock where volume naturally leaves the market the people who have already made their money on the longs or on the shorts but getting ready to you know go get some lunch go get some hibachi grill some nice sushi whatever it is that they're interested <laughs> in they're about to go get some nice food and and uh, and come back later maybe around one o'clock maybe around two o'clock so around that period you can expect volume to die off and when volume dies off Stocks like Adobe will have a bigger spread in them. So you want to be careful when you're trying to uh, finesse your way into an entry over here on these stocks. Uh, currently, though, UPS, which was $1.30, $1.40 in the money, looks like it's moving back up north a little bit. So I want to take some more size out on this trade just in case it moves back all the way up north to our average price where uh, then, you know, I don't want to look like an idiot holding my size all the way back there. I'd much rather get, get back in there by taking some profits over here. The stock has not broken VWAP all day for the most part, and, and that's ridiculously strong for a stock uh, in the same sector as FedEx, right? FedEx, UPX, they do the same thing at the end of the day. And, and uh, I, I think FedEx is, a, is bigger than UPS. I believe so. Yeah, Let FedEx me check is... the market cap. So F. FDX market cap for FedEx here on my program is 41 billy. Let's see UPS. Uh, UPS market cap is no 153 billy. So UPS is the bigger billy. <laughs> so maybe that's yeah, why UPS that. is thought, being FedEx stronger on the VWAP areas than than FedEx is, which is under VWAP. So uh, maybe that's that makes sense why UPS is not really doing what I needed to do, which is break VWAP and go under. Um, what's his name here? Mohammed Al Brash says A P P N flying. Let me just pull that up on my side chart here to have a look. 
It is flying. What? That's an interesting one. So let's flip to our other chart here where we had drug and try to get rid of that losing trade. Here we go. APPN up twenty, up eight percent on the day. It's it's been a steady move up. Looks like we started the day off at around that forty six dollar level. You know, give or take fifteen cents or so. And then now we're basically at we're we are hot high of days at fifty one dollars and twenty five cents. This is an interesting one, but what I'd look for personally is a dip like this, like this five minute consolidation, 10 minute consolidation here, or sorry, not consolidation, pullback in order to initiate a long. Uh, you know, it's, it hasn't worked for me for the most part to take high of day breaks. And uh, even though this might not be a small capper, I don't know anything about this stock. Let me put it in my program here, APPN. Let's get an idea of what this is up to and why it's what the catalyst is. Oh, it's a $3 billion market cap on this one. Average volume is about 329,000. Today's volume is only 311,000, but that's halfway through the day, so that's not too bad. Uh, Appian shares are trading higher after the circuit court of Fairfax County entered into, back here, will you be able to follow with me? Entered into a final judgment awarding the company $2 billion in damages from Pega Systems, not don't know anything about this, but that's a catalyst. Two billion dollars is not a joke. Whether they can collect the two billy in its entirety is a is a whole different story. I'm gonna put APPN here on my side chart. I'll be following it the rest of the day. Uh, it is sparsely. It, the volume is pretty sparse. So you know, trade carefully here if you're especially if you're going in with big size. Let's have a look back at our AMPX short been very profitable for us. We got in here at 14, I want to say, yeah, 29. First covered at 14.04, second cover at 13.95, and then we got uh, this, this nice cover here at 13.77, so we're well on the money on this one and taking profits. Our next profit taker on AMPX is 13.66, so we're waiting for that one to come down, currently trading at around 14, but the spread is opening up on this one. It's opening up and closing, opening up and closing. Right now it's two pennies, I've seen it 20 pennies. So careful with AMPX. Let's see what else is going on in small cap world. Not a whole lot, to be honest with you. SHPH pulling back. Everything's kind of, you know, not looking that good right now. LABD is the one that still got my attention here. Look at LABD. This is an Amex stock. There we go. The reason I'm even looking at this, even though it looks like it's barcoding, is because uh, it's holding above you up. Let me zoom out here. There we go. So you guys can see this is the move up, and then we've clearly got a consolidation here. But look at these touches off VWAP. Respecting VWAP very nicely, and that's what I liked about this stock. It's giving me definitive levels with which to work. So I definitely like the break of this double top here. I definitely won't take the break of the double top, but I'll look to maybe enter around VWAP here. In fact, let's put an order in now. We're gonna put it in for 2141. Let's go ahead and put in a long for 2141. That's obviously a dip trade. That's what I'm looking for here. A pull back into this area and then eventual break of double top. Um, I'm only on until 12.30 today, guys, and you're, you guys are blessed to have Ian come on uh, with his hair and uh, you know uh, take you through his trades. He's obviously an awesome trader. So he'll be on if <laughs> Brad wants his dues too. Uh, so if I, if I get filled before that 12:30 time there, slot, oh. I'm joking. <laughs> what? He's not a good trader. No, I'm joking. You can say that to him. I'm, I'm gonna say that. That's to my him. boy, bro. Of yeah, course. Yeah, exactly. You can riff with him as you'd like. <laughs> anyway, so I'm putting that dip trade in on LABD, guys. That 21:40 area. I'm looking for that VWAP hold and then uh, a high of daybreak, hopefully. I want to give a shout out to Mateo for that for that grape, man. That grape was uh, nice and sweet. He's got his headphones in. He's not even listening. I just yanked, a, a, just yoinked a, a grape out of his hand. You know what yoinked is? Yeah, like grab. like just just grab it, just yoink the grape out of his hand, just put him in my mouth. I said, "Ha, mine now." Word on uh, the street is Mateo's got a crystal ball. He does. With respect he does. To the bios. He shines it every night, yeah. baby. He goes home. He shines his crystal ball. <laughs> he and comes in the morning. It. He says exactly what levels these stocks are going to, and they go to it. This man is 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 a who? He's he's something. He's something over there. Waiting the brain cracking up behind there. But I just wanna I wanna talk about um, Godlix. He says, "Hey guys, Roku. I think is gonna be the next Neo. If you study the Roku chart, every time we have a rally, 
and turn previous closing price as hard as resistance it will drop. What do you think about Roku, Brad? You want to have a look at Roku? Uh, I've expressed my my feelings about Roku enough, well, honestly. We talked about it yesterday with uh, Aunt Kathy buying. Well, it up well, not that. Really like from 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 previous past. If you remember watching yeah. me in, in in the beginning days when Roku was like here, <laughs> right? I used to talk enough smack about it. Isn't that but a beautiful double top though on the daily. Yeah, yeah, if you're a short seller. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a long, that's yeah, not yeah. a double top you want to see, <laughs> no, right? definitely not. But no, I mean, I, I honestly don't see the use in the product, man. I, I don't see the use in it. That's because I was born in the internet ages, right? But the, but for the people who do have issues with the, with with technology, obviously there's a big use for it. Now that the stock is at a, at a way better stock price, you know, yeah. at, at a normal price yeah. instead of being $400, I'm not as bearish as I was on Roku. I still think the stock belongs less than 50 bucks, right? But, but yeah. it doesn't matter what I believe. It matters where people are willing to buy the stock at for their long-term portfolio. Maybe they believe the stock will get bought out for. That's what the catalyst was yesterday, I believe, right? Uh, that they're gonna get bought out or they're, they're buyout rumors or something along those words. At the end of the day, Roku uh, is a product that helps a lot of people who are having issues with the uh, with, with technology, and, and I appreciate for someone to solve that issue. I just don't like it when the stock is at $400 for no reason. No, and yeah. I know. Like, do they even have anything? Like, I know it's proprietary, their system, their operating system. Clearly, it's proprietary. But they don't have any, like, do they have any content? Proprietary how? Like, because, you know, it's their own software code. But are they unique? No, because Android's got exactly. their own Exactly. It's not proprietary in any way. Samsung has their yeah. own stuff. Like, so I get it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, do they even have, like, original content? No. No, they don't. Maybe they do. I don't know. Do they? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't have this, so I don't know if they have original content or not, sure. but like Apple Apple has original content, yeah, Netflix has original, I mean. HBO, yeah. Disney. So yeah. Let's see what um, IBKR says about Roku. Roku operates a, a television TV streaming platform in the United States, Mexico, and Canada. The company operates through two segments, platform and player. Its platform segment is engaged in the sale of digital advertising. Okay, there we go. Sale of digital advertising and related services, including the o, the OneView ad platform, content distribution services, okay, distribution, content distribution, not content creation, such as subscription and transaction Isn't revenue Isn't that how Netflix started, oh, so though? they have subscriptions. Interesting. Media and entertainment promotional spending, the sale of premium subscriptions, and the sale of branded channel buttons on remote. What does that even mean? Branded channel buttons? Oh, okay, so I see. So you buy a Roku TV. And the Netflix wants its own button on the remote. They got to pay for that, I'm assuming. Okay, so I mean, I don't see that being a huge source of revenue. But then again, what do I know? Aunt Kathy's a lot smarter. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, it's 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 just such a weird space, yeah. man. We could talk about the space forever and ever. Uh, it's such a such a weird little space. And honestly, now look at look at look at Netflix, right? Netflix is getting an upgrade because of that reason of of an ad tier supporting. Uh, uh, for for multiple tiers, right? The 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 ad tier, the 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 non ad tier, restricting how many accounts you can share on. That's not Netflix. Here you go, Netflix. So Netflix has been strong for all week for for that reason. Oh, yeah. uh, also today, I saw a notification on my phone saying YouTube is apparently trying out uh, uh, five ads instead of instead of their one ad or two ad. So if you're gonna watch YouTube right now, oh you gotta watch five ads in order oh. to watch a YouTube video. Apparently, they're 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 rolling that test out in in certain oh. areas. So obviously, companies are, are are pushing towards more and more ad revenue. Uh, and I understand, man. Look, ad blockers have taken a lot of revenue off of off of companies. Yeah, I understand. But am I gonna stop using it? Probably not. I know my sister's <laughs> got that YouTube. Down yeah, the they don't have cable. Well, they have, but they don't subscribe to cable. They've been using YouTube TV, and when I went and visited her in July, I was using it often to watch. And it's pretty sweet, man. I gotta tell you the truth. It's quick. They got a lot of content on there. You know, they got the main stuff. And the beautiful thing is, like, you go to that home page, and then it's all of a sudden it's loading all the, the important stuff, and it learns about what you like. So anytime you watch like basketball, it'll show you the basketball game is on. Right away, you don't have to search for it. If you like football, it'll show you football is on, so you click that. So that's stuff that's more superior to, to cable, in my opinion. But um, what I would get YouTube for is because I use YouTube so much that I would get the YouTube just to skip the ads. 
the ads frustrate the yeah YouTube that that's that's their that's their goal yeah, right their, their goal, goal is yeah. to motivate more and more people to use the YouTube red YouTube premium whatever it's called yeah and, and I think it's a step in the right direction people will get annoyed and either stop using it and, and they don't care about you the people though. no they they don't care about the people who want to stop using it they don't care I, I, right the whole so idea is they want to push towards there exactly yeah. you're you're forced to yeah. it you want to learn to how to cook a certain recipe. YouTube. Exactly. You want to learn about how to how to hammer a nail in the wall? You YouTube. <laughs> you want to learn how to find a stud finder or yeah, whatever? You YouTube. True. Everything is YouTube, very YouTube, true. YouTube. <laughs> ah, right, right. Don so, dropping hot lines and they're while eating a salad. He so there is, like you said, no escape, and eventually more and more people will be uh, forced into the YouTube premium realm. And, and I'm okay with it, man. More money for my boy Google, more money for my boy Sergey over there, chilling in the back and just collecting that, that the, the, the share dividends and yeah. just relaxing, maxing, you know? Yes, sir. Playmaker, you gotta, you gotta calm it down, bro. My sister's married, been married for 20 years, so <laughs> uh, Playmaker is like lighting up the chat there with some interesting stuff. Yeah, my boy married too, Playmaker. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> or he's got a girl, actually. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, let's get back to stocks here, guys. AMPX, still in that short holding. Looking for this flat bottom breakdown here to uh, materialize at that 1366 level. Currently trading at that $14 level. The spread's opening up about $0.09 cents currently. Still below my entry position, at my entry point at $14.29. I have a stop right at break even. I've taken out, I want to say, a little bit more than half. I've got... 43% left on uh, the table here on this trade. So uh, if it g goes past my break-even point, I'm out on this one. Trying to make up for the L that I took. Look at this top wig. This is as ugly as it gets. Look at that. I enter long here, then boom. You know, this happens with these small cappers. You got you to gotta take the good with the bad. <laughs> Playmakers say, I just wanted the cable password. You're funny, dude. I don't even know how to respond to that. LABD on my side screen here. Looks like it's making new highs. I think we have it over here. There we go. LABD pushing into that 2190 position there. So my, my dip trade here didn't even come close to materializing. I want to take a dip off uh, the VWAP at 2141. Not happening, it looks like. Uh, this one's continuing to stair step up and make new highs. It broke that double top that we identified earlier for you guys at that 2175 level. It broke right through it. But, you know, just as is typical with these small cappers in 2021, so much noise? Th this one is not is not seeing uh, the breakout through. It, you know, breaks out by a few pennies and then pulls right back. And so that's been the story with these small cappers in, in the era of 2021. Bradley. Think we got... not pleased with the noise no, coming not, from the background. But happy. it is Friday, guys. <laughs> we're chilling. Uh, we have a big, uh, we have a big closing trade today. That oh, we we're got another floor on. here. We got another floor here today. So what, what's going oh, on right nice. now is, uh, hey guys, yeah, we got another floor coming in for uh, for a little bit of uh, another floor coming in to kind of oh. get an idea of how our floor runs and nice. so on, I didn't right? Know that. Yeah, yeah, they're just coming to come visit, and, and he brought that's all of his nice. traders with us, and so uh, oh, yeah, cool. this, that's it, baby. See, this is the environment we're in. Yeah. We're, we're we're showing you how how an actual prop office is run, prop floor prop office is run, uh, and we're also showing you how you know we take care of traders not only from our floor, but also other floors that are coming in. Lab D is an ETF, is spamming yeah. Steve G. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, we know that. We, uh, uh, not the sure for daily investment results before fees and expenses of 300% of the inverse performance of the S&P biotech sector. Yeah, I, I knew that. It doesn't really make a difference. The fact is, it's showing up on my scanner. Uh, you know, a lot of the times, like, we, we don't really care what these stocks do. Uh, it's more of a technical analysis rather than a fundamental analysis. But, but thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Lab D, Lab U, and XBI. Those are Tony the Tiger's uh, favorite stocks to talk about. Uh, yeah. uh, currently, I'm watching Netflix, but more importantly, I would like to head over to LCID. I see a lot of people in the chat trolling me, going, ha, 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 Lucid. And a lot of people going, oh, no, Lucid. Oh, no, Lucid. Look. Worry about your own trade, let me worry about my trade, okay? <laughs> I have my stop sent out. I've been telling you where my stop is. If you want my money, go break that level, take my money. If you, if you wanna go long, 
build into the long run the same level or leave me alone. Stop making fun of me, okay? I see you guys in the chat over there. No, I appreciate it though. I appreciate you looking out for me because you see the stocks coming down. But look, that level is being respected. That level is yet to break. I told you my stop is at the bottom of 1558. We've yet to break 1558, thankfully. If it does break it, fine, I'll take my loss for, for whatever size I have and I'll go back to being flat on the day because that's how much money I've already banked. I've banked enough money to risk that, that break on Lucid and if it breaks, I'll go back to being flat, but I also have another X amount of dollars banked and unrealized by other trades such as UPS, which is $2 which is UPS, which is $2 in the money, and Adobe, which is also $2 in the money. DocuSound, not $0.33 cents in the money. Mosaic heading back to the downside. Sadly, Roblox is not going back to the downside. I'm trying to speak louder than everybody else over here, but I don't know if that's working out for you guys. Hopefully, you guys are under, uh, you guys can hear us properly. And, and uh, I'm looking at CVX right now too, homie. CVX and all energy stocks might be going down. So let's head over to CVX currently. Yeah, go for it. CVX on New York. Let's see what this one's doing. If CVX is heading down, that means Oxy is heading down too. So here's CVX. Uh, CVX currently pushing to the downside. Yo, so these guys are uh, traders with Day Trade the World, another office. So hey, what's up, guys? These Main guys are another, right another bunch of traders here uh, from an office. Ryan is the... Uh, office owner over there he's talking with neil but uh give a big wave guys they're going to be opening up in in around etopic oh and shemires is a manager that's a problem here you go <laughs> so there we go let's wave there so there that's the What's picture up, guys? Right there that's on there it is yeah there you guys are all on right big high wish these guys lots of luck yes sir. yeah yes sir wish you guys lots of luck there we go, baby. Yeah, so CVX currently popping up on the scanners. It wants to go down, apparently already down 2% on the day. I also want to go check out Oxy. Oxy, the number one ring leader. And, and not too long ago, this bad boy was at $70. And now Oxy at 60 with Chevron coming and taking down the low of the days. And, and Oxy around VWAP. I'm going to punch into an Oxy short over here. Give it to the risk of $64 to the north side. Let's see if we can get Oxy pushing to the downside, giving us a dollar or at least 70 cent winner to the downside all the way to lower days. $63. Nice. Uh, the chat alerting me to IMT he, IMTE about to break that $2 level. I definitely will not be initiated long into this $2 because I have the gut feeling it is going to pull back and pull back hard. If it dips down to that 188 level, then I may take a trade. Hey, if it breaks too good on you, I mean, uh, it just won't be me. I got burned on AMPX today trying to take the high of day. And, you know, I've mentioned this over and over again, taking these, uh, these high of days into either whole dollar or half dollar levels has proven to be a fool's game in 2022. So here we go. As I say that, it, it looks like all the size at $2 is getting eaten up. Let's see what this one does at two. Uh, big, big size coming in, uh, you know, relatively big size for a $2 stock. At that $2 level, looks like there's an epic battle going on right now on IMT at that $2 level. But that, that's to be expected, quite frankly. Uh, if it, it, it dips down, like I said, to that 188 level, I'm definitely interested in it to take a, um, a dip trade long, hopefully for the two of break. But, you know, this one might break. It may break two right now, and then you'll see rocket back down because you'll either see a lot of profit taking or shorts will, will initiate a new long. Let's go to the day the daily chart on this guy here to figure out what our levels are. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a better idea. Looks like the last time we hit two dollars, definitely this was not two dollars. The last time we hit two bucks was back on July 21st and the level was two dollars and 15 cents. So keep your eye out for that 215 level on IMTE, definitely a, devil, a level on the daily. Above that I see 225 and I see 227. So you know, basically the same thing, that 225 level. And then above that, there we go, we got the break of two. Above that, I see that 237 level and above that, 242. So it uh, looks like we got some resistance around that 225 and that 250 level if we could just average it out. So nice move on IMTE there. Looking here, there we go. AMPX, pay me my money. Pay me my money. There we go. Taking a little bit out there, monster short on AMPX. Bradley <laughs> is clapping for me. Hey, that was a that was a sick short, guys. Yeah. So we got short here at 1429. We just took out a piece at 12, 
66. So that's a monster short. Didn't hold the entire piece, obviously. I took out another piece there at 1366. So a dollar difference. I'm still holding 14% of this trade. Not enough to obviously break me break even for the dumb long that I had here at the top. But that was a big boy short, Bradley. Yay! Yeah. Three for the big boy <laughs> short on, on a random stock that I've never heard before. So let's go. That's what I like to see. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, yes, you, you said this was the yesterday's IPO, right? Yeah, that was Yeah, so yes, congratulations yeah. on that trade, my congratulations. friend. Congratulations. I just went like a vacation. There you go. There right. you go. Uh, take two, another, another game developer company who recently bought out Zanga. Zanga, which is uh, popular for its uh, poker poker game series if you guys have ever played it on Facebook or even on your mobile phone or whatever. So yeah, Take-Two bought, bought them out recently, but right now popping up to the downside scanners is Take-Two. Let's see if it's about to break the low a day. I mean, it already did technically. We're now at a new low a day. We're at 124.24. I like that number. Uh, with the, with almost a 10 cent spread on this bad boy. I, I think, you know, not think, but it looks like with the continuation of the market's direction today to the downside, uh, uh, you can expect Take Two to most likely push the downside for the rest of the week, rest of the month, whatever it is. September is historically known for the market to be the worst month of the market. Yes. So, and with quad witching coming up today, I can't wait to see how the S and P 500 is going to rebalance its positions. Are they going to buy more Apple? Are they going to sell Apple? Are they going to buy some uh, uh, random no-name company that we've never heard of? Because that means now I have to watch that company, keep my eyes on that company. Yes, so there's a lot of things that we're looking forward to see uh, into the last uh, hour, into the day today. How how the quad witching and volatility and options. Uh, uh, hedging all come into play into this market. Keep it. Keep your uh, keep your uh, uh, hands hands uh, ready. Keep your hands warm because this day is just gonna get wilder going into the close. Oh, no question about that, guys. Quad witching, like Prad just said, that's always a big boy day on the market. Uh, I was talking to um, uh, another trader back there in uh, in in the kitchen, and you know we were talking about how the importance of day this day is and like the the mechanics of the day. So definitely, uh, definitely a piece of information you should um, you should get to know. So if you don't know too much about quad witching, hit up a Google search, learn a little bit more about that. It'll expand your horizons as a trader. It's always good to have uh, you know a fundamental understanding of market mechanics. Uh, it'll you know it doesn't not necessarily going to help you with a, a particular trade, but it's always get a, better to have a, a more macro view of the entire market as a whole and know how it, how it operates. Let's move back to IMT here. What did I tell you guys? I told tell you it was going to break $2, uh, two dollars and then just tank back. We, we, there we go. We broke two. We got up to 203, I think. And then we tanked back to that 191. That's why I, I feel like this type of trade, it just, it don't work. It hasn't worked for me anyway. It's been, you know, not that good 2022. Let's zoom out. Let's see what we can see here on IMTE. Uh, I see it decently bouncing off that seven period EMA. Uh, let's see if it does a retest of two, or this is the first step in a step in a in a new stair step down. Let's see what levels we can glean here from the chart on IMTE. Okay, let's just zoom back a little bit. That's too much. Definitely an interesting area of support around that 180 level, and then there are multiple areas of possible support here. Hard to know which ones are going to actually uh, be important. I see another 185, and then another one at 187. But I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say that the more important level here is that 180 level. So. Look for a retrace back into 180 and possibly maybe holding the VWAP here at around 176. So between that level, between the 180 and 176 level currently, because that's what VWAP is currently, it could change, uh, especially if we continue to trend upwards. So currently, you know, a little bit below two bucks, but this one will definitely be on my radar, even though I, I hate these $1 stocks. You got to take so many shares and then you got to scalp out so many different times. Anyway, it's a whole thing. So let's see what the market's doing because the market is on a downtrend. Look at that, Pratt. We're about to test, uh, you know, the lows of the day. I think believe the low of the day on this candle was three thirty-eight fifty-three on the ES. We're at thirty-eight fifty-six, so we're three points away from the low of days, Pratt. So, uh, yeah, you know, good on us for staying out of the longs on the mega cap. It's a no good. It's a no good. Market no good, man. Let's extend this trend line here a little bit. Uh, if you could just stay on my screen for a second. We obviously had a breach of uh, the channel here, but it was a momentary breach and it trended back down. Even though, you know, I, I told you 
Watch for the close. Let's switch to the three minute chart and see what we see on the three minute chart for this, uh, for this pattern. Yeah, we still closed above that. How about the five minute? Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, we got, we got a breach on the three and the five and the one. So it's within the limits of this channel. You could have gotten faked out here if you were looking to go long on the breach of this upper channel. I don't want to readjust it up here because that's just you know, that's cheating. So looks like we may break it on the downside here, but definitely keep an eye out for that 38.53 level. You, we always see bounces around low of day, not always, but oftentimes see a bit of a bounce off that low and then maybe it retests it and breaks. So 38.53, low of day, keep an eye on that price. People talking about Ford in the chat, full size on F if it turns. I'm guessing you're talking about the low of day break. Uh, yeah, maybe, but I, you know, it's not that time of the day for breakout trades for me, honestly, so I'm not gonna be looking for it. Oh, Lucid finally stopping me out over there. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to punch out of the last few shares because I didn't throw out a stop L properly. But that's fine. We're still up on the day. We got our bad boy ADBE about to literally make us all of our money for the rest of the day over here. Now $4 <laughs> in the money, baby. Let's take some more size out on that bad boy. Realize some profits. Even UPS.NY. Uh, our, our LFT right now is about... It doesn't even matter. We're we're back up on the day with the other stocks that we have right here. So UPS, uh, as you guys can see, finally breaking VWAP. Let's go, UPS. Push back to the downside. Oxy helping us out too, continuing to the downside. DocuSign broke the low a day and, and pushing even more to the downside for us. Mosaic getting ready to start breaking to the downside also. So the shorts are paying. Adobe is the number one trade of the day for me. $4 in the money on that position. I want to take some more size out on that one. And, and now, whatever we lost on Lucid, we made hey. it back by covering Adobe twice. There you go. There That's you it. Go. Um, the, the chat lighting up here about Meta being uh, like, I think, 52-week lows. And yeah, you are absolutely right. This, this area over here, guys, this is the March 2020 COVID dip. We always call it that, you know, that March 19, March 17, March 20. 20 area, we, you know, whatever it is, looks like we got down to that one, I want to say 137 or something like that. Yeah, 137.10, I believe, is uh, the most recent low on that. Let's go to the weekly candle on Meta to have a look here. What? So obviously, you know, it goes back a ways. We've had, uh, what's going on here? Let me refresh. Oh, this is, yeah, let me just refresh this for a second. Because obviously Meta was Facebook, right? Why is it doing this we weird stuff? Okay, so it's not uh, it's not showing me the Facebook chart. It's showing me the Meta chart on the weekly for some reason. The daily is including the Facebook, but anyway, whatever. So it looks like that 137 is a really important level. That was the COVID dip. We're not that far away from it. Like we're not that far. Away. Who remembers this? This is this was the earnings when they announced that they had lost uh, daily active users. Uh, they had, I, yeah, they had lost worldwide. It wasn't just like a North American thing. It was, and it dipped down from that 330 level that it was at, it dipped down all the way to 244. And that was just one daily candle. My God, ever since that Facebook, uh, tough stock. I hope not too many people are along this one, Brad, because if you were, especially uh, for long-term holders, I don't think you'd be very happy. Yeah, I mean, uh, the metaverse thing is still far, far, far ways out, man. For me, like I've been saying, the only way I'll be really submerged into the metaverse whole concept is when, uh, like, let's say, like, I have the metaverse helmet on or whatever, and I'm walking through a park and a dog farts. I need to be able to smell <laughs> that dog's fart. Otherwise, it's not realistic for Couldn't me. Couldn't you just say it's anything simply, else, it's like, not. there was an ice cream shop and, nah. or, like, a popcorn shop, and I smelt the popcorn? Nah. Why did it have to be a dog's fart, man? Come it on, has to be what it has to be. It has to be what it has to be, okay? <laughs> So I need to be able to smell yeah. it. If I if I didn't, then it's not real for me. <laughs> it's not real for me, man. I just don't I just don't funny. see it happening, right? So we're still a long, long, long way out for this uh, for this metaverse idea to play out. And when it does, uh, when when we get to that point where even even touch, smell, feeling, everything gets realistic, yeah, yeah. then I think uh, we can actually talk about metaverse. So obviously, Facebook getting or, or sorry, Meta. Meta platforms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, meta platforms 
getting smacked down because of that idea. Even Roblox is getting smacked down because of that idea. Yeah. But baby, look at what else is getting smacked down. It's your markets right now. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, both of them pushing back to the downside. Adobe now $5 in the money and everything else is paying us too. DocuSign $1 in the money, so let's go. The shorts are paying. I would love to be entering more shorts right now, but I don't really see uh, any trades that I, I could look for an opportunity to get into a new trade. You know, it's that time of the day where either you're in a trade or you're not. So I, I think I just have to manage my positions over here. Let's see what stock you guys are talking about in the chat. In the meantime, while you guys throw out some tickers, I'm going to head over to cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin sadly under 20K again. Ethereum down 3% today. Most of uh, all cryptocurrency baskets are bleeding except for Dogecoin apparently. Dogecoin up about half a percent. So let's go see how, how these currencies work out for, for the rest of these uh, um, rest of this week and next week because we got FOMC next week too. Yeah. So cryptocurrency struggling. Oh yeah. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, I'm gonna take off now, but in my my place, Ian is coming on. He's gonna kill it with his trades. Awesome trader. And I will see you guys bright and early <coughs> Monday. Hey. I'm El Pratty Daddy. Yes, sir. Good seeing you. Always and, a great time uh, wish having you. Luck you. on the, the rest of your day. So I'm El Guys. Take care. Listen to Crab Prad for his crypto trade. Crab Prad? Wow. Oh. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have uh, your boy Ian up here. Prad likes to smell a dog farts. No, Prad is trying to get show banned. No, no, it's not it. Listen, I'm just trying to give it to you in a way where, uh, you know, if I said, I want, if I lick ice cream, I want to taste an ice cream, that's not that hard. But smell, smell through virtual reality is pretty hard, man. Uh, but, but you know, taste, taste is not that hard. You can get a popsicle from your fridge and, and watch a, a video of, of, uh, of a popsicle being eaten and, and feel the same thing, right? You know, I think I'm, I'm putting some real brain power over here in, in my comments. Maybe not, though, but we'll see. Markets are clearly trying to break the lower days over here. Let's see if it, the market can successfully break the lower day and elevating our shorts even more to the downside would be a glad, uh, would be a great day for, for me after yesterday specifically you know you saw me getting upset yesterday but today we got adobe on the board making make, making me most of my money and also ups ups finally changing its uh, its trend and heading back to the downside slightly under vwap but let's see if we get back above vwap i think we can get back above vwap if the market doesn't bre break the lower day if the market continues to go to the downside and break the lower day then i think uh, i don't see a chance for ups to hold up over here you might also want to keep an eye on fdx fdx currently above vwap and going towards uh, 50 period ema so a little bit of a contradictory statement on on uh, ups and, and fdx uh, while, while Ian is micing up over here, we're still going to keep the keep the mic on me for a little bit over here. Will NASDAQ 100 bounce off the low now? Question mark. I mean, yeah, it looks like it wants to, right? The NASDAQ looks like it wants to. Uh, NQ slash Z22CM. Yeah, it looks like it wants to bounce off the lows over here. Let me pull it up. Bang. Sorry? Oh, no, you're good, bro. Take your time. Take your time. More me time. The show loves me. You know that. So more me time uh, and less perfect hair time for, for you. Uh, but, yeah, we got we got nice moves coming up here back to VWAP. I think we're going to see a lot of this move for the rest of the day until power hour, sour hour kicks in. I'm also under the idea that the market is preparing itself for that 1% drop. From the from the Fed for the FOMC that's coming up next week Wednesday, you know, sell the sell the uh, rumor, buy the news type of action coming in. Maybe uh, pricing in the 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 move basically is what I'm trying to say. The market might be trying to price in the move by bringing us closer to 3,600. That way, if the market drops a 0.75 raise, oh, sorry, the Fed drops a 0.75 rate hike, the market will use that as a positive catalyst and get back towards 4K slowly. If they drop a one for one uh, 100 basis point two i think the market would like that somewhat and and uh, you know just hang out near 3600 maybe go to 3000 but if market comes up with anything bigger than that then obviously we're going all the way back to stone ages what's up guys how's it going uh yeah just still kind of loading up my computer here so just give me a couple seconds and i'll show you some of the trades that i've been doing today uh, it's an interesting day and like uh, we're talking about it a lot with the boys it's like it's rebalanced day like quad witching obviously and uh you know, it's a day where you want to save some risk for the close because who knows what can happen, right? But at the same time, 
Uh, you know, I'm sure, like Prad's been saying, and you saw on the morning show today, there's been some banger setups today, man. There's been some banger trades for sure today, uh, and some decent opportunities. So it's like today's a day where you really got to uh, manage your risk appropriately, take your shots when they are there, but make sure you're taking like A plus trades for sure if you are looking forward to something specific, right, on the close or something like that. Um, so that's something like I'll show you in a second. Uh, I've, been, I've been trading today, like I traded uh, mainly just Apple. Um, that was probably my biggest name. I took the 150 breakdown on Apple. Um, I traded Amazon a little bit in sympathy with, um, with the FedEx move, right? The FedEx move was huge. Like uh, we were talking about it earlier when, uh, when Pride and I were, were walking there. Um, but uh, man, this, that, that FedEx move, like uh, it, it's pretty devastating for the whole market, I think, right? Like um, if, uh, if they're saying that, um, you know, they're cutting their guidance and they're, and they're cutting their, uh, their uh, projected like whatever, like for, the, for moving forward, like that's gonna affect a lot of different companies around the world. Uh, so it's, it's, not, it's not something uh, to be surprising that, you know, the market is down like it is. Uh, and then, you know, some, some things that use FedEx a lot uh, are down as well, like, like the likes of Amazon, right? So we'll get into that a little bit uh, as I load up here. Yeah, still watching DocuSign. I'm actually out of DocuSign completely, but I'm loving Oxy, which gave me a 40 cent move to the downside. Now popping back up slowly with the market too, so be careful uh, as the market does not break the low a day. Looks like the stocks might be retracing a little bit back too if you're short. If you're long, you're loving it as the market is bouncing from the low. So obviously, depends on what side of the trade you are. Adobe also taking more profits on Adobe as, as I was four bucks in the money. I'm still four bucks of the money on that trade but sadly lucid man lucid was our worst trade of the day whatever we gave back on lucid though we already made it back and some so we're not worried about that trade anymore uh, but it, it does suck that uh, um, that you know it, it did pull back worse than our, our idea overall on lcid not too long ago I saw NIO popping up on the scanners. Look at this position today, heading straight towards that $20 area, currently at $20.40. And VZ is popping up on the scanners to the north side. This will be Verizon. Let's go check out what Verizon is doing today. Look at that, trying to take out the high day up about half a percent. Not, not really a whole lot of... Uh, 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 percentage to 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 uh, you know to the north side, but still the markets are down about one and a half percent each or more. Verizon over here not doing what the market's doing. Yesterday it came down with the market, but today opposite direction for VZ. And if I can actually scroll up a little bit in our work chat, where Brandon uh, uh, recommends exactly not recommend, sorry, he tells us what what the news catalyst was for Verizon because middle of the day. Verizon just dropped like a rock. Let me see if I can find it. 350, 350. Um, this is in the morning. I, I'm going to have to look for a little bit, so maybe you can take yeah, over. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Yeah, I got my, my screen up here now. So uh, let's start with the Apple trade. I'm currently in this Apple trade, and our blotter will, uh, will update as soon as I take a, take a fill here. I'm waiting, you know, I'm bidding here, like, right in front of, like, 148.50. Uh, but essentially, guys, like you guys know, uh, I like to take breakouts, you know, you like to take breakouts with size. Uh, breakouts are very, um, you know, it's a high risk, um, high reward trade, right, like a good R to R trade. Uh, so I took the 150 break down here, uh, you know, and essentially just risking uh, the price coming back through 150, right? If it takes like 150, 01, 02, uh, gonna get out of this trade. So technically risk, just risking one cent plus slippage depending on where you get filled. Uh, and then, you know, kind of getting, Getting the fills on the flush, and this this flush was actually really really clean. Uh, so you know that was that was a pretty uh, sick trade there. I think my best outs were like 149.50, so solid 50 cent winner. Stop out the rest, uh, and then this was simply just a tape read. You know, like obviously Apple eventually start to uh, continue to flush down, uh, get short there, and then you know uh, covering in front of 149 and on the flush move here, stopping out to a little piece here, right? So it's always important to kind of uh, keep holding a piece like I'm doing right now. Um, and then, you know, I tried it one more time in front of the 150. Uh, this one was a little aggressive, kind of getting short in front of 150. Eventually stopped up, obviously, on the rip up through. Uh, I took the break back down, and then now that's the position I'm holding, right? So right now, I'm only holding about a tenth of that position left. Um, so I'm going to slowly bid out of that if we, you know, continue to make uh, new lows here on the day for Apple. But I'm figuring, like, okay, I'm going to risk the 150.01, essentially. I don't really think that, you know, if Apple is going to continue to be weak, if the market is going to continue to be weak, 
Uh, is Apple really going to reclaim BWAP and reclaim 150? Uh, I'm going to say no, and that's why I'm, you know, that's what I'm hedging against in this short position. So right now, that's working really, really well for me. Um, I also traded Amazon. I told you guys that uh, as the chart loads here. I was actually in Amazon in the pre-market. Uh, I was like watching this, like you know, consolidation uh, of Amazon. I knew I wanted to get short Amazon, uh, just you know, off of the the sympathy play with FedEx. Uh, so I took the 152.50 break. That was the pre-market low. That worked out very nicely, kind of just covering in front of 122. Uh, this was a very bad fill. I, I took the 122 break in pre-market. Uh, and then, you know, if you recall, Sean, like said in the morning, uh, a lot of the imbalances came out at open, uh, big buys. Uh, but that was kind of like Fugazi, right, because that move kind of got sold off. So, so, I, so I added the short there, and, you know, uh, that worked out really well. Uh, and then, you know, I tried it one more time, stopped out. So Amazon, another winning name for me. Uh, as well, but uh, yeah, right now just nursing that Apple short. Yeah, so the catalyst for VZ was actually on Wednesday, and it was that the conference updating wireless sub numbers to the downside. So total subscription number for VZ on Wednesday was to the downside, and Thursday continued to the move to the downside. Today, an opposite direction move as the market is trying to not break the lower days and go back to the upside. DPZ popping up on the scanners, Domino's Pizza. And I was just about to say, yo, Ian, I think we might have to go along some pizza stocks because if you look outside in our garbage bin, there's yeah, just yeah. boxes and boxes of pizza. Someone had a big party. It's either like, yeah. It's either, it's either like, someone had a big party or this guy lives off of pizzas and there's boxes of Pizza Nova. And he's Nova, just like clearing out pizza his house Hut. kind of thing. Dude, Pizza Nova, Pizza Hut, Domino's. And 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 uh, pizza uh, pop no not popular pizza there was like another no it was like next uh, one yeah I don't know the, the next one the point is, is that the dumpster was literally filled to the brim are you are you ordering pizza boxes? all different companies for for one event or are those all old boxes well may, maybe <laughs> see that's the thing right like why would you order from separate pizza places for like a big pizza party a big one, event right? big party whatever yeah yeah why not just order one so that's a little suspicious you know maybe. You know, I'm we, CSIing this, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we get to the bottom this. of this. Probably not, yeah. though. But uh, cold yeah, we'll cases. See. We'll see. Someone said here Tesla is holding is great holding the tops. Um, so I quickly brought up Tesla, and and you know Tesla is a great trade if it's like in play. Um, today, you know, I, I wasn't really looking at Tesla too much. This, you know, this 300 level is obviously a big psychological level. Uh, nice round number, right? Uh, and you could have had some decent scalp short off of there at the 300. At the same time, though, this level has been, like, reused, abused. Like, it's, it's been dealt with, like, many, many times for the past, like, two weeks. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we were talking about in our, uh, in our trading meetings as well. Just because, you know, uh, if you're going to take a, or play off of a level, uh, you want it to be new. You want it to be, like, a, uh, a relatively fresh level because then there's going to be a lot of more interest in it. Uh, so, you know, there is obviously interest in the 300 level, but I guarantee there's probably not going to be as much size there as opposed to something like uh, the Meta 150 trade from the other day, right? Because that was hitting a new 52-week low. Uh, so, you know, this is a good, uh, good scalp opportunity here for sure. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't really in my, uh, in my playbook or, or my setups today that I liked. Uh, someone said check out Netflix, uh, please. So let's quickly bring that up. Um, maybe if, too, we can get the blotter updated, too, so it's my uh, name up there so we can start showing my positions. Uh, that would be, I don't know, you want to message them or something, but um, Netflix, yeah, Netflix getting a little bit of a volume bump now, just broke out 236 uh, to the upside, making a new high of the day, uh, so I'm not too sure what's going on with Netflix right now, but, you know, breaking out this consolidation, uh, you know, this is like kind of like a ascending wedge, if you will, you know, the top was right here, 233, 233 233.50, and now breaking out to the top side, so you know, Netflix getting a good bump here. Uh, obviously, wasn't on our radar. Otherwise, we would have been long here. But, uh, yeah, good find on Netflix if you got that one. Yeah, before I got cut off again, uh, DPZ about the oh, whole sorry. pizza stuff. I was talking about <laughs> DPZ because DPZ popping up on the scanners because it was trying to take out the lower day. A little light on the volume, if you ask me. But the relative volume says completely different. Relative volume says we're up 1.66. Total volume on the stock today, 347,000 shares traded. DPC down about 2.7% on the day. And, and uh, still trying to continue to the downside with the rest of the market. But thankfully, the market did not break the bottom. So it looks like we might just be able to not break the bottom over here. To look at that big volume candle on DPZ coming in, maybe we actually are, are finding a bottom across the board for many positions as, as positions are now 
switching over to the long scanners for my board. Even IBM popping up at the moment. IBM has been green on the day for the most part, but very flat, only up by 0.22%. Here's IBM holding VWAP off the opening move. Pre-market did nothing. Opening move held VWAP and then straight to the north side ever since. You would have expected to reject the 100 period EMA on the five minute chart because the market's weak today. But, because, but the fact that we're well above the 100 period EMA now and, and might just be using the 100 period EMA as a support for the next move down if it does have one. IBM having a pretty clean move to the north side today along with a bunch of other stocks too such as Walmart. We know Walmart and Costco are, are pretty much a, a type of a hedge for inflation. So here's Walmart up 0.19%. Uh, you can call it flat but at least it's not bleeding like it was yesterday along with the rest of the market. Um, I want to uh, bring up one thing here because Bears versus Bulls was helping out one of our chat members here with just some information about uh, the Fed meeting next week. So the Fed meeting is on the 21st. Uh, so that's going to be like the highlight of next week for sure, obviously. Uh, so it's going to be something on our minds and something we're definitely going to trade. This is very important, guys. You know, you could just Google CME uh, Fed rate tool, uh, and then you could bring this up here. And basically, this shows you the percentage chance I guess that everyone is estimating uh, what the next rate hike will be. So this says the current rate here is 225, 250. Uh, right now, this has actually gone up. So last time I checked this was yesterday, uh, and it was only about a 70, it was 75% chance that they were gonna do a 75 basis point raise and a 25% chance that it was gonna be a, a 100 basis point raise. Uh, so that's actually gone down. So I guess that's good news for the market, although it's not really reflecting uh, today. But guys, that's a good tool to have uh, you know, leading up to that week are relating up into that meeting uh, next Wednesday at 2 p.m., guys. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, the market overall just kind of getting a bump here off of these lows, so didn't really kind of flush and make a new low. I did get some out of the Apple trade there. Uh, you know, I wanted to see, like, okay, I'm, I'm bidding in front of, like, uh, the low here, right? So the low on, on Apple is, uh, is 148.36, right? So I'm bidding, like, in front of 50. I figured that's a decent bounce spot. It was kind of coming down below 149. Uh, and it's been down here like multiple times now. If it kind of like kind of jumps up above 149 again, I, I want to make sure like I took out some of my position. Like as as the day goes on, you know, I, I don't want to be exposed to like uh, market risk or time risk as the market kind of progresses throughout the day, right? So you know, kind of just managing that position, whittling it down to uh, you know a, a decent share size that I honestly wouldn't really care too much about if it stops back out at that 150, right? So. Uh, that, that's gonna that's gonna keep going there. Uh, I also want to show AMD. Um, I was actually talking to Luca about this trade, and he actually had this trade uh, earlier today. But the 75 level on AMD uh, is pretty huge, just because it's like the the last like kind of bounce spot, the last kind of uh, recent low back here at the beginning of summer in July, right? So you know, kind of playing off that uh, today, there was really like uh, some decent bidders and some decent size at 75. Uh, you'll see here, like I got quickly in and out uh, on the trade, but uh, basically the reason why I covered is because I was really uh, in deep with the short on Apple. So I was like, okay, that's really working well. Uh, let me just punch out of this uh, AMD trade because I'm kind of like hedging it a little bit too much and I don't really like that too much. Uh, so yeah, I got out of that trade, but that was the right trade, the 75 bounce. And you see the trade is still working right now, right? So it's worked uh, three times now off of the 75. I think the 75 level is pretty solid unless we get some breakdowns of like the, some um, you know, support here on the market. Uh, but we'll see now, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily jump into a big position, but maybe a, t a feeler position. If it comes back down to the 75, we'll try, to, we'll try that little bounce once again. Yeah, I'm still just managing my positions. Adobe popping back to the north side right now, almost back to VWAP, and it's been our best trade of the day. Not sure if I wanna add back a VWAP, because I think it could easily pop back above to, to 297, 296 or so, where the 50 period EMA is. So gonna leave this trade alone for a bit. Gonna, gonna just manage my positions, guys. Look, it's, uh, what's the time right now? It's one o'clock soon, where volume is, uh, might come back into the market. I, I, I'm not going to FOMO myself into some new positions that are absolutely doing nothing for me. So it's better to just sit back, relax, let the market do its nonsensical side-side move, and then when the volume comes back, we can look for positions to jump into. People in the chat, though, have been nonstop trying for us to pull up AAOI. Uh, not sure what this position is, but, oh, it was just on the scanners. There we go. Uh, applied op, Optelectronics. Op, anyways, uh, AAOI currently up almost... 
40 percent with uh, with 410 relative volume so lots and lots of volume coming into this position today uh not sure if this is a uh, uh if this is a earnings play or not nope not an earnings play so some sign of uh some sort of a random catalyst that i would have to find out right now and brandon brandon is at the desk so maybe brandon can tell us what aoi is is doing and what what the reason is for the stock to be doing what it's doing but congratulations to anyone who was going along on this position 100 period ema bounce off the open looks like was the was the best area to go long slightly under three dollars or you could have taken the breakout of three dollars or 310 and never really looked back had 50 pennies in the money on a three dollar position uh, and now it's back on the scanners again to be the number one winner. It looks like it's already won four races today, and it's the number one uh, winner on the on the on the biggest gainer from Open Scanner, and the biggest gainer from Open Scanner for Mega Caps is FSLR, which we've already pulled up multiple times today. This is going to be your solar stock with the with the relief rally coming in from the. In, uh, what was that thing again? Inflation Reduction Act. There we go. Um, I wanted to talk about one thing here. It was just um, a couple questions here about Amazon. Uh, would you short around the 130 area? So I quickly brought up the daily on Amazon, and I'm, I'm assuming this is obviously swing trade because Amazon's nowhere close to 130 today. Uh, but man, this is like post split essentially. Uh, so they they split uh, in the in the summer at the beginning of summer, right? And and Amazon has actually been had uh, has been very very strong since the split as opposed to the likes of Google right like so if you recall Amazon was the first like kind of big company this year to split and then we had like obviously Shopify after that Google and then Tesla right but Amazon has been kind of the strongest one of the bunch um, and you know I, I remember you know Pratt and I talking about this 102 level 104 level and how strong that support level was to the downside uh, and I just quickly kind of brought up the daily here and drew this trend line here. Uh, it's kind of like a correction, right? So, I, you know, I don't mind, you know, shorting if it pops here. But the thing is, is like, if, you know, any sort of strength comes into the market, if, you know, for whatever reason, uh, the market kind of turns around and, and people start buying it up again, I'm expecting Amazon to kind of lead that charge or be one of the stronger names uh, in the market overall just because it's been one of the strongest names uh, during this like kind of bear market period this year, right? So kind of just keep that in mind. Um, you know, obviously always trade good r and R. If, if you do get that, that short, like up 130, I honestly like it closer to like 135 area, just because, you know, you're kind of risking off of these peaks. So just kind of be a little bit more patient for that. And then, you know, your, 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 your upside or your downside um, uh, gain, you know, is a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of like my take on a potential swing trade on Amazon, I guess. Um, Uber Vertical. Let's take a quick look at Uber. Um, they were in um, our watch list this morning, guys, um, just because they had like kind of like a security breach or potential of a security breach um, today. So they, they gapped down uh, in the pre-market. I think it was as bad as like 6%, but now you see it's only down 4.5%. Uh, so, you know, getting... Basically having an inside day from where it opened, you know, not too, too much going on. I guess you could have got some scalps off of like this pre-market consolidation to the downside here. Uh, obviously being short bias on it off of a negative catalyst. Uh, but yeah, Uber, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it was kind of like on my watch list. But, uh, you know, after, you know, I saw Apple uh, hitting those levels and, you know, Amazon, I thought the FedEx trade was going to be a lot bigger. So I kind of focus on those instead. Uh, but guys, if you aren't subscribed to our watch list, uh, I suggest that you guys do that. It's a great tool. Um, you know, now you actually get it straight to your email. So actually, it's it's quite convenient for me because I'll just get it on my email and you know I'll check it on the train like right in and you know see if it matches up with what I'm kind of interested in for the day and, and kind of do my back or kind of do some research that way. But that's something, uh, guys, you guys should definitely uh, you know check that out uh, and and use it as a tool. If not, you know, just use it as reference, right? Just use it as reference to uh, kind of add to your research. Yeah, I'm just doing some research of my own for uh, for possible things to do later on in the day over here. But uh, yeah, let's come back to the show while we're on the show over here. People talking about Apple need to skip an iOS update because I'm waiting on the iPhone 16. Oh, well, that's, that sounds like something that uh, you have to figure out on your own. So yeah, good luck with that one. I like the CCL Shore. Let's go check out what uh, Caribbean Cruise Lines is doing today. Uh, 
Uh, rejecting the 100, per, 100 VWAP, or sorry, 100 period EMA on the on the five minute chart. So yeah, I do like the short. You can give it the risk of a high day around around 1080, which is only five pennies. So yeah, I do actually like that short. Let's uh, let's get into it. Let's see if we could uh, ride this position to the downside or, huh? What happened? You see that? What happened? My 100 period EMA was just over here and just just shifted to the downside. That was pretty strange. Obviously, it calculates based on what we have on view over here, but uh, we're still going to use the same strategy, same idea, which is uh, we're not going to let the stock go higher than 1082, 1083. AAOI news from, uh, from our boy Brendo coming in that uh, shares are up 20.8% after deal to sell Chinese manufacturing facilities and assets. So CC, sorry, AAOI based off of that catalyst has been launching itself to the north side. Netflix, uh, uh, you know, go, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> uh, AMD and other catalysts today for the chip makers was that uh, China is going to start thinking about imposing uh, sanctions, or was it for AMD? I, I forget what stock it was for now, honestly. I, I think it was for, did, did you read that in our watch list I today? I did not, know. You didn't read that on our watch list today? I believe it was for, uh, let me just quickly find out what stock it was for. I believe it was for the chip sector, if I remember correctly, but let me find out the quote. Oh, it's for Boeing. Thank you. Thank you guys in the chat uh, uh, for saying that. Yeah, for Boeing, uh, maybe it was not Boeing. You guys uh, are getting me confused now. I'm going to need to go back to the watch list and find it. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about Netflix because it's pushing new highs now. Uh, it's kind of running into trouble here around the 239.50 area. I am going to try a cheeky short. Let's see if I get filled there on the offer. There you go. Uh, so quickly got filled there. Again, just kind of risking off of this 240, but the action I kind of want to see here. Uh, so 240, obviously, big psychological level. As it goes in the money for me there uh, quickly, uh, about 20 cents, right? So 240. Uh, you know, decent psychological level here. I want to see if that's where this kind of turns around or get a decent uh, little pullback off of here. And then, you know, maybe then it comes up and retest 240. But essentially, guys, just risking off of that 240. If it gets up there, I want to see if there's actually buying above there. If not, okay, now it's kind of flushing a little bit now. So let me make sure I have some bids out to uh, take some of these profits if I am going to be like 30, 40 cents in the money. Uh, with this one, right? So if this gives a more of a flush move down to this 238 area, then I'm going to be loving this trade uh, a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, basically, essentially waiting for actual buyers to step up at these highs, right? If this move is going to continue. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of buying vol volume and momentum coming up here. And it's kind of just been taking out these levels, but I'm betting on 240 to be the one that actually holds. Yeah, I'm still, yeah, it was Boeing, by the way, that, uh, so you guys were right in the chat, Boeing getting sanctioned by, by Taiwan, so I'll read out the exact thing from our watch list today, uh, uh, for, for providing support to Taiwan in arms, and even Raytheon catching some sanctions, so Boeing today, nose diving about 4%, and, and, and uh, I was saying this yesterday too, though. Like you know, a company like Boeing, it's it's kind of it's kind of a too big to fail. So even though those sanctions are coming, you'll see the price drop down a little bit. The company might be too big to fail, but the prices are never too big to come down. You know, they can always see uh, selling pressure from fear, from uh, from whatever it is, always coming into the market. But when those fear does come into play, you know, you got to start being greedy, start nabbing up some shares at cheap prices. For example, uh, the stock that I was talking about earlier, such as Uber, those those uh, fears of security, cybersecurity breaches and so on. Uh, I only view them as as a as buy the dip opportunities for for stocks such as that. But I think Uber is still a little little pricey for the for the current market environment. So I wouldn't be buying the dip for that just yet. But the idea still stands true over there. Uh, the same thing could be applied to you know big companies such as Boeing. Anytime Boeing has a, a small negative catalyst like such as the one that it has today, think about maybe buying some shares for the long term for a swing trade, whatever it is that you're thinking about. Obviously, non-financial advice. You want to be applying your own risk management and trading your own book at the end of the day without fail. Guys, getting some profits here out on Netflix. So this trade, you know, quickly worked. Uh, again, guys, so, you know, I wanted to make sure that I had a bid out in case it flushed quickly below 239. So, I, you know, I got out a couple pieces of my position now. So still holding about half of the position. Again, guys, risking up to this 240. I'm willing to add to it if, you know, the 240 kind of tests or maybe it breaks and then flushes off of there. I'm willing to do that uh, and then, you know, build a position closer to this 240. I thought I'd get a little bit cheeky with, uh, you know, a quick 
uh, a quick fill short in front of the 239.50 area. So that seemed to work now. So, you know, again, guys, there's still sellers up here. I'm thinking that 240 is the level that kind of holds on Netflix. So going to be, uh, you know, going to be watching that one very, very carefully. Uh, my Apple trade is still kind of just doing its own thing. Uh, here's the thing, guys. Like, I'm not really uh, caring too, too much about this position now because, uh, man, Apple is my best day or best name on the day uh, by far. Uh, and, you know, we're a ways away from that 150 area. I'm essentially just risking off of that. I have less than 10% of my position left. Uh, so, you know, just kind of lazily bidding now and going to kind of let us do its thing. If the market just continues to fade out the rest of the day, then Apple is going to be that one that, you know, helps me participate in that move, right, without having, for me to, like, try to, like, slam shorts or slam bottoms or anything like that. Uh, 240 going to break so hard on Netflix. Yeah, potentially, right? So that's why I really want to, if it does get up there, I want to watch the tape. I want to watch the price action around that 240 area and see, you know, if I'm going to be on the wrong side of the trade or not. Just trying to do a couple things here. Let me bang. Okay, now coming back to you guys. Let's see what stocks you guys are trading in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. We got about uh, another hour over here. In a minute or so, the lunchtime is officially going to come to an end. So obviously that means volume might be coming back into the market. Currently market uh, is moving back towards VWAP. So that bottom, that double bottom on the market actually holding and it did not break. So clearly anyone who built in longs over there is happy. And anyone who's still holding shorts is not as happy as they would have liked to be because the market didn't continue in their direction. Roblox apparently almost a dollar out of the money, but it's moving back into a range that where I actually would be happy with loading back more size. So Roblox over here. But surprisingly enough, I think Roblox might have a, a move today coming into the close because it might have some, some possible uh, uh, options chaining. I'm seeing a lot about that conversation pop up on Twitter over here uh, of people, you know, trying to buy up Roblox in the, in the attempt of Activision and EA rumors coming into play. Activision for Microsoft, EA for uh, Amazon. I believe even that was a rumor, though. It never really panned out to be anything other than a rumor. Uh, apparently, Adobe is pushing back towards my average prices, too. So we're going to add to that size over here. We're going to... We're going to add to our trade over here on Adobe, push it back to the downside. Hopefully our number one trade on the day has been this position, has been constantly paying us uh, 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 money today and, and made up for the lucid loss that we had earlier too. So I want to I wanna continue putting the damage on this position, which has been the best trade for us. Oh man, uh, yeah, I got into this Netflix. Uh, oh man, my, it ran away from my bid there. So hopefully that hits. Uh, but I got, I, I added to this Netflix trade above 240, and you're watching here, there was like just an influx of sellers above 240. It, it creeped up to 240.49, so I thought I was going to get stopped out of position, uh, but then there was just a ton of sellers above there, so I'm still liking this trade for now. I want to see, I'd be more comfortable with it if, you know, I see sellers popping up below the 240 area. Uh, again, guys, so I am bidding uh, there, so I got a piece out there off of this ad, uh, so again, just going to kind of better my, uh, my average price here. And hopefully, you know, this starts to turn back down to the downside and I'm going to be right about this 240 level. Uh, but yeah, for now, this is the trade that I'm really, really watching. Uh, every time it's been up above 240, you guys saw that. Uh, so let's see it again one more time here. If, you know, sellers and the red starts to pour in, now there's a little bit more green. So I'm likely going to get stopped out here. Uh, yeah, there it is. I got stopped out. So, you know, that trade didn't work there. Netflix clearly too, too strong on the day. Uh, maybe eventually, okay, now the selling pours in. So it basically hunted my stop there. Uh, and then, you know, obviously flushed a little bit more. Uh, but I think, you know, I'm, unless it, the 240 really starts to break down and then, you know, we get like a lower high off of the 240, uh, then maybe I'll jump in short again. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to leave this trade alone for now. Uh, but uh, yeah, quick L on Netflix on that one. Um, so I LFT a little bit on the day, but that's not really a big deal. That Apple trade's still really, really working well for me. Uh, NI, NIO will break 20 shorted. Let's take a quick look at NIO. Um, so you're talking about the 20 breakdown to the downside. You guys know I like to take those breakouts, uh, especially in a weak market to the downside, right? Here's the thing. So you're basically shorting the low on, on, uh, on NIO here. So same sort of concept. Um, where is NIO going to catch a bounce? Will it be that 20 level? You know, that 20 level, obviously, a significant level uh, psychologically. On the daily, you know, it's been reused and abused, so maybe not so much. 
But you know, if you're gonna pick any spot to where NIO might turn around, it could be that 20 level, right? But obviously, if it's super weak on the day, if the market has another downturn to the downside and breaks new lows, then what do you think is gonna happen to NIO? NIO is gonna continue to, uh, to slide to the downside. So that's a good, uh, good trade idea. You know, breakouts work a lot better when the market is pushing a lot of volume uh, at the open. Uh, but you know, something to kind of keep in mind, and let's see uh, if that trade kind of comes through. But thank you for uh, kind of putting that trade idea into, uh, into the chat. Yes, sir. Gotta love it when the chat's helping us out with trade ideas at the moment. Though Adobe pushing back to the downside, another dollar per share in the money on that bad boy. Non-stop, can't stop, won't stop making money on Adobe today. Uh, I'm glancing over at my left screen over here to see if we can find any stocks that are really moving around with the market as, as the market rejects BWAP and pushes back to the low of days maybe uh, in order for us to put some damage on it. I know Brandon in the work chat saying Netflix is at... Uh, days high so Netflix man just continues to soar through the through the highs over here but with the market pulling back Netflix being part of the overall market I believe Netflix is like uh, uh, maybe maybe not I, is Netflix in the top 10 of the market probably of the spies no no of the Nasdaq then maybe he's a Netflix maybe probably in the top down uh, quite a bit uh, probably in the top 10 or even if it's not it's it's part of the market overall so if the market's pulling back I can't see Netflix keep on going to the north side it's got to have some weight on it but uh, not you know stocks do whatever they want to do sometimes you've seen Tesla be irrational uh, uh, way way completely different than the market so many times and sometimes it's exactly what the market but yeah like someone in the chat said Tom Tom in the chat said uh, it, it is heading to the downside and uh, so is the market yeah, and you know what? You guys can look at this one. Look how brutal this one's going to be. Um, but uh, yeah, so get short. More Netflix here. Get stopped out. Hunts my stop. You know, luckily I got some pieces out, but you know, it's still going to be a negative name for me now. Uh, if it creeps back up to this 240 again and you know, sellers really come in hard closer to that 240, I'll think about jumping in short again because realistically, I think you got to risk off a 241. So, you know, again, I was probably a little bit too aggressive with this trade, uh, but that's okay, right? So, you know, you live and learn. Uh, you know, it's kind of like on my first Apple trade uh, earlier. Well, not my first one, but on this trade here, uh, I got a little bit too aggressive shorting in front of the level. And then, you know, obviously waiting for the, for the curl around off of that level. That worked a lot better, right? So it's maybe something going to be similar uh, for, for me here if it pops up on Netflix. Uh, now, oh, now it, it really likes to rub salt in the wound, eh? So now it would have been a dollar in the money off of that 240 short. Uh, but it is what it is. We'll, uh, we'll continue on and, and try to find some more trades. Um, Meta was another name that was on my list for this morning that I wanted to kind of get short on, uh, but I just missed it. It was off of this like 148 level, uh, and it really worked well. Uh, so again, it had that pop up off of those morning imbalances, but that was Fugazi. You guys saw that. Uh, and then, you know, the flush move off of 148, and that actually never tested again. Meta has been one of the weakest... Uh, names pretty much all week like this is the daily in the week it's, it's just getting completely beat down right so it made that top around that 170 area crack below the 155 consolidation area and since then guys it's just been heading south so that was a huge support level for meta and now you know continues to be super weak below it so uh, just be careful if you are long on that one hopefully you stopped out around this 155 area but yeah this is probably testing that 145 uh, today, if it gets to that 145, that is one breakdown uh, that I definitely want to be involved in. So uh, I'm going to make sure that I have that order in if it does come, and we'll get into that trade. Uh, CCL working for us now. Indeed, CCL working for us. Only four pennies in the money, though. But, yeah, hopefully it can push back down. Adobe really working for me, though. Let's go, Adobe. Uh, like I said, can't stop, won't stop making money on this trade. Once again, $2 in the money on that side. UPS still under VWAP, but actually it's at VWAP right now. So I'm just going to close my trade because... Uh, UPS has been not really doing what I wanted to do, which is continue pushing the downside. So we're going to jump out of that trade. But uh, managing Roblox now, which is only 10 pennies out of the money, let's go. So market clearly uh, rejecting VWAP, heading back south. And I'm looking at HKD. HKD now at $103 might be halted to the downside. Let's go see if it is. Uh, New York stock, yes, New York side. No, it's not halted, but uh, it, it's not really moving too much right now let's see if the volume can come in and and take the stock back to the downside we saw yesterday it went a little bonkers up and down and up and down 
Today, it's a little bit more tamed, it looks like. I don't really see any halts today in HKD. Um, but maybe if I go to the one minute, I can maybe see the halts. Let's see. Huh, surprised that there were no halts on HKD today. Oh, there we go. We got some halts over here. We got a halt over here. We got a halt over here. So, yeah, it did. because the liquidity is, like, so bad, right? Like, you know, it's it just wants to halt all the time. It halts, like, every day. Yeah, indeed. And uh, it's, now it's heading to the downside off those halts. Um, some Daryl said he had the, the the short off of 123, and I actually had an order to get short like 122.90, and then I canceled it as I was walking over to the show desk here. Uh, but that would have filled. That would have been a nice short. This 123 has just been a gift all day, right? So you know that's where I had the short in the morning off of that 123. That's where it stalled out. So you know you can apply that thesis the whole day. So it bounced off there, and then you know respecting that that resistance level. Uh, pretty much all day, but what you want to really see if you are in this short off 123 is the VWAP kind of break down to the downside and then, you know, continue that momentum to the downside below VWAP. Then you can really start to, uh, you know, uh, just kind of hold that trade for the rest of the day kind of thing and turn into a, like a more of like a more or less a swing trade, uh, kind of like what I'm doing with Apple, right? But, you know, you've got to take some profits out, I think, uh, if you're 60 cents in the money in front of that VWAP level, it's always a good area to take out. Uh, if it comes up in front of that 123 again, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to place my order there to get short uh, in front of that 123. I don't want to miss that trade again, uh, but I think you know maybe this time uh, closer to that 122.80 uh, level. You know I want to see it really make a lower high. But good trade there, Daryl. Uh, I know you're always killing the trades in the chat, and that's what we like to see. Um, I'm still small size. Rivian was hoping to get filled. Um, you know, Rivian has kind of been in play uh, for a little bit now. Basically, the past week, essentially, since their whole, like, news and deal with, with uh, Mercedes there. Uh, that 40 level, it's been kind of attracted to that 40 level quite a bit uh, all week. You know, we had those shorts off of 40 uh, the other day. You could have had something similar here, uh, you know, but risking a little bit more, 39.80. Here's the thing, guys. Like, that 40 short the other day, we were doing it as a front run. There was decent size at that 40 level. So that's why we were kind of shorting off of it. Uh, but today, you know, it doesn't really quite get there. The high of the day is 39.81, right? So, you know, you could have shorted that. Here, I'll bring it up here. Uh, it was like, I guess, like a double top if I uh, unconsolidate my chart there a bit. Uh, a little bit of a double top on a one minute, uh, and that really worked well. But, uh, yeah, for me today, no real trades on Rivian. It wasn't really on my radar. Uh, I thought, you know, if I wanted to trade a market move, uh, I thought I'd get short in Apple. I actually also traded the MES, we can show that as well. I was trading the futures uh, this morning and that really worked well um, for me. You know, kind of shorting off of these, uh, the 3880, 3875 area. Uh, again, guys, you know, I had these shorts here, 3875, 30, kind of, you know, covering in front of these supports around the 3850 area. Eventually, you know, I added and stepped away from my desk and put my stop in. Uh, me and Prad went out uh, for a quick walk to grab something, and then, uh, you know, I got stopped out eventually. It's still positive on the name for me on the futures. I've been kind of working on something for the futures. You know, I kind of want to develop some sort of strategy uh, that I can participate in the futures. If, uh, you know, these trades come about, uh, you know, I want to, you know, participate as best I can in them because, you know, futures trades can be very, very profitable. Uh, good luck the rest of the day off on a trip. Yeah, good luck to you, and, you know, have a great weekend. Have a great trip. Uh, hopefully, it's been a profitable uh, trading day for you guys. I noticed this poll here uh, as well. Will the market touch 3,500 for FOMC? It's going to be very, very interesting. I showed you guys that countdown to CME tool. I'll bring it up again, guys. I think, you know, if they do raise 100 basis points, uh, then, you know, you're probably going to get a pretty big flush move, I'd say. Um, and, you know, maybe we do see 3,500. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm leaning more towards, you know, it's going to break those June lows, uh, and I'm going to bring up um, uh, this here. This is the daily, right? So hopefully we can zoom out here and see uh, these June lows here, 36.50, right? So I don't know about 3,500. I think we'd have to get a pretty brutal flush move off of there uh, if they did raise 100 basis points. But, you know, definitely going to test uh, the 3,800, 3,750 area. I wouldn't be surprised if it heads there. Uh, but again, guys, you know, manage your risk leading into that, uh, into that FOMC meeting day. You know, maybe deleverage a bit unless you're like super convicted about uh, the short side or something like that. Because you guys saw what happened the other day on, uh, on Tuesday with the CPI uh, number that came out. That market move was, uh, was unbelievable. It flushed like 150 handles. Uh, so that was quite crazy. 
wig nation in the house. You know, I got a fresh haircut uh, last night, so shout out to my barber. You know who, uh, you, know who you are. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think you guys can really make fun of this one. I think this haircut looks pretty fresh. What do you think? <laughs> Mr. Fresh Haircut, you know it. <laughs> Uh, you, you always stay styling, baby, and you always keep stealing all the numbers that I'm trying to get. So, yeah, good job on that part. Uh, now, Fiona, I'm joking. Fiona, he doesn't, he doesn't take any numbers. In case you're watching. <laughs> you know, it's just a joke, Fiona. Don't, don't, be, don't be beating your boy up when he gets home, okay? Uh, no, we're watching a couple positions over here. We're still managing our trades. It's, it's now officially past, past the lunch time, so we'll see if the market can bring in some volume that we've been waiting for for God knows how long now. I'm actually passing now. Like, I'm getting bored. I don't know about you, Ian. This market has been doing nothing fun for me but, but go sideways uh, since, since, uh, since 11.30. So I'm, I'm pretty... Pretty annoyed with this, uh, with these moves. Maybe a little extension to the downside or some bottom uh, popping to the upside would be fun too. Uh, a, a handle is one point. The handle is the first digit. Yeah, that's a one point handle, whatever. Pratt needs the perm. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Bitcoin been stair stepping down. I mean, the whole market, everything stair stepping down, right? Gold, uh, Bitcoin, market, everything's just getting c collapsed right now because money is more expensive. As the inflation keeps on going higher, interest rates keep on going higher, and now the cost of money is getting uh, 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 more and more expensive. So people who want to borrow money, people who are loaning, and and uh, all these companies who've just been getting leveraged up there. Uh, up there you know what because money was free and just dumping it into the market now they're getting some pain behind it they're now realizing like you know companies are overvalued because people could just take loans and dump it in the market take loans and dump it in the market then repay those loans for zero percent interest if they're able to do so in in uh, in what 30 days or something that's what the bank rules are right so uh and the people have been doing that for so long now now it's just it's gonna get harder to do that yeah, exactly. And that's the whole point. Like, they're, they're basically trying to limit the amount of money uh, circulating so, you know, they can bring inflation down. And the way you do that is less spending, right? So um, NIO is creeping up to this 20 level. Uh, so there is, you know, there, there's like 1,200 lots there. That's nothing, guys, like monetarily wise. That, that's really nothing. So I'm not going to try to take this breakdown or anything like that. I'm also, you know, I filtered the, the level two here so you guys can clearly see and I dragged it down. There's some decent bidders here below 20. Right there, you got obviously the size at 20, that just got taken. You got decent size at 98. You see that 98 didn't really get hit, right? So it quickly reclaimed that 20 level. So if you took that breakout uh, to the downside, I think you gotta be stopping out right here uh, in case uh, you know it really rips up off of this 20. Guys, you know that was pretty textbook. There was oh, those bidders below the 20 level, so I wasn't really thinking short here. Uh, if anything, you know maybe the long, but again guys, you know the market, it's, it's 115 in the afternoon. Uh, you know, there was a little bit of a volume spike there, but not that much. I want to see a lot of volume popping up for me to really, really be interested in this trade. Yeah, you see, guys, that was textbook there. So, you know, breaks the level, gets every, every stops everyone out kind of thing. You know, if you were front running that, stops you out, hunts the liquidity, and now rips up another 10 cents, right? So decent R to R trade there if you were bidding right below that 20. But, you know, that's a harder trade to structure. So maybe get long on the reclaim at 20.01, and now you're about 10 cents in the money. So... You know, that was interesting there, you know, to see that Neo 20 um, there live on the level two. But thank you again for calling that out. I forget who it was. Uh, but yeah, good trade there on NIO. Great trade, baby. Let's go. Smack those trades to the downside. I'm currently being a little vain and looking at my notifications. What was this? We won't blame you uh, for the baby crying. We know it was Trader Pratt. No, no, no. That wasn't me. That was Sharif. I promise. I promise. I, I'm, I'm a great guy. Trust me. Uh, I don't make babies cry, but Sharif, oof, oh, that man, that, as long as he's not listening to me, because he might beat me up, but yeah, uh, that man <laughs> makes babies cry. Uh, uh, coming to the midday super chat section over here, couple, looks like we actually missed the super chat in the morning. Friday, thanks for the market coverage, says Street Fishing. Yes, sir, thank you for the $10 super chat, we appreciate it. Midday super chats, looks like we actually covered all of them, so nothing really for us left for to talk about uh, uh can you look at imte pretty sure our boy sharif already looked at imt but we can look at that again real quick what is imte doing a dollar 77 sock 
Currently trying to push the downside. No, that's HKD here. Yeah, pushing the downside a little bit, moving to the 50 period EMA on the five minute chart. Could, I could see it maybe having some support around 160 or even uh, at the 100 period EMA at 159. So we could see a little bit more pullback on IMT if it wants to come back, that is. If it wants to, if it doesn't want to pull back, then maybe we hold the 50 period EMA, launch back above VWAP and go back towards a high day above $2. Currently high day at $2.08. Uh, the Fed will raise 1% uh, to make sure the market knows that they're serious. I think the market knows that the Fed is serious. Um, I mean, like, they're, they're, they're dedicated. Every time that, you know, you hear Jay Powell come out talk, uh, he says the same thing, guys. I don't know why everyone's still, you know, super bullish every time Jay Powell comes up, uh, thinking that he's going to, you know, turn the money printer back on. He says, like, you know, the Fed is committed to bringing down inflation, right? And they're going to do whatever it takes. So that being said, you got to manage your trades appropriately. Obviously, you know, there's going to be volatility in the market, going to be decent uh, trading opportunities. But, you know, also you got to manage your long-term accounts as well. Coin needs to get back to 60 where it belongs. Let's check out coin. And I know that's where, way below where the price is now, you know, trading around $75. I want to see on the daily um, as my monitor kind of just shut off there. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, so you get this consolidation. Uh, around this 60 area, 60 to 50, I guess you got to call it 50, right? Nice round hole number uh, as the support level. Uh, that's where, you know, you want to potentially get long, but that 50 breakdown is probably going to be a sick breakdown level to the downside. That's probably what we're going to be looking for. If, you know, the Fed uh, comes out and, you know, the market becomes super negative, then that level is probably going to be on our minds once again. But, uh, yeah, coin obviously getting beat down with the likes of Bitcoin and crypto and, and so on. Yeah, I'm currently looking at Mosaic finally pushing the downside for us. Find a time to take some profits on this side. This stock has been, uh, uh, you know, not really burning us. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, if it popped to 50 cents, then yeah, we're wrong. But thankfully, never really popped that 50 cents against us. Now taking profits by being 31 cents in the money is on Mosaic. Me, your boy, Pretty Daddy. <coughs> I want to head over to... <coughs> I'm sorry. I wanna, yeah, I'm good. I want to head over to Lucid real quick. I'm choking on my water that I just took a sip off. Holy, almost died on show by drinking water. I don't think anyone's ever <laughs> done that in, in real life, but uh, that would be history in the making. Live on Trader TV Live, baby. You know what it is. Uh, Lucid, though. Lucid, thank God we jumped out of that trade. We looked good for a second. After consolidating over here sideways, I was getting ready to punch long again, honestly. But I said, hey, the trade didn't work out for you the first time. Maybe stay away from it. And, and I think that was the best decision I could have made because Lucid now pushing even more to the downside, right back to the pre market lows and turning back negative for the day lcid i think lucid is a is an easy short to pop uh, anytime it pops up i think uh you know find some upside levels and, and try to get short. that's because you just hate lucid i don't uh, yeah true <laughs> <laughs> tesla going upside let's take a quick look at tesla i want to see like if it actually is gonna uh, hold above vwap here and tesla likes this 300 once again and and actually show some buying like you know on the daily obviously uh, i'll try to zoom in here but our, our, our daily is kind of, you know, I'm not even going to bother with that because after the split, it looks kind of whack. But, you know, you want to see it kind of test above this 300. I think the post-split high was, uh, was maybe like the 314 area or maybe that was, you know, pre-split and the adjusted price. That 315 area, that's going to be the big breakout for Tesla and probably when we're going to be super interested in getting involved to the upside. But again, guys, it's really struggling with this 300 level. You want to see it kind of reclaim that on the dailies and then it's going to be super bullish. Um, you guys only trade four stocks. I mean, I'm trading what's kind of in play today. And, uh, you know, the reasons why I'm trading Apple right now, I was trading the, the, the market move, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to save some risk, obviously. For the close, let's see where that goes. Uh, Rivian short for size now. We talked I about address Rivian that comment, earlier. Though. Yeah, go ahead. I want to address that comment. Like, why does it matter if we only trade one stock, four stocks, or ten stocks, as long as we're showing you how to make money on that stock or how to... How, how the setup is and how the, the brain process and the thought process is behind that setup. So I don't really understand that comment a little bit. I mean, look, we, we don't need to trade all 10,000 stocks that are going down or all 10,000 stocks that are going up. That just doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, it? It makes more sense that he is talking about stocks that are in play that actually have volume behind it and are moving. He's not talking about positions that are moving uh, like, you know, with 300,000 shares on a $2 stock. So I don't understand that comment.
Yeah, that's fair to say. Uh, guys, you can look at this one here. That trade I put on earlier on Netflix, uh, yeah, real kick in the teeth for me here. You know, I get stopped out. Basically, I got top wick on that. Uh, I know Prad's had some charts like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure every trader has charts like this. You get top wick, uh, and then, you know, it drives down. Uh, the, the original thesis I had, the 240 was right, but I think I just needed to give it a little bit more risk. Uh, I don't trade Netflix too, too often, but, you know, clearly it needs about a dollar risk because it's a pretty expensive stock and it's pretty whippy. Uh, but regardless, you know, something to note for the future. But that 240, I kind of nailed that thesis. It turned around right there. What better place for it to kind of run into a big wall after this big, huge upside move uh, than that 240 area. But if you guys caught that trade, uh, you know, great trade on that one. And that worked really, really well. I want to look back at that Rivian trade again, uh, just because that uh, I saw that comment. Someone said they're short riv with uh, Rivian right now. So again, guys, risking off of that 40 area above, but realistically getting short in front of the 3980 area because that's been the, the resistance today, the highest 3981. It tested that look. It looks like it tested that here and then rejected that area. But again, guys, you want to see it kind of break down this 50 EMA. 200 EMA and VWAP, it has a lot of support to kind of get through, so just manage, make sure you're managing your risk on that one. Yeah, I just want to say bye-bye to that person, and you know exactly who I'm talking to. Bye-bye. Uh, and uh, we'll come back to the, the, the market over here, the market moving back to the north side, sadly, which means uh, my shorts are going to move back to the north side. Uh, we were $2 in the money on Adobe there. We were about $0.50 cents in the money on Mosaic. Roblox moving back into the profits. CCL has been in the money. Oxy also moving back into the profits. So I need this market to really push south side, break the low a day, and, and continue into that direction. Ape is popping up on my scanners. Have you actually traded Ape as much as uh, we would have liked to? No, and that's I something that I regret yeah. because, like... But it was like pay for shorts and then... Is it pay for shorts? Yeah, well, it used to be. Like, when it first came, it was pay for shorts. So it likely still is. You know, AMC's pay for shorts and whatnot. So, but yeah, I think we should have been trading Ape a lot more. I know. I, 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 I kind of forget that the stock even existed, honestly. So, uh, I, I, right now, though, Ape popping up on the scanners with the big volume candle to the downside. Look at that volume candle. Almost as big as the last few candles before lunchtime, right? And and creating a new low a day. We're about to go test the $5 area. Does it break 5 and go to the downside? Does it hold up at 5 and, and bounce off of 5? Uh, is there any resistance at 5? Sorry, support at 5? Not really. I think the stock could easily go down to $4.50 if it wants to. Yeah. So it's trying to push down with the rest of the market. Actually, market it's not really pushing down but this stock is trying to push down with it every time ape is pushing down it's only smart to go look at amc also amc back under ten dollars now struggling yet again i remember a couple days ago taking the longs off of 10 on amc it was pretty clean and they actually worked out but today being down 6.66 percent on the day your boy amc sadly moving towards that nine dollars area I, if amc moves to five dollars would you buy it on your long term no. I think I would. You would? Even though I'm not a, I, I'm anti-theater person, like I don't really like theaters like that anymore. Maybe if you go like on a date or something, theaters are cool. But like besides that, like I don't, I don't see the point in theaters. I might try to sit at home, pause the movie when I want to, go, go pee, go bring popcorn, whatever. A lot of the time, but, honestly, the only time we really go to theaters is uh, I don't, I don't know what what happens in the states, but on Tuesdays there's like the, the oh, deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like uh, cheaper Tuesdays. It's like half price, right? Those are the times that I, I go. I don't think they have that anymore at Cineplex, do they? No, they do. They do. They okay, do okay, have okay, cheaper okay, Tuesdays, okay. but you know, granted, inflation, the prices are yeah, more expensive, yeah. anyways. Yeah. Um, the last time I went to the theaters, I saw Top Gun. Uh, they were doing like a three dollar deal on yeah. a Saturday, so that was cool. I saw that. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't. Usually go to the theaters too often, so but I get like, what you're saying. But like, if if the squeeze does ever really happen, you know, they you say think that the, the squeeze hasn't been. They, they say it's not squeezed yet, right? So let's say if it does squeeze, I think I can buy like you know even one share at five bucks and just be say just say I was okay, part of the squeeze. Okay, but what are you gonna make up of one I, share? Doesn't matter. I was part of the squeeze, baby. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I was part so of the so squeeze. You, you can get the arrows on the chart. Yeah, right? <laughs> just 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 make my Twitter chart looks good, right? Theater is nice, I think, is in well. Yeah, I don't know where you're kind of going with this. Only go for John Wick. Are they making a new John Wick movie? That, that would be kind of cool, you know. I, fourth one? Fifth one? What is I this? I think it's Wasn't there a fourth, fourth one already? Fourth one? You guys correct yeah, me in the Parabellum chat. Yeah, Parabellum is the fourth one, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, yeah, it's funny because growing up, I saw Keanu Reeves in Matrix, obviously. Oh, that was to me, boy. Keanu Reeves was always Neo, uh, right? You know, growing up with that character. 
But man, I think he's more John Wick now. I think he's fully he's embraced more John, John Wick now. Uh, character. He looks like John Wick. You know, uh, yeah, cool guy. He's actually from Canada. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, someone said Apple is kind of basing out here, and it's kind of scaring me on the short side. And I want to talk about that trade, or uh, that just in general, because Apple is, you know, I've talked many times about it being kind of like a barometer for the overall market. If Apple really doesn't show weakness below this 149 area and break new lows on the day, do you really expect the market to break new lows or, you know, your shorts kind of work for you to the downside? Likely not. Like the chances of that are, you know, become slimmer and slimmer, right, as Apple kind of holds up. That being said, I talked about this 150 area being kind of this level in the sand here. If that gets reclaimed, uh, then I think, you know, you're going to be definitely in trouble on the short side uh, just because it's right where VWAP is as well, right? But until that happens, you know, I'm chilling uh, with my Apple position. If you guys jump in any shorts, uh, I'd be chilling with that one as well, just kind of riding it, seeing if, you know, the market maybe just fades out the rest of the day into uh, the quad witching event tonight on the close. That's going to be something to watch for sure. Yeah, I think uh, everyone in the office is honestly preparing for that right now. Everyone's just uh, chilling out, relaxing, looking for some trade opportunities, but uh, just waiting for that moves from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock that show up. Currently, Adobe, $2 in the money once again, so let's go take out some size on that bad boy. Uh, and, you know, with the markets not really trying to push towards the lower day, uh, I don't want to be trying and holding uh, positions over here to see if I can make a bigger trade out of them. So I'm going to try and take uh, profits where they're being offered. For example, Mosaic, now 41 cents in the money. But uh-uh-uh. Don't run away from me. Give me my profit. Yeah, there we go. Let's take that out on that side. Oxy is the only trade right now on the board that is out of the money by eight pennies. Everything else is in the money. And my only negative stock on the day today is LCID. But that's fine. If if uh, if uh, Ian's looking at the blotter over here, he can see that the damage that LCID had doesn't matter because Adobe has been absolutely wonderful today to the downside non-stop can't stop won't stop and yes i'm going to continue trading this one tick here until it, it brings the cows home is that what the saying is uh that i don't know bring, bring the, cows the cows home or something right right neil 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 knows the saying i don't know something about bringing something about cows, cows home <laughs> Un until the cows come home or something yeah it's a saying okay, yeah, until, until the, the cows, cows come home, home yeah uh, I want to say one thing here. Uh, I'm not too young to know Keanu Reeves was Bill and Ted, like in that Bill movie. You know, do you know the movie Bill and Ted? No. It was like one of Keanu Reeves' first movies, and he like was the Neil childhood. Movie? Yeah, no, I know Neil knows this movie. I know Neil knows this movie. This was a little bit before my time, but I'm a little. It's old, but I'm, a, I, you know, I'm I'm educated in the in in some pop culture uh, references. That was a pretty cool movie there. Uh, Keanu went from being typecast as. As an idiot being a more serious action star. Yeah, no, I, I think that's true. My uh, first movie of Keanu was Speed. Yeah, Speed's a cool movie, too. I don't know why we're all of a sudden on this Keanu Reeves kick. Keanu's cool, bro. <laughs> Keanu's cool. Yeah, yeah, Speed was a cool movie. Um, what else was he in? He was in a... Devil's Advocate. Oh, yeah. actually, not even Speed. My first movie was Constantine. Oh, Constantine. Was Constantine. Yeah, I, I forgot about that My movie. My first Keanu movie was Constantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then cool it was Speed. Too. Then it was Matrix. That's a cool movie, too. Bro, uh, when, he, when he goes this, oh, uh, yeah, 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 that yeah, full yeah. nerd mode. Full, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he full brings down Satan himself. Point, Point break. Oh, man. Point yeah, break. Yeah. Ultimate Keanu movie. That's a classic. Point Break, okay, okay. Yeah, Point Point Break, sick movie. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that movie, not the remake, guys. The remake, I don't know about that one. Watch the classic, uh, you know, that was young Keanu Reeves in his prime, Point Break, check it out. That, you know who's also in that movie? Heath Ledger. Heath e. Ledger is in that movie, great actor, obviously, RIP uh, to him. Yeah, man, Heath, uh, one of the goats. I will go down in history as the best villain actor ever. But I think we were having this conversation uh, not too long ago. If, if you ignore Heath Ledger's acting, uh, who would be the next best villain in, in, in the comic series? I think it would be Bane. Yeah, but isn't, isn't it funny how they're both coming from the same series? Of course, the Christopher Batman Nolan. Yeah, well that, that, Chris, yeah. Not Batman series. I wouldn't give the credit to Batman series because it was Christopher Nolan's uh, direction that made that come out. Because those same characters were in other movies and they never came out that good. 
right? Like, there's been other Jokers, there's been other Penguins and other whatever, but the way Tom Hardy killed his body for Bane and the way Heath Ledger just got into the whole I idea of, of Joker, there will never be two better uh, villains for me in the, in the, in the film, film realm. Now, let's come back to the, to the market over here a little bit, which is actually popping up. And, and if you see me grab my arms, it's because my arms are killing me right now. But the, yeah, the market's moving to the north side over here, uh, pushing back to VWAP with a nice move back to VWAP, actually, are both the SPY and the NASDAQ market over here. Let's see how big of a move can these markets get. Let me pull up the, the chart for NASDAQ right here. There we go, bang. NASDAQ with a nice move, no real pump up in the volume, but a clear elevation in the stock price on the new five minute chart. Uh, sorry, five minute candle. It's been about only two and a half minutes on this candle actually, so it's not that new, but it's still a nice little pump back to VWAP. Can we, can we uh, break out the 100 period EMA? We got a nice little break of 100 period EMA over here around, around 10.30 today, but ever since then we've been rejecting the 100 period EMA on the five minute chart. My expectation is we reject again of the 100 period EMA and continue barcoding sideways. Looks like the tattoo behind Hitman's neck. Uh, I punched in short into Amazon here. I talked so many times about this 123 level. I know some of you, I think it was Daryl that had it uh, short as well. As it quickly runs in the, in the money for me, 20 cents, let me quickly take some out there. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Amazon, you know, 30 cents in the money now. Uh, getting a little bit of flush move off this 123 area. I didn't believe this move, man. Like, you know, you see it right here, this wick. Uh, this pop up to the 50 EMA, this VWAP area on the market, uh, quickly gets flushed down. You know, I'm going to quickly take some profits. If they're offered to me, uh, 25 cents in the money now on Amazon. I like this 123 level a lot. I'm glad I got it this time. Uh, so you guys saw that trade kind of happen live there and how quickly it can work for you. But when it works quickly, uh, you know, this is something I was talking with, uh, with Luca about. Let me get a little bit more out. Uh, as it struggles with this 170 area. Oh, no, actually, okay, yeah, let me get some out there. Um, but yeah, one thing that I was talking about with Luca is that, you know, you put it on a trade, it goes in the money, 30, 50 cents for you right away. Uh, you got to take off some because, you know, what kind of move are you expecting, uh, you know, for, to, to kind of come into play? I got triggered short into meta now. Meta broken 150, uh, so quickly getting triggered short into that one. Uh, you know, I got a really good fill on that one, so let me take... Uh, some profits out there, about 15 cents uh, in the money on that one. Let me take, I, I misclicked there, I want to take a little bit more. So let me take a little bit more there on Meta. So now breaking down this 145 area, is this one going to cruise to the downside as well uh, as the market kind of tests these lows? Uh, going to keep an eye on that one, but some, uh, some good short trades now working out for me. If you're still holding a short, uh, keep holding because who knows, this market can keep just gliding down to the downside. Yeah, currently just watching the market, ping VWAP and now push back right back to where it originally was. Looks like that idea is going to stand true. Still a lot of weakness left in this market. We still got about 25 minutes with Ian and myself in the show here. So any questions in the chat, any stocks that you guys wanted to put, want us to pull up, feel free to throw in the chat and we will, uh, when we got a time to, pull it up and, and take a look at it. Someone in this chat said, uh, Pratt, how do you have the patience to... To hold Adobe, I had to put a 295, it ran up or something. I'm not sure I really understood the question, but I guess you were just talking about, about having patience. The, the, the put side, the 295 thing and it running up against you, I don't really understand that because why are you punching out of your trade if it never broke your stop? My stop is at 298.99, basically at 300. I'm giving it a $5 range. The stock is expensive. It's a $300 stock with a spread of 50 cents. A stock with spread of 50 cents will easily move three to five dollars in a second. I know that because I've traded Tesla before in my life. I know exactly how Tesla moves when it was a hundred, when it was a thousand dollar stock and the spread was 50 cents. So any stock with the spread of 50 cents could easily move dollars in your favor or against your favor. So if you were short 295 and you saw it pump up to 297 and you punched out, I think that's on you, right? My setup is basically uh, holding it until it shows me weakness above the range consolidation. The range consolidation high is well above 297, well above 298, so no reason for me to punch out. There was no such thing as patience. I knew exactly what my trade was. I knew my rules. I knew where I wanted to take profit. I knew where I wanted to enter, and I knew where I wanted to take my loss. So as long as you know exactly all the variables out there, there's no more guessing in this game. There's nothing about patience. There's nothing about, uh, uh, about the market. 
It's, it just comes down to me, my rules, and my trading setup. And, and that's, what, that's what Adobe has done for me, has paid me multiple dividends by sticking to that setup. Uh, and what I kind of gauge from that, uh, Pratt, as well, is you know, trade your plan. You have a plan going into the day or you know, going into a specific name. Stick to that plan. Trade your plan. Let the market tell you if your plan is going to be ready to execute on that specific day, right? If it's not, if the market is telling you something different, then don't trade. Don't trade that, uh, that name. You know, move to something else that you know, maybe works a little bit better into your favor. Don't force things, right? When you start forcing things, becoming impatient, uh, letting your emotions take over, you know, maybe having some FOMO or some greed, that's when you start to uh, you know, take some L's and that's where it can kind of cascade uh, into something a little bit worse. Um, I'm still in this meta short off this 145 area. Uh, you know, it was kind of climbing above the 145 area, but here's the thing, like, it's struggling with it. It's struggling with it. There's sellers there. There's active sellers around this area, maybe, you know, stopping out and whatnot as the market is kind of pumping up and testing VWAP. So if the market actually does reject VWAP here and, you know, kind of slides back towards the, the downside, towards the lows again, then I'm expecting this meta trade to work out a lot better. Uh, I, I'm probably risking up to the 40 cent, 50 cent area here. I want to give it a little bit more space just because the market is kind of having an infliction point now, kind of deciding what it wants to do with VWAP, right? So I don't want to be, uh, you know, wicked out of this trade by putting my stop at like 145.01 or something like that. I want to be a little bit more patient with this breakout trade. I got, I used the breakout as an entry to get involved, but you know, I'm kind of structuring it uh, a little bit differently now. Um, Apple is getting close to that 150 area. So uh, as my chart is kind of messed up there, but it is creeping close to that 150 area. Uh, again, guys, I'm going to stop out if it reclaims this 150 area, and then you know maybe the shorts are not going to be too too uh, too advantageous for me to be in. Uh, Amazon is still dealing with this 123 area as well. Uh, I'm glad I got those profits out as it flushed 30, 40 cents for me in the money. But now it is kind of fluctuating around that 123 level. So keep an eye on some of these trades here. Uh, basically flat on all of them. The Apple trade I don't really care too much about, but more so this Amazon trade now and the Meta trade. Sorry, uh, currently watching Netflix, baby. Netflix launching back to 240 right now and trying to take out the high ID. Let's see if Netflix can actually continue going to the north side up 1.86 percent. S&P 500 and Nasdaq both moved up to VWAP and they're both looking to cancel VWAP. Trader Pratt, cool profile pick. Yeah, that's actually Luca. That's Luca with a Guinness in, in, my, in my profile pick. Uh, you know that one, the one that I use for our, for our work chat and so on. Uh, it's a, that was a good day, too. That was a good day. I have another one of Spencer, too. Spencer's not here. Neither is Luca, I would guess, because they are gone to go get some Spro, put some energy into their body for the, for the power hour, sour hour, whatever hour might come into play from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, let's see what stocks you guys are talking about in the chat. Uh, FDX, resistance at 160, support at 160. How is that even possible? Uh, oh, so 160.71 and support at 160.06. It's consolidating for now. Yeah, big reason why I didn't touch F FDX today is because it's overplayed, right? Most of the move happened in pre-market. The pre-market sellers and buyers already yeah. did, the, did the diddling for me where there's no more trades for me left on it. Uh, but if you want to put your punch a position, you know, short off of the 50 period EMA on the five minute chart here, Still looks like a good entry to me. UPS was one of my best trades today, but uh, a second best trade today on the day for me is actually UPS, which I played as a sympathy trade off of uh, off of FDX. So 100 period EMA short, getting writing it all the way back to VWAP was was a very fun trade. Two dollars per share almost on on another freight carrying, but a bigger freight carrying package. Well, not freight, but sorry, delivering package, postal services package, uh, UPS. Uh, now the meta trade continues to work for me. I was just setting up a bid there to get some profits out if it flushes more. I was watching the tape. There was a little bit of size at the 80 cent area on the bid, and that got taken out. So, you know, I, I had to get some profits out there. Um, but now it continues to work for me. If the market, like I said, guys, if the market rejects the VWAP area, I really think that this meta trade is going to continue to work because meta is super weak. Now some buying comes into there. The tape kind of changed there. So you guys, you guys saw that? There was buying, it was, it was kind of trickling into the 70s, and then a bunch of buying momentum came in. 
uh, to the upside. So maybe uh, the trade doesn't work right now, but you know, you guys know where I'm risking off of. I'm going to be patient with this one and continue to let it work. Uh, I took out a decent size of my position, uh, almost half now um, out of this meta trade. So that's, uh, I'm just kind of nursing that one. I did take some out of the Amazon trade as well. Same sort of area, this 80 cents area, 70 cents area. You guys see here the light blue on my chart is the 50 EMA. So I just want to uh, take some out in front of there in case it's going to bounce off of there, which it is kind of struggling with right now. Again, guys, this is kind of like an infliction area with the market. What's the market kind of going to decide to do uh, leading into the close today, right? So if it really struggles with this VWAP area, maybe it trickles down into the close. Uh, now, you know, you are getting more of a flush move. So let me take out a little bit more of that Amazon trade. We're taking profits into these names as they continue to flush. Again, guys, it's going short against key levels. The 123 on Amazon, the 150 break on Meta. Yeah, I'm just trying to find some stuff over here, but looking at it, I'll try afterwards, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just nursing my trades, guys. Nothing really going on. We're watching the market reject VWAP. We're watching the market go back to VWAP. It's a constant repeat of the same uh, uh, ranges again and again and again. So for you guys who are, who are trying to make a, a new trade, you know, just wait for positions to go to the downside when the market's pulling down and, and go long if you want a range trade. Or wait for the markets to pull up when the market's pulling up and then get into shorts on every single pop. For example, multiple pops on Unity allowed you to get short and now pushing right back to the lower day is Unity, which has been strong uh, for, for a couple days of last week. Today, though, extending the weakness on, on itself, down 6% on the day, even loosening it turned around to the negative which was actually positive on the day so these stocks are absolutely getting smacked so be careful if you are trying longs uh, uh you know longs are not working at the moment uh, i mean look the, the market environment is telling you exactly what's going on the market screaming to the downside fedex coming out and telling you the global economy fears we got the um uh, no good indication from the cpi ppi or from the jobless claims everything indicating Failure. Uh, I want to quickly check on this NIO trade. And I saw a couple other people mention it. Uh, great trade off of the 20. If you caught that 20 bounce, um, you know, good for you. I don't know about playing it the second time, though. You know, you don't want to get uh, too overused sort of thing. Uh, someone, the reason why I brought it up is because uh, Neil will reach 1950. I mean, if it continues, this is, a, this is obvious clear trend uh, to the downside, guys. So that's why I'm thinking, you know, try, don't uh, get too aggressive playing the 20 bounce once more. I want to welcome a new member to the family here, Gus Pierce. Uh, Gus Pierce, uh, thank you for joining the Trader TV live family. Um, you know, obviously becoming a member gives you access to some cool things, uh, you know, some cool emojis in the chat as well, guys. If you haven't already, uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this like counter kind of go up steadily as the, as the show progresses here. Um, you know, smash that like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button. We know you guys love us and love the support. This isn't easy to do, guys, to trade live all the time. Uh, and we trade live every day, every day from 8.30 uh, to 4 o'clock. Uh, so, you know, some great opportunities there watching as well. You know, check out the, check out the channel. Uh, you know, we post so much content. Uh, you know, we're getting involved as well with some shorts. And, you know, I know uh, Sean does uh, the stock in the streets and whatnot on TikTok and Instagram. Those are really fun as well. Uh, check out all the content, guys. You can always go here and search as well on the channel. Uh, if you go all the way to the right here, you could search up anything you want. Uh, VWAP is always just like the easiest thing that I bring up. Uh, you know, videos related to that as well. Um, but oh, as always, guys, you know, uh, we continue to grow this family, continue to grow this Trader TV Live family. It's the best trading family in the world, I think, and the best trading show for sure in the world. Uh, thank you for your continued support and welcome, Gus, to the family. Yes, sir. We also have another Gus that we love. So if it's that oh, yeah. Gus, then uh, yeah, Gus, what's up? Why oh, would he? Man. Why would he? Ah, uh, he's busy with life right now. But uh, but yeah, if he if if he does, that would be that'll be amazing. <laughs> There's life outside of trading. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh today. Oh, awesome. Yeah, today, guys, Sneaker Kind is coming, uh, coming by at 245 with his Louis Vuitton shoe. Man, I'll be in the gym then. Is the this, is this shoe going to be in a case? Is the shoe going to be in a case? Am I going to be able to touch it and smell it and, and lick it? 
Yeah, okay, Ooh. okay. Uh, I, I don't think he'll let me lick it. I'll be, uh, the shoe value goes down by 10K if I lick it, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but, uh, man, I can't wait to see this Louis Vuitton shoe. So if anyone, any, any one of you who's a, who's a sneakerhead, I know Mikey Crahan in the, in the chat, my boy uh, Laced Up Souls, who sent uh, Sean, Neil, uh, a bunch of us on the, in the office over here, shoes, so thank you for that. I'm sure you're going to enjoy seeing that, that Louis Vuitton shoe at 2.45 p.m., for, uh, once again, SneakerCon coming in at 2.45. Can't we see your setup? Lucas, can you put that, that back camera? The bald camera, there we go. So this is our setup over here. Each of us basically have four, four monitors. One monitor to do uh, for the show. This is the show monitor. Then we have three different monitors. That's my comms monitor. This is my scanners monitor. This is my main monitor where I do my main trading when I'm not on the show. And everyone has their own different layouts. So yeah, this is this is our setup over here. Pretty much the exact same setup for 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 the for the main show guys too. Who'll be back on in about 13 minutes. Woo wee! I know you guys are excited to see Neil, Sean, and Brendan back. Uh, for everyone who, who's already smashed the like button today, uh, we appreciate it. But for those of you who didn't, please do us a favor. Smash that like, smash that sub, ring that notification bell. And we also have a store directly on our YouTube homepage. If you are interested in buying some merch, I think my hoodie is finally on its way. At least that's what I, I, I hope because he was buying it yesterday. He's putting the point <laughs> up. He's putting the thumbs up. Uh, so it is on its way. I can't wait to finally... Oh, yeah, okay. If I keep working out at the gym, it's going to be an XL, man. Oh, oh okay. you're trying oh, to bulk oh, up, oh, eh? That's what okay. I'm talking about. X large boy. boy won't do it anymore if I keep it in the gym. <laughs> Freddy Daddy, <laughs> baby. That's great. You, you, you know the name. Don't ruin it. <laughs> uh, real quick, guys. Welcome another new member uh, to the family uh, here exclusive. Welcome to the Share TV family. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole spiel again, but uh, you guys know. You guys know we, we love your support, and, and we thank you all the time. Uh, this meta trade continues to kind of just fluctuate here. I said, guys, it was going to continue to work if the market rejects VWAP, which it is doing, right? So, you know, I'm getting some out in the 70s. Uh, I'm really trying to be patient now to hold the rest uh, for a continued down move if the market and meta continues to fade out here. Uh, again, guys, you know, getting more out now. Uh, so if I do take a loss, uh, if it creeps back up to like the 20s, the 40s area, uh, then it won't be as harsh of a loss, and I'll probably still end up positive on the name. Uh, come on, give me those fills uh, to the 60s. That's what I want to see. I want to see the 70 breakdown. The low is 68 here, and then it kind of got bought up. And what I'm kind of noticing on the tape is that every time it creeps down to the lower. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, so let's sir. Fred. Here we go. We got it. We got the hoodie already. That was quick, eh? See, guys, you... you yeah, let's go. go. We got the hoodie. Yo, like magic. Fresh, fresh out of the press, baby. Fresh out of the press. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it, my dog. Man, that uh, that hoodie, I, you're going to love that hoodie, man. It's pretty comfy. It's a gilded hoodie. Let's be real. It's comfy. I like it, man. I like it. <laughs> but, you know, you put yeah, your hood up. I like gilded hoodies. They're it was, it no was, problem it was it. funny because, like, hey, so you guys see me on this show, like, uh, you know, we wear dress shirts or whatever, try to look a little bit nicer. But... When I'm trading, actually, like when I'm trying to trade, like and be super comfortable, you guys will see me. I'll be like hoodie it's cold up, in cap the office, up, though. You, need you know, it. headphones in. Uh, and it was, I was talking to Luca about it. There's something different when you trade with like your hoodie up and you're just kind of locked into the zone. Uh, so maybe you know, Pratt will kind of experience that with the new hoodie. I mean, I can't wear it on the show, sadly. Maybe I can. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I can pull a rune who's always on a, on. A, a... Is there a new camera going up there? I've never seen that camera there before. There's a new camera going up, new angles. Yo, holy, people are killing it over here. Luke is finally doing some work instead of uh, giving us emotes and whatnot. He's finally doing some work around here. Let's go, Lucas. Get your money's worth, baby. Uh, but uh, before he beats me up, I'll stop making fun of him. The market currently moving back down, ladies and gentlemen. So the shorts are paying us again. So uh, my net just went up poof, through the roof, baby. We're loving it. Jacob and Spencer got seven day passes. You down to ball? I'm down to ball, baby. Let's get it. Let's do I'm it. I'm down to ball, baby. Yo, I'll tell you this right now, though. Your boy Greg is an absolute shooter. 
Greg Doe missed the ball. He Steph Curry with the ball over there. He dusted me. He beat me like 9-1 and my back started acting up, so I had to like you fall guys, down. You, all I gotta say is like, yo, basketball is actually my sport. All right, I, Mr. I broken knee, Mr. I, mean, I grew so up I playing basketball. AAA I played basketball. rep. Uh, our our rep team won provincials uh, when I was in when I was in high school, you know. Yeah, yeah, and your knee gave out. Back you in the day, you I could have made, made the, the league. Yeah, yeah. So you know, let me get my ball shoes. Let me get some gear, <laughs> and then we'll uh, we'll gear up and see what happens. Uh, you know, I used to be a shooter too. I used to be that guy in the corner knocking down those uh, knocking down those tray balls. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 Let's yeah, see. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, James Harden, we see you in the cut. Uh, look at Mosaic, though. Mosaic now a dollar in the money. Move it to the downside. The market flush is actually helping us out like the way we needed to. Sadly, Roblox has been doing absolutely nothing for us. And actually, according to my research, Roblox is apparently getting added to the S&P 500 index today. Yeah, that's right. Did you, did you see that, too? I saw that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, but uh, I don't know. If, if it is, then uh, why is it down 8%? Or yeah, maybe, that's true. Maybe, maybe it's like got paired up. Maybe that's what this was. Maybe this move over here for the last couple weeks was, you know, people people buying it up into that rumor, and then we'll see Roblox. Roblox. Buying it up into that rumor, and then maybe today, if it doesn't show up, they're all going to be scared as hell and, you know, dumping their position. But yeah, that was just the, the idea. Usually when, when a company announces that they're getting added to the S&P uh, index, they go up. We've seen this with Tesla. We've seen this with, uh, I believe, Airbnb. Yeah, Airbnb and a couple other stocks. So my eyes will be for sure on RBLX. Guys, this Amazon trade, 123 is a gift, man. Like, it's gifted the short to you like five times today. You could have shorted every single time. This 123 continues to work off of the pre-market level, pre-market high. Uh, you know, you could give it like 20, 30 cents of risk to that pre-market high, but it continues to work for me now. 60 cents in the money off 123. I'm taking some profits out, making sure I'm getting them out in front of VWAP here because that's where it's going to struggle. Uh, and then I'm holding the rest essentially, uh, a small piece, about 20% of this, of this position from 123 up here uh, in case... VWAP really starts to break down and, you know, it, Amazon just trickles down to make new lows or something like that for the rest of the day. But this 123, I'm glad I got to participate in, in it once at the very least, but it's been a gift one, two, three, four, five, six times actually if you got it in the pre-market. What a trade. That meta trade now, I, that's working better for me as well now, now that uh, the market is coming off quite a bit. Uh, again, guys, getting some more out. I, my last fill was 68 or 69 here to, uh, to get some up. I'm bidding 57, I believe. So I think that's going to come through just waiting patiently now uh, for my bids to get hit and so I could take out some of these profits. Oh, I like that. But, uh, man, this, uh, this meta trade uh, worked really well. I was pretty convicted about it. And, uh, yeah, it continues to work for me now that the market trickles down to lows. Come on, fill me. I'm right there at 57, man. Just fill me. I'm sitting there on the bid. Come on, fill me. It doesn't want to fill me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming I'm probably going to get that fill coming through very, very shortly. There you go. There it is, guys. Taking more profits here on the meta trade. We've given you a few trades here, some bangers for the day. I hope you guys are doing well as well. Yeah, I'm currently watching Sandy Randy, which is not his name, but it's a name that has been coined to him. Put in some hard work for the for the closing show because we're only minutes away and and uh, they're trying to hurry up and get new, the the new setup ready for you guys look this is the beauty of Trader TV Live. We're always trying to improve and get better and, and bring in the quality production for you guys. So keep on ringing that bells. Keep on ringing that likes. They're going to be jumping on in the next few minutes. So please ring that like button on the closing show too because it's a brand new show, brand new counter, and all of those likes carry on with the YouTube algorithm. Currently, the market is trying to... looks. I, I thought it, the candle was green, but now the candle's red again. But we're... We're close to the lower day on the market over here. NASDAQ, <clears throat> here we go. NASDAQ pushing back to the lower days. S&P 500 also pushing back towards the lower days. Let's see if the market can actually break the lows over here going into 2 o'clock. Or are we just going to sideways, sideways, sideways all the way up to 3 o'clock and then break the bottoms at 3? It's a lot of questions over here for everyone. I'm pretty sure you, you guys are all wondering what's going to happen. I am too. Let's go take some profits on Adobe, which is $2.50 in the money on that side. 
PCL has done a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of nothing. So we're going to close that trade for us. Oxy also was a winner, and it's no longer not. So we're going to get out of that trade completely. And Roblox, man, I think I'm just going to close it for a loser. Uh, I'm done with the Roblox, too. Now we're just going to hold the trades that are paying us. We have two negative trades on the board today. It's going to be Lucid. It's going to be Roblox. But every other trade we've touched today, absolute... If home you, run. if you, yeah, home runs indeed. Uh, these trades are home runs for sure. Uh, if you guys get into a good short position, you know, on this pop, uh, this is something that I think you really hold and see where it can kind of go to until something significant happens or a significant level comes up and you see the tape really kind of change. Uh, but for now, this meta trade just continues to work for me. I'm just slowly bidding out. Uh, my next bid is like just into the 40s to see if it works. Okay, so maybe there the tape kind of changed. There was a little bit of buying came into the 60s, right? But now I've taken out almost all the position here, uh, and that's going to be a decent winner for me now. Uh, that 145 break was was very very solid, indeed. Uh, the Amazon, you know, Amazon. See, this is this is why you always kind of take profits out in front of VWAP because that's where exactly it bounced. I'm not saying that the 123 short is over. You know, it's been gifting it to you every single time it's creeped up there, but. You know, maybe now that VWAP has bounced here, uh, you know, you want to make sure you're taking profits in the money in case that, you know, the next time that it comes to 123, 123 breaks out and the trade's no longer there, right? So make sure you're always taking profit profits out if they're offered to you. Uh, don't get cheeky. Don't get too greedy with it. Uh, you know, tra trade trade your plan. Uh, I was risking uh, 20, 30 cents on this trade, and I was in the trade. I was in the money 60 cents. So that's solid two to one, uh, three to one trade, depending on how much you risk there. Uh, and you know you take those every time, uh, so th these trades continue to work. That Apple trade, uh, you know, I'm just going through talking about all the trades I have on right now because they're all just working for me to the short side. Work, uh, work, 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 work. Yeah, work. my the chart's still kind of messed up. You guys can't really see it, but it tested the 150 area. That didn't. Okay, there we go. It tested the 150 area. It didn't really do nothing with it. Bounced off that VWAP. It didn't trickle me out. My stop is literally. I don't really tell you guys too often where my stop is, but my stop is literally at 150.01. Uh, on Apple here, if that if that breakout uh, if that level got reclaimed, it never did. It never got tested, and you know continues to work to the downside. So I think the shorts are still good, man. I think the shorts are still good below this Apple 150, below Apple uh, VWAP. Yes, sir. We only got about a minute left over here, so I'm gonna start uh, sadly wrapping up for the week. I had a great week. I don't know about you, Ian. Hopefully, you had a great week too. This market's gonna continue being volatile for the rest of the day. So uh, still, you know, obviously. Uh, uh, start, start, uh, uh, you know, start being some uh, patience into it. Start doing some breathing exercises. What I was trying to say, my words started getting uh, caught up between each other over there, so my brain completely died in, in a second. But yeah, start doing some breathing exercises. Take some walks if you want to, and, and be ready for the moves from three o'clock to four o'clock. I expect them to be very, very volatile, ladies and gentlemen. So don't get caught up in random moves. Really focus where the money is being pushed into and follow the big money. That's all you need to do at the end of the day. We are retail. We're not big money. Follow big money. Make the money that big money makes, right? You're not going to trend set it with, with, the, with the bank accounts that, that we have, but the big money that the bank accounts they have, they're going to be easily be able to sway the market around. So it's easier, it's better, it's faster to just join them on their moves. So hopefully that works out for you guys. Good luck on to the closing show over here. We're going to send you off. He and you, you on Monday? Uh, I'll be on uh, a couple times next week, uh, probably again on like the Wednesday and Friday again. Wednesday, Friday. Uh, but uh, yeah, as always, guys, you know, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure and hope you guys continue to have a, a profitable day the rest of the day. Hope you guys had a great week and have a great weekend. Don't go anywhere, though. Uh, we're going to tune into the closing show. Don't forget to smash that like button. Ciao. Hey guys, welcome back. Two o'clock. That means a couple hours left in not only a pretty exciting Friday afternoon here, but the week. The week is over. We made it to Friday. Welcome in. It is a red day. Once again, we're dealing with some ugly numbers right across the board, although they have improved ever so slightly. 1.8 now uh, for the NASDAQ composite, the 100, 1.5. Uh, still seeing all kind of weakness here.